Book of True Life Teachings of the Divine Master Volume 8 Teaching 208 to 241, The Book of True Life Teachings of the Divine Master Buchdienst Zoom Laban. The 12 volume work Libro de la Vida Verdadera, The Book of True Life, is a legacy to mankind on earth and is registered in Mexico City under 20111, 26002, and 83348 by the Asociación de Estudios Espirituales Vida Verdadera AC Apartado Postal 888, Mexico, DF, CP06000. For more information of the Spanish edition, Asociación de Estudios Espirituales Vida Verdadera, AC Apartado Postal 888, Mexico, DF, CP06000 status. December 2017 Arrangement Butchdienst Zoom Laban Manfred Base Kirchweg 5D88521 Ertingen Telephone Plus 4907371929 Email ManfredBees at gmx.dewebsite www.3revelations.net Dedication The Commission Entrusted with the compilation of this divine work dedicates these books in the name of the Lord to all people of goodwill in the world who are inspired by the desire to attain the upliftment of their minds by studying the divine revelations and exercising the teachings of the divine master. Everyone who feels within himself the desire to live the teachings of the sixth seal, received in this era of the spirit of truth, should make the most of the spiritual meaning contained in these books to the last drop. Then a plea will break forth from his heart to all mankind and a sentence will sound the most delicate strings of the human heart. Love one another. 1. You have awakened with the echo of my word and you have come from distant nations, peoples and regions, by a long path of vicissitudes, with the desire to find the Master. 2. You have opened your heart like a clean book, so that this teaching may be written on it. Some have presented to me his understanding, in which I have also written my word, waiting for the heart to be sensitized, because this light will penetrate to the spirit, where it will find a home from which it will never leave. 3. Never has my word been so clear and extensive, as in this third era, when I have come to humanize it. My word makes you understand what I gave you in the past two ages. All my doctrine is enclosed in two precepts that I bequeath to you from the beginning. You shall love God with all your heart and spirit, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Later Jesus came to say, Love one another. Now I come to continue my teachings, to finish my work among you, in fulfillment of my promise to return. 4. I did not appear at this time in the bosom of any church, because I came in search of my temple that exists in your heart. The solemnity of the liturgies, the splendor of the religious rites are not what attract my spirit nor signify my church. 5. In the second era, the princes and the priests awaited the birth of the Messiah in the bosom of their church. However, I was not born among them, because I found the stable in Bethlehem cleaner, I found more love among the shepherds and more mercy in the harsh winter. This is why the theologians of that time were confused and why kings persecuted me from my birth to my death. 6. Today theologians are again confused before my new coming, because the prophecies and announcements of it have not been correctly interpreted. 7. From the beginning my advent has been questioned despite the fact that I have given you proofs, testifying of myself, and in this way I have raised faith in the hearts of my people. 8. Great crowds of disciples have arisen at this time, but being so great, they do not possess the faith and strength that those twelve who followed me in the second era had. And what are you going to do after my departure? You all know that I am speaking to you within the last three years of the teaching that you will receive through human understanding. If you truly understood me, you would have the certainty that I am eternally with you, that eternally I speak to you. But who are those who are preparing to feel my divine presence and to hear my voice? Who will reach by 1950? the time marked for my departure, with enough spirituality to communicate with the teacher without the spokesman. 9. I will not feel offended if you do not offer me altars or flowers or if you do not light lamps, 
because what I have always sought is in the heart of man, it is the spiritual altar. 10. The flowers are the offerings of the gardens and valleys, whose fragrance and perfume reach me as a tribute of love. Then do not usurp their offerings from the valleys and gardens. Do not light more lamps than that of faith in my divinity, because it will be useless to light oil lamps in your heart. 11. You have not managed to understand, and even less to practice, the perfect doctrine that I have revealed to you, and whose name Marian Trinitarian Spiritualism, says it all, spiritual elevation, recognition of the Trinity in divine manifestations and worship of Mary, divine tenderness. 12. Before the beginning of the year 1948, I told you through numerous spokesmen, prepare yourselves because I will reform your spiritual practices, because I do not want the world to judge you as bad disciples, who have attracted their master to participate in their superfluous customs. I have entrusted you with my perfect work, which you must not deny with your deeds. Anyone who rises to follow me will carry his cross and deliver the truth with all his being, as far as possible and his powers allow it. You are not always ready, but I wish you were always ready, because at the least expected moment it may appear the test or the needy and there you must be ready instantly. 13. For parents the weight of the cross is serious, because having brought the new generations into the world, they have understood that this is not enough to terminate their mission. The law of the Father for the first was this, grow and multiply, and in the present time, in which I find great evolution in the human spirit, I tell you again, grow and multiply, but not only do it in matter but in spirit, in virtues, in love. This is the law of the beginning and the end to which you will fulfill, so that you can come satisfied in my presence and you can say to me, Lord, here is my spiritual and human fulfillment, here is the fruit. 14. Beloved people, the times do not allow stagnation. The elements, pain, war, conflict and chaos, they say at every moment, Wake up and work. Let your heart fill with this wine, which is the blood of the Master, so that it overflows in life and in love on your brothers. 15. See that my word comes from a Father who seeks you, who loves and corrects you, who lifts you up when you stumble and heals you when you are sick. I have not come on this day to order you, simply to caress you. I will point out all your actions before your conscience, not before each other because I am the veil that defends you from your enemies, so that you may listen in silence to the voice of the inner judge and remember that the disciples of Christ must glorify with their works the name of their master. 16. I speak to you frequently of my departure, as I did with my apostles in the second era. Jesus was surrounded by his disciples, all were older than the master, while some were in the maturity of life, others were already in old age. There was only one less than Jesus, it was John. The master used to tell them about his departure and before that announcement, those men wondered, how do you talk about your departure? Are we closer to the end? And it is that the disciples could not understand how that man, all life, everything, love and strength could die to the world. They could not conceive that he who came from the father could stop living. But Jesus kept talking about his departure. He kept saying goodbye, making those hearts get used to the idea of separation and understand that they should take advantage of the time and store that precious seed in their hearts. Then someone said to his master, Lord, if someone tries to touch you, we will prevent it, to which Jesus replied, that it is written, it will have to be, and the will of the Father will be done, because before the heavens and the earth would pass, but my words shall never pass, it is not possible that the word of God not be fulfilled. 17. And the disciples, downcast and sad, listened and inwardly asked themselves, What could they do when he no longer is among them? How could they fight alone among humanity? How could they give light to the blind, cleanse the leper, raise the dead and convert the sinner? The master read their thoughts and on one occasion said to them, You will remain in my place like sheep among wolves. But if you believe in me and remain on the path, you will not perish. 18. My passion was consummated. My word was fulfilled and my apostles felt weak in their spirits and their faith when they saw Jesus sweating blood in the Garden of Olives, as if he were afraid of men, he who had power in his hand, before the shouting of the mobs, they thought that the Master could silence them, since the possessed themselves had been silenced.
And when the impious hands fell on the rabbi to apprehend him, the astonished disciples asked, Lord, why have you let yourself be apprehended like any wrongdoer? If there is no fault in you, then they hid abandoning their Lord. But Christ continued to teach as God and as man because he wanted to be man in order to give the perfect example and to feel the human pain and in him were all the anguish, all the loneliness. Received about his body all the ingratitude and blasphemies and the last hour arrived. 19. From the top of the tree, his eyes searched the crowd for his friends, his disciples, those who had lived with him and that loved him and followed on the roads. But those were not in the last moment, I did not see them, only John, the youngest, was present accompanying the master's mother. The disciple is he to whom he delivered his last message and consecrated Mary in that instant before humanity as the universal mother. 20. Everything was consummated. 21. The disciples, united by weeping and mourning, sought comfort in Mary, but the Master and Spirit became visible. He visited the mother and the holy women who gave testimony to the apostles of which they doubted. But Christ wanting to show them that he was still among them, he also sought them out to manifest himself. 22. On a certain occasion the apostles were in a house, Thomas was not among them. While those men were given to memories, the master penetrated through the walls of the bedroom, saying, My peace be with you. The amazement of the disciples was indescribable, recognizing the accent of that unique voice to them. 23. The silhouette of Jesus disappeared, and the apostles, full of strength and joy, told Thomas the news, but he made fun of his brothers, and while he denied the testimony, the door of the room being found closed, the silhouette of Jesus again appeared greeting them thus, Peace be with you, Thomas, before the prodigy, first fearful and repentant later. He contemplated the silhouette of Jesus, but doubt tormented him. Then the master said to him, Come closer, Thomas. Sink your fingers in the wound on my side. And the incredulous and material disciple sank them and was able to contemplate through that wound, the promised land. Thomas, then, fell at the feet of his master and, prey to pain and repentance, confessed, Lord, Lord, it is you. Yes, Thomas, you confess that it is I because you have seen. Blessed are those who believe without seeing. 24. People, all that you are seeing now, I am announcing my departure at every moment. I am dematerializing you so that later you will not be unbelievers, ignorant or confused. 25. On the last day of my stay with you, I don't want to contemplate you messing your hair. I don't want your mouths to exclaim, Why are you leaving, Master? 26. I want in the final moment to see you wrapped in a mantle of spirituality serenity, recollection, full of trust that I have not departed, that I am closer to you. 27. I have told you that every sinful and non-sinful I will contemplate me. Some will spiritually see the silhouette of Jesus, others they will feel my presence in their hearts. Others will perceive my light in their understanding and others will see wonders in their wake. I will manifest in prayer and in trials. But it will not be necessary for you to contemplate the human form of Jesus, but rather feel in the spirit and in the heart. And there will be no mourning. There will be no emptiness or loneliness. There will be no grief or sobs. 28. I want you to unify when you leave, so that you gather all your spiritual forces and with them you can supply what the Master gave you with His Word. 29. When the true unification is made between you, there will be signs in heaven and earth and nations will recognize it. 30. This is my lesson, this has been my word of love and teaching, a perpetual caress. 31. You must prepare more and more as the moment approaches when I stop speaking to you through human understanding. You are seeking to saturate yourself with the spiritual force that my word imparts. Materialism is in its prime. Until now the world has lived without feeling or listening to me. There are very few of those who contemplate my light and progress on their path to live with spirituality. But how many are in darkness? There are those who are waiting for my new coming. There is in them the belief that Christ will become man again. 32. 
Disciples who have listened to me, the mission you have to carry out is clear before you. Announce to men the good news of my advent at this time and communicate my revelations and teachings to them. You are the witnesses who know that I have returned among you in the same way that I was last beheld in the second era, in spirit. 33. But before you get to communicate from spirit to spirit with your Lord, I wanted to communicate through the understanding of the humble man, but graced by me so that this communication could serve as a basis or preparation for your future elevation. 34. Human science with its development is proof that the spirit has evolved and although the way is different, in each era has been leaving the mark of its advancement. The day will come when the same sciences collaborate in the progress of the spirit, because everything is destined for that purpose. I tell you that the true man of science is the one who for the love of his fellow men search the bowels of creation for its secrets until you find the divine light. Whoever works this way will never be proud of his work. He will only consider himself an instrument of the Creator. For himself, he will never deny the existence of the Godhead. 35. There will also come a time when the religious confined in their cells will leave them, convinced of the uselessness of his retirement and his mysticism, will fight among humanity to fulfill the purpose for which they were created, in a word, they will put an end to spiritual stagnation to embark on the path of progress. 36. The seed of spirituality is the seed of the third era, which I have been sowing among you. She will give humanity the secret to achieving a better life. 37. See how due to the lack of spirituality, humanity is unknown and divided. It has created different paths that have separated one from the other. You are witnesses to that misunderstanding. 38. Again I tell you, the war between men has not ended because the war of ideas, creeds and religions, philosophies and doctrines, each one wanting to be the only possessor of the truth, each one seeking superiority over the others. 39. My sacrifice of the second era has not yet been understood by this humanity. Although most recognize Christ, they have not known how to recognize themselves in me. Why look for me on crooked paths, when I only walk on the path of meekness, charity and justice? 40. To get to me, it is essential to love your brothers. 41. Today you still need ministers, judges, and teachers, but when your spiritual conditions and morals have risen, you will no longer need those staves or those voices. In each man there will be a judge, a guide, a teacher, and an altar. 42. I want to contemplate a people without rights, regulations, or dogmas, who know how to lead the straight path and who live my doctrine of love. 43. I give you that freedom at this time because you will no longer be subject to specific forms. Isn't this a new course, but a part of the same path that I had traced for you, but that you did not know? Study, penetrate my words, and you will recognize that there is truth in them. 44. I am love, and as love I give myself to you without imposing any conditions on you. In the moments that you are living you need this incentive, this love that is found above all human affection. 45. To achieve that elevation that puts you in communication with my divinity, you no longer need to stimulate your senses through the harmony of some musical notes, nor exalt yourselves before the contemplation of rites or material objects, because your spirit is moved. Only by what is deeply spiritual. Whenever you open your heart to elevate your spirit towards me, you will experience that sensation of peace that descends from infinity. 46. How is it possible that there is someone who does nothing for your spiritual progress? How can there be human beings who come to descend lower than the inferior or irrational beings? Being irrational does not sin, because he only limits himself to follow your own laws. On the other hand, man does sin because he carries within himself a spirit of light, a conscience and a gift of intuition. 47. Among those called to fight in this work, there are also those who for a moment forget the path they have to follow. They forget the spiritual mark with which I have marked them so that on their path, they leave only traces of peace and blessing. How can you descend from the scale on which I have placed you? This is why I continually descend to speak to you, so that my word, like a fine chisel, polish the rough edges of your heart, to make you understand that communion with God, you cannot do it if you do not stay away from the impure. Then, 
When you manage to superimpose your thought on everything superfluous and seek me in infinity, you will feel a strange sense of glory. That is why you will recognize that if you seek me this way, the charity of the Father does not take long to manifest itself in your spirit. 48. Certainly, in those moments you are not in the material world although your body is on earth. The spirit has risen away from all material contact to penetrate into a different life and space. There it is where my Father's love is felt, where the peace and blessedness of my kingdom is felt. 49. To awaken that longing in the reluctant, I become the fool pilgrim until I make them feel good within their heart, that feeling that will make you carry out works that will bring you closer to me. When they have taken that step, they have contemplated the immensity of the field that stretches before their sight, inviting them to work and struggle. How much bliss they feel in their hearts, understanding everything that seeing they did not see and hearing they did not hear, because everything was confused and did not realize that they were called to carry out a noble and delicate mission. 50. I tell you all, when you come to identify with the Master, you will come to feel the misery of others as your own and to try to do with your brothers what you saw that I did with you. If for a moment you come to consider yourselves unworthy or clumsy, it will be enough that you feel charity and seek me, so that I do what you can't do. Everything is beginning, although the task suddenly seems impossible. Then the prodigy will come and faith will ignite. Then the hungry, the lepers, the ragged, and the needy will begin to come to your door lost. Necessity in all its forms. But you must watch and pray, because temptation and seductions will stalk you, offering you the world in exchange for your spirituality. Those who try to confuse you with seemingly big words and ideas will also arrive. The pleasures they will tempt your flesh trying to make it weaken your spirit. You will have to face everything, sometimes alone, sometimes in union with your brothers. Your weapons will be the preparation, the faith, the end you carry, the knowledge that you are acquiring from the Master. 51. Thus, if you are the losers of life, you will have become strong soldiers. You will have penetrated prepared to the time of struggle that you are living. Your spirit will not cower, because it will feel that it needs that fight to purify and rise. Truly I tell you that everyone who can present his finished work to me, it will be taken as your latest work on the subject. 52. So, while your body is turning to dust, and your spirit already stripped of its last dress and has begun his spiritual work, he will contemplate the scale through which he will ascend, stage by stage, the seven steps, until reaching the bosom of the Father, who is power, grace, and light. 53. See how, your spirits having descended to such imperfection, traveling the roads of the world in different bodies, knowing mud and impurity, you were worthy of my charity. But all. That long day was the experience that your spirit gathered, to be able to assess the value of my laws and the value of what is spiritual, to understand that in the evolution of the spirit there is perfect greatness and satisfaction. So always I invite men to this path, because as long as they do not reach it, suffering and false pleasures will continue to touch them and will keep whipping them. 54. What I am teaching you is for the benefit of all those who embrace my doctrine, so that their acts make them the teacher of tomorrow, of the one who shares my strength and my light that will dominate the wickedness of the world. 55. Evil in these times has opened before men the abyss of despair. 56. Many works exist among men, apparently great and good, that is why I tell you, watch so that you may combat all imposture, recognizing that you carry an incomparable and certain greatness. 57. What greater greatness than the good shared and practiced? What greater greatness than the love that can be lavished on each other, whose light and influence can contribute so that they too penetrate the path of perfection? What greater enjoyment for your spirit than to be able to overcome the weaknesses of your flesh to rise from the level at which it is? 58. From the second era I spoke to you about the spiritual life and your spirit understood part of what I spoke and of the end for which he is destined. Now that I contemplate you again surrounding me, I reveal to you and clarify everything that was confusing for your mind. And I tell you again, whoever wants to follow me, take up his cross and follow me, that my cross will not be of death, but of love and self-denial, of sacrifice of superfluous goods for the benefit of the Spirit.
59. Disciples, let my doctrine infiltrate my children today. Anyone who has understood my word must prepare your little ones with lofty ideas and remove all evil from the heart. Sow in them the seed of good that is spirituality and thus, when this childhood has the sufficient capacity to understand the force of my doctrine, he will not waver on his way. Rather, his step will be firm and no one will be able to deceive him. 60. Like a radiant sun of life, light and heat, have I overflowed in all, but each one according to their evolution or preparation which they have. My peace be with you. Spiritual Teaching 209 Love Each Other 1. As the appointed time approaches for this way of giving you my teaching to end, you are penetrating more and more in my divine message. 2. You know that while I have been giving you my word, the world has lived without feeling or listening to me. 3. Few are those who have known of my coming, the rest of humanity is waiting for when I return according to my promise, to do it in flesh, that is, make me a man again. 4. Only you know that you are already in the third era, in which I have come to speak to your spirit through those chosen to be the spokesman of my word. 5. Human science gives you samples of its development, recognize that it also reveals spiritual evolution. The man in each era has been leaving his mark of progress that those who come later are assimilating. 6. Science is the light of my wisdom that inspires and reveals its mysteries to men. The scientist who possesses an elevated spirit will not seek me through rites, because his gift of science at every moment brings him closer to the Father who is divine science. That man should never be puffed up by his work, because he is the one who the more he discovers, the smaller he feels. Nor will he be able to deny my existence because at every step he will contemplate in nature the trace of the Creator. 7. Disciples. Also in you I have deposited gifts that you must develop, so that you can be the ones who with a simple word but full of truth, cement this doctrine in the hearts of your brothers. 8. The seed of spirituality which I have always sown in the world, is the one that I will once again leave at this time. That seed holds the secret of a better life. 9. If today humanity fights each other, if it is divided into beliefs, classes and races, if men do not love each other, nor do they understand each other, nor do they have charity, it is because in their hearts my seed of love does not germinate. But in this time that I come like dew of grace on the fields, my seed kept in the heart of every human creature, will germinate and bear fruit. 10. Just as in the second era I announced my coming, so now I announce the war of creeds, ideas and religions, as the forerunner announcement of the establishment of my kingdom of spirituality among men. 11. My word as a sword of fire will destroy the fanaticism that has enveloped men for centuries. It will lift the veil of your ignorance and will show the white, luminous path that leads to me. 12. When humanity by its regeneration is sensitive to the spiritual, not only in spirit but even in matter, there will not be a need for the rigor of the laws or the justice of the earth to behave well, because then each man will be able to be your own guide and your own judge. 13. My doctrine does not establish dogmas or rites, it only inspires good. My spiritual doctrine does not subject anyone to specific forms, it is a perpetual invitation to the path of truth. 14. You arrive under the shadow of the stout tree, where you know that it is he who offers you the bread of eternal life, that food that gives you strength to endure the journey. 15. The word has come among you to open a new era. 16. I have always sent you spiritual messages inviting you to rise, because the flesh, as a heavy link, chains the spirit to earth. 17. In your evolution you have come to understand that your destiny does not depend on matter but on my will. 18. Man is not always in agreement with my designs and shows me his disagreement and disobedience. Many have sometimes called me unfair and has tried to penetrate my high judgments. Others, not getting what they ask for from me, they doubt my power and then when they have achieved it, they attribute it only to their effort. Hence they come to believe themselves gods and kings, forgetting him, who put spirit in man and surrounded him with a wonderful nature. 19. 
Could man with all his science create something out of what I have formed? No people. 20. Human science has its limits and God the Creator does not. Science is light, but in the hands of many men it is turned into darkness. Instead, in the universe everything speaks of me. All the elements raise a song of life and love. And despite what I am telling you through everything created, here I am. You are looking for my image in imperfect works made by the hands of men. Before them you bow down and worship them, preventing your spirit from any elevation. 21. I come to give you love, because I cannot find a man whose heart opens to make the suffering of others his own. Those to whom I entrust wealth and powers to serve their fellow men, deny all charity, and even those who say they represent me on earth, surrounded by their opulence and dressed as kings, they close their ears and their hearts to the lament of them in need of love and charity. 22. Those are not my ways. The path that I have traced is that of good. That is why once again I say to you, my word it is the way, because it always speaks to you of virtue, morality, and love. 23. I am making your heart sensitive in order to record my teachings in it and so that you feel truly nourished by the bread of eternal life. 24. I love everyone equally, however not everyone will listen to me in this age. As in the first and second eras, I have chosen a place on earth to gather there those who will hear me. 25. In each religion, men rise up in front of them who call themselves my envoys, my chosen ones, my favorites, but I do not contemplate a single righteous one by which humanity can be redeemed. There are no lips that can speak like me in Jesus when I spoke to you at that time. 26. In the midst of a whirlwind human beings are agitated and in the midst of their chaos, they suffer and groan at the threat of war. 27. Those peoples could have sustained themselves spiritually with my word of the second era, but that bread has been concealed or has been adulterated. And there you have the men, some walking free, others indifferent, fanatical and ungrateful at best. 28. When will the wealthy rich man be able to distribute his wealth among the poor? 29. When will the royally attired man know to strip off his garments to cover the naked? Humanity is hungry for examples and in need of justice and charity. 30. It is that they have forgotten that I have renounced my kingdom to live with you and give you everything that is in me. Where are my representatives, those who really imitate me? 31. I say to you, I have called you to inherit again, granting you power to heal the sick with the balm of my love that is my own blood. 32. Know yourselves, so that you may understand that even without merit I have made you worthy of my grace, and contemplate those beings that like a lost sheep raise their complaint. See the men come home empty-handed. Hear the voice of pain and desolation. 33. Look at your hand and in it you will find power and consolation to remedy these penalties. Why do you doubt this grace? Let the lamp of faith burn in your heart. Let it become a torch. Do not close your heart, because then you will also become greedy rich. See that you have to testify to me and talk about the Master. But if you don't, the stones will bear witness to me. 34. I am power and justice but you don't want me to show you these lessons through pain or the elements unleashed. Hope is my divine effluvium that surrounds you and my love that always blesses you. 35. My divine spirit appears to mitigate your sufferings, because you have been very much tested on your path. 36. Sometimes I demand your lack of compliance with my law, because I have given it to you for a long time, marking for you the perfect trail. 37. It is no longer time for you to hide my doctrine in your heart. Learn to look at me and feel me, so that you do not confuse. 38. I have made you possessors of infinite greatness, but you do not know how to share with your brothers. 39. It has been necessary to repeat a lot of the lesson that I have been giving you since 1884, so that it could be engraved on you, and by her you know that I never lead you to delay. I lovingly help you to lead you on the true path. To you I have spoken very simply within your language, to make me understood and so that you can analyze my word. 40. 
I contemplate that you have stopped in the middle of the road and that your elevation is low, but turn your face and look at the world that cries, the unbeliever who mocks my word, also contemplate the thirsty for love and light. Moreover, you disciples cannot say that you are ignorant, sick, needy, or weak, because it would be to deny how much I have given you. Then you will have to remember those words that I uttered. Ah, men of little faith. 41. Few hearts have known how to rise and who listen to my word where it is. And there are many who instead of bringing their spirit closer to me, they only come to present me their earthly life with its miseries and needs. Behold the why of your weakness and the lack of union between the people. When are you going to forget about yourselves to ask me for the world? 42. Mothers cry because their advice is not heard by their children. The wife shows me her misunderstood heart for her partner and you all forget that this is the path that leads to the promised land, that of sacrifice. In the hollow of my hand there is the destiny of each one of you. 43. Be satisfied and if you suffer a lot, I am with you. 44. Do not increase your pain, judging in your own way what only I can judge. 45. Think that I love you, I am not insensitive to your sorrows and that I truly understand you. Look how being so close to me, you still commit so many mistakes, but I forgive you. 46. There are those who, faced with the weight of trials, doubt my presence, get out of the way and look for what they left behind, hoping to find what they think they have lost. But they turn their glances to my work, when they contemplate his hands empty and his spirit powerless in the face of great universal pains, plague and death, which knock at the doors of nations and they also threaten you, because the omen of a new war moves them. 47. Do not imitate in their disbelief those who ask me for evidence to believe in my existence. Those who tell me, Make war stop in an instant, spread the bread on all the tables, and I will believe in you. 48. I tell you once again that you only have three years left to finish this communication with you and you should take advantage of the moments so that you can invite the world with its sects and religions to the path of light and spirituality, in where everyone will be able to enter into communion with me, from spirit to spirit. 49. This will be when fanaticism and idolatry are torn from the hearts of the peoples. 50. You will then be like sailors in the middle of a rough sea, trusting in the saving boat. 51. I will still have to make the call to all those who, belonging to the tribes of Israel, are scattered so that they also fulfill their mission. Then mankind will hear my voice and behold the shining light of the aurora, illuminating those who dwell on this earth. 52. Do not become familiar with my word and when you hear it, do not look at the spokesperson through which I am transmitting it to you. Penetrate it and look for its essence so that your analysis is perfect. 53. The essence is the taste of the divine. 54. What you are going to hear and contemplate is not the routine ceremony, nor the rite that impresses your senses, because the solemnity of this manifestation is within your spirit. 55. In these moments you are not within the four walls of this enclosure. Before, I have waited for your elevation so that you achieve communication with my divinity in true inner worship. I have allowed you to build these enclosures, so that in them you can find recollection, silence and the unification of your thoughts, by which you will attract my divine ray. But these four walls are not my temple. These enclosures are places destined for your meetings, because the true temple, my sanctuary, is in your spirit. 56. You ask me, if after 1950 these enclosures will disappear? And I answer, no, you don't know for how much time I grant you these places. Because as long as the knowledge of my work, the elevation and the firmness in my law, you will not be able to do without them. After my departure, on the day dedicated to rest, you will meet, not as a tradition or commemoration, but to remember and analyze my word and that of the spiritual world so that you give one another true testimonies of my prodigies on your way, so that you continue united by loving me, surrendering pleasant worship and do not let your heart grow cold or fall into boredom, fanaticism or materialism. 57. You do not know how long these places will still give you, because after 1950, 
new ones will still be founded in closures, not for my word to resound through the spokesperson or for the spiritual world to present itself, because those times will have passed, but so that in them my word and my clean and pure doctrine may be delivered, which I have delivered. And in that peaceful environment will be my presence, that of Mary, the presence of Elijah and that of the spiritual world. There the sick will heal, the blind will open their eyes to the light, the profane will know respect, the sinner will be redeemed and all they will reach according to their needs so that the crystalline water, the good fruit and the good seed continue to spread. 58. You do not know if in the present incarnation you will get to know the true temple of my divinity, but you have the mission to prepare the way. If you do not reach the goal, at least leave the path prepared for your children or for them to their children come to penetrate the temple of my divinity, and then you will come to understand that not only in these enclosures is my presence, that not only in them you must prostrate your spirit, and you will recognize that the temple of the divinity is the universe, your heart the altar, your faith the lamp and the offering. Creation is also a temple. Even the dust that your feet tread. Mountains are altars that rise up to me. The valleys with their grass and their flowers give me their offering. The sun, all the luminaries and planets are worlds that pay me their tribute of love and wherever you step or look, there is my divine spirit, as Father. Then recognize that you eternally live within the temple. 59. Each one carries a temple inside and your home is also a sanctuary, because the human family dwells there which is similar to the spiritual family. There in the heart of the home is my best temple. 60. But today I contemplate that the true light is not understood by men who walk distant from the path. I contemplate that the only place where you rise to me is the material temple. 61. I see the chaos among humanity, the ignorance of human and divine laws. My doctrine has been hidden in this time and has been taken as something that belongs to the past. That's why men succumb, institutions are divided and mock the most sacred. Thus I find humanity unknown, destroying itself, giving itself death, confusing the spirit with matter, the divine with the human, and light with darkness. 62. In this time of confusion and evil, I have chosen an unknown and despised nation, the Mexican nation, to call to her the chosen ones who are living in other nations, to gather them around me, polish them with the chisel of my word, deliver them charges and already prepared and full of love, Send them as emissaries of my work throughout the world. 63. This is the responsibility that weighs on the multitudes who listen to my divine word. 64. I have been purifying my people and removing their imperfections, but this purification will not be only in your spiritual practices, it will also penetrate your homes. I have arisen like a whirlwind and its force makes every bad fruit fall, remaining between the foliage of the spiritual tree and the human tree, only the good fruits, because the time of trial approaches when humanity comes to search you. 65. My work will be seen as a new sect. Men will scrutinize you in your interior life, at home, in the work, in all your duties, and if you are not prepared to give testimony of me, if you do not confirm my word with your deeds, you will be like those hypocritical Pharisees who under their impeccable tunic hid the rottenness of their inside. 66. My trial will be in the last year of my stay. Mainly the day of my departure will be felt by all and contemplated by every sinful and non-sinful eye. I prepare all of you to be the true bearers of my word, of the word given you by the Holy Spirit at this time. 67. Keep calm and serenity because you have entered the time of the struggle that I announced long ago. Its fight will be between yourselves. In it you will wield the same weapons. Those who understand me and love me will wield their weapons for my cause. Those who have not understood me will put them at the service of their own cause. But in the end, the truth will triumph. A long time ago I told you, let the wheat and the tares grow together until both have fruit, so that you can separate the wheat and throw the tares into the fire. I, the good farmer, have let the wheat of my word grow in your hearts together with the tares of sin. But the time has come to reap with the sickle of my justice so that in the hearts of my peasants and in the bosom of your homes only the seed of truth and love remains. 68. You do not analyze my teaching and that is why the tests surprise you as unexpected. This is why you divide and do not understand each other, because when my word was fulfilled, you were not prepared. 
I still prepare you so that you have serenity and peace and let the whirlwind remove all the bad fruits, because everything that does not give life, fruit, or shade will die. Under the force of the gale many trees will fall, many peasants will turn their backs, many guides will want to give me back the mission entrusted to them, but my will is that you correct yourselves. 69. The time will come when all those who have turned their backs, wake up and contrite return telling me, Master, how clean is your work? 70. What is happening today in the bosom of this people also happens in all the nations of the world. I have made myself present to everyone with my sword of justice and not only in this earth, also in the spiritual world and everywhere that dwells an imperfect spirit to enlighten, purify and perfect it. The same one who speaks to you at this moment, spoke to you in the second era and of all the crowds that listened to me through Galilee, only twelve I chose and through them I spread my doctrine throughout the world, through long roads. In those times to many the word of Jesus seemed fantasy. There are also now those who think the same of the spirit of truth, but the heavens and the earth will pass before my word could cease to be fulfilled. 71. Who can persecute you or accuse you of lies or slander you if you comply with my doctrine? Moreover you will only teach what I have taught you. Love, inner worship, knowledge of the true temple of my divinity. My peace be with you. Spiritual Teaching 210 Love Each Other 1. I come to free you from the torment in which your materialism has sunk you, giving you the lamp with which you can light the path. 2. You are the men of the third era, those who will truly know the reason for their life, and I come to help you obtain that knowledge through my revelations. 3. You are the men of the new time in which my kingdom seeks your heart to rise up in it in which you will make good your spiritual ideal and you will learn that the best prayer is that of your works. 4. Love and truth correspond to the Spirit, also His wisdom because He was created to love and know His Father. 5. I, the Master, come to shake you with the memories of your spiritual past, that your heart does not know why they belong to the Spirit, when it lived its true existence, when your abode was another and you did not yet live in this body that you now have which is a crucible, anvil, and a lesson for the spirit. 6. I bring you memories of the spiritual life, hidden behind the veil of your materiality, to tell you that this life awaits you again so that you come to enjoy it fully after your pilgrimage, your experience, and your evolution. 7. When you are back in the infinite abode and feel the joy of inhabiting it, you will not tire of blessing this world of tears where you came to learn, to appreciate happiness, peace, light. 8. My new coming, now in spirit, aims to remind you of the path of the law that will unite you with the Absolute, that will make you penetrate into universal harmony and, when you are part of that divine harmony, when you feed from the bread of my wisdom, you will truly know who you are. 9. What can make you cry in the world when you are above the trifles of human life? Nor the sufferings, neither the needs, nor the moral tests, nor the elements. Nothing will be able to defeat you or bring you down when you have achieved true spirituality. 10. Your sufferings will be for others, your concerns will be for the salvation of all men, and every time you contemplate the salvation of a being, you will feel my Father's light illuminating your interior and you will be blessing the day when you took the first firm step on the path. 11. My word is the spiritual path that you must enter with all your senses, with all your understanding and all your love, if you want to know where you have come from and where you are walking. 12. No one is known yet. If you do not yet know your body, how do you think you know your spirit? But you will get to know each other as you practice my divine teachings. 13. I teach you with the word, because it contains everything, since it comes from me. I am the word. You learn to speak of the spiritual in such a way that every word you say to others passes from your heart to the heart of your brother as if he were a pearl, a jewel of infinite value. 14. Learn to speak to the spirits. Teach them to hear the voice of their conscience. Sensitize their feelings with my teachings. 15. Look how all my sentences go along the path that guides them, and even if for now you look at them superficially tomorrow, when you can penetrate a higher plane, you will find only essence in my word. 16. I do not descend, people. When I tell you that I have descended to you, it is figuratively, 
because my communication is through an inspiration of ideas that are made in the minds of these spokespersons. How do I know that instantly listening to these messages you cannot understand them, or even retain them in memory? I have ordered you to write my words so that what you do not understand now, tomorrow little by little you will understand. 17. My manifestation of this time is apparently very poor, because its splendor is spiritual, but you will already feel the greatness with which I have come to you and you will see this doctrine work the miracle of saving humanity through spirituality. 18. The spiritual temple built with love for my children will be supported by many columns, each of which will be one of those who firmly remain in the path of my law. 19. Don't you think it's possible? It is that you do not have faith in yourself yet, but I do have faith in everyone. I have always had it and that through the ages I have come to entrust you with new and greater revelations. Truly I tell you, the day in which you give teachings of profound wisdom to your brothers, but not with the word that is studied but with the one that springs from the source of the Spirit when one is in communion with my Spirit. 20. Why should it not be possible for good feelings to spring from sterile hearts? Why shouldn't it be possible that from the heart of the one who has sinned, water of grace springs up to quench the thirst of those who suffer? 21. You are not only minds that think today and not tomorrow. You are not just flesh that beats today and soon ceases to exist. For me, above all you are eternal spirits, children of God, and that is why I trace the path that truly corresponds to you. 22. I do not come to deprive you of anything that I have deposited in this nature for conservation, health, sustenance, welfare and enjoyment of my children. On the contrary, I tell you, that just as I offer the bread of the Spirit and I invite you to aspire divine essences and saturated with spiritual effluvia, do not ignore or stray from what nature offers you, that in this way you will achieve harmony, health, energy and therefore good compliance with the laws of life. 23. You know that I am your guide, people, but tell me if I am your guide, do you already feel me in your heart? Do you obey? Do you already obey my commandments and my laws? If I am your guide, to what extent do you obey me? 24. The voice of consciousness is the one who answers from within, telling me that your surrender is not yet absolute, that your obedience is not constant. 25. Do not forget for a moment that in my word I tell you that whoever obeys my laws know my peace. That is why those who know my word do not feel lonely or sad, because for them, words, misfortune, damnation and death do not stalk them as a threat or as a shadow over the peace of their spirit. They are concerned with knowing the truth, living in the light, conquer health, peace and wisdom forever. 26. Those who come to me through the path of my teaching, know that they cannot get lost because a divine light leads. It is that light that gives them the certainty of the end and the true object of life. 27. My way is the path of good, disciples. Come for him, step by step, sowing him with good works, good thoughts and good words. But never keep an account of your good deeds. Instead I advise you to take a careful account of your bad deeds, words and thoughts, so that you will stop committing mistakes. 28. Leave the good collected seed to me and you take the vain seed. Scrutinize it so that you know the cause of your weakness. Take care that it does not mix among the good grains and then exterminate it. 29. Only goodness can give peace, joy, health, knowledge. Therefore, for one to be abundant in love, you must be great in spirit. 30. This is what I came to teach you when I lived in the world with you, and this I now come to remind you. If through Jesus, touching with my hand I healed the sick, also at this time I come to touch them to restore health and make them enter again into the miracle of life. 31. Today I don't have hands to touch your sick body, because I come in spirit, but the spirit can also touch you with his love and make you feel his presence. 32. The blind men of that time, blind in spirit, shed the master's blood and nailed those hands that healed by touching, caressing and blessing. But they could not destroy my spirit, nor imprison it, nor nail it. He raised above the smallness of men, promising to return, since in those moments he was neither recognized nor my word understood as the supreme truth. 33. Here you have me fulfilling my promise and waiting for humanity to recognize me. 34. But, 
If I asked you what happened to that blessed body in which Christ dwelt, would you know how to answer me? It must be me who tells you, that body that was an instrument of divine love, once its journey was over, once its lips were closed forever and his eyes too. He went down to earth to finish fulfilling his mission as a man. But when the earth enveloped him in its bosom, that body, whose cells only vibrated to love, spread into infinity to fall later like rain of life on the same beings that had rejected the life that the Redeemer brought to them. When you think that God himself became man to dwell with you, you come to feel the vanity of being so loved by the Father and then you also think that you are his masterpiece. But, truly I tell you, there is no work of the Father that is not a teacher and, in addition, you must know that there are spirits whose perfection, beauty and elevation you cannot even imagine. 35. Beyond you there are works greater than those that you know here and also works of your brothers, superior to the works of men. 36. Why believe that man is the greatest thing that exists today within the works of the Lord? You are only small creatures you go a long way in pursuit of true greatness. 37. You are great and perfect insofar as you are my work, but as for your works, you are still very small and imperfect, that is why I come to manifest myself as a master before you, to teach you new revelations that will bring you to the summit of good, of knowledge, of love and unite harmoniously with everything that is perfect. 38. How can perfection exist in your world if there is pain, if there are needy, vicious, crippled, oppressed, if there are arrogant and selfish and also fratricides? 39. Happiness is the patrimony of the elevated abodes and in your world I still do not contemplate happiness. 40. Today I come to leave you in this word my new message so that you may emerge into a new life. 41. Build your peace. Build your world of happiness using the virtue of my teachings. 42. Certainly you have fought a lot to procure comforts, pleasures and advances, but your ideals many times contain selfishness, wickedness, excessive ambition. Then instead of achieving happiness or peace, you collect pain, war and destruction, which is what you are collecting in these moments that you live. 43. How are your works going to be perfect on earth? when I see you at odds with the elements of nature, which are the same ones from which you take life. 44. My doctrine does not come to prohibit you from using the elements and forces of nature, but it comes to order you and teach you to use them for good ends. 45. The elements of nature in your hands can become friends and brothers and judges whom punish severely. 46. It was time for men to gather the fruit of experience so that they no longer provoked the forces of the elements, because with all their science they will not be able to contain them. 47. O oh, humanity always distant from me, despite your forgetfulness, my memory is not separated from you, world watered with my blood. I bring you again my love. 48. Do you remember my examples from the second era? Listen. 49. Finding myself on the outskirts of a village, the emissary of a powerful man came before me, who said to me, Lord, how much I have had to walk to get to you. I said to him, Blessed is he who seeks me, for he will always find me. 50. Asked, Who are you? Him who heals all evils with his power. Are you not perhaps the Son of God? I told him then, I am the beginning and the end. I am the resurrection and the life. I am the one who has lowered from heaven to the world to save you. Do you see these men who follow me through counties, provinces, and villages? So you will follow me tomorrow, leaving your royal cloak and becoming confused between the humble and the poor. Truly I say that you have come to call me on behalf of your master, who wants me to cleanse him of his leprosy. Isn't that so? That man, surprised, felt overwhelmed with fear. But I told him, Do not fear, I have only told the truth, because for that I have come to the world. 51. Then the servant said to me, Lord, since you know it, come to the house of my Lord, who is calling you. 52. O oh man, I said to him, Tell your Lord that it is enough for me that he believed in me, when you get to it it will be clean. 53. 
That man walked away and soon his eyes testified with joy the word of Jesus. In that, Matthew came to me and told me, Master, a woman is coming to look for you. I already know, I replied. It is Mary, the Magdalene, who comes looking for me so that I free it from the influences of the spirits that possess it. The disciple was surprised that I knew everything. In my presence she arrived regally dressed. She had been looking for me for a long time to find in my eyes the light that could save her. In dreams had seen the Nazarene freeing her from her burden and was coming towards him, driven by an eager spirit towards light and redemption. 54. She fell at my feet, to the astonishment of everyone present, and I said to her, Why are you crying? You cry of pain and joy, but I forgive you. 55. At that moment all the chains that bound fell from that creature and once free, she followed my footprint, as one of my most faithful disciples. 56. That woman was transformed before a word of forgiveness, in the most humble servant of the Master and later in the sweet staff of Mary, when the hour of pain covered all. 57. I, who heard the voice of the spirits, heard that woman ask me, Lord, is it possible that I am worthy to be with you in that last hour that you announce? Is it possible for me to truly serve you? Oh, woman, I told her, get up, you are already clean. Cover yourself with the mantle of humility and return to the bosom of yours. Go in search of my mother and follow her. 58. I was going on a road to a village when I saw Mary, my mother, coming to me. Oh, beloved son, I know that your lips they have announced your next departure, and although my heart already knew it, I cannot help but tell you that I suffer infinitely for humanity. Yes, it is written, I replied, and it must be so. My sacrifice is necessary. It is necessary that the seed die in the bowels of the earth so that it bears fruit and multiplies. My blood, when spilled, will make your heart a very intense pain. But she will be like a stream of life for men, whom I will leave as your sons. My death will be life, and not for an instant will you and I be distant. 59. Now I am going to the house of Lazarus, because he will shortly go to the tomb, but I will bring him back so that my father's name be glorified. 60. Go you too, so that your presence comforts those women, because their pain will soon be great and in your love will find sweet consolation. 61. Afterwards I met again with my disciples, it was already the last days of my stay among them. This is how they were to understand so they wouldn't be surprised. Peter wept and received my orders in silence. John oppressed my hands between his, when he was announced that he would be accompanied by my mother, so that they could both console each other in the hours of testing. 62. Thaddeus was already suffering from separation from the Master and I was still among them. The moment was tender and painful. More than the lips, the Spirit spoke. But I was the Word and my Word had to calm the immense pain accumulated in those hearts. 63. I spoke like the father to the children, like the brother to the brothers, like the teacher to the toddlers. O oh, disciples, what you have drunk with me the water of the thirsty pilgrim, you have endured the fatigue of the long roads to go after my word and my works. In truth I tell you, that even if I leave your sight, I will not abandon you and that if you want to take me in your hearts resign you to my death, so that I live in you and speak through your mouths. Listen, my disciples, to the last of my words. 64. Under the shade of a tree, I told them, The moment is near, but you can still taste the fruit of my word. Certainly you will remain like sheep among wolves, but you will not succumb because my mantle will cover you. See how big the crowds are. So they will feed as I did in the desert, and you will know how to multiply the bread as I taught you. 65. I am the light of the world, who has come to illuminate the path of the lost in darkness. I am the liberator who comes to break the chains of the captives. You have contemplated what you had yet to see and you have seen it, but the instant in which you all feel my life vibrate in your being. 66. Thus I spoke and caressed through Jesus each one of my disciples, while their eyes overflowed in tears and in their heart expressed tender feelings to me and made innumerable promises to follow me. 67. 
Today I do not want to remind you of the last three days that I spent in the world. This will be another time in which I will talk about the upper room, from my last visit to the garden, where I retired to pray and finally I will tell you about my sacrifice. My peace be with you. Spiritual Teaching 211 Love Each Other 1. My wisdom and my love, I transform them into human words to make them reach your heart. 2. I come to you, people, so that you may live for a few moments under the spiritual essence of my word, so that you may live for a few moments in the realm of spiritual life. 3. Take and eat the bread of my word which is strength and life, so that you will not faint in trials. 4. Some of my new disciples will have their Golgotha where they will complete their mission on earth, but that summit will only be attained by those who are all spirit, elevation, and love. 5. For now, rest and listen to my word, be comforted, that tomorrow you will take up your cross, but do not fear people, that whoever will take up that cross will do so because his heart will overflow with love for humanity. 6. Who will protest having to fulfill this mission when his whole being is saturated with immense charity and great tenderness? 7. Anyone who is a strong spirit in this age of spirituality will know how to take up the cross with love and carry it with meekness. 8. That cross belongs to those who are great in spirit, to those who come to feel saturated by the fire of true love. 9. A fire is now consuming this humanity, but it is not mine, the fire with which they are destroying themselves brothers with brothers, comes from the fire of their violence, passions, hatred, their excessive greed, revenge and materialism. 10. That fire in which humanity is consumed is not the one that is born of the Holy Spirit, but of that hell that men have created with their disobedience to my law. 11. My divine fire is life that gives off light for all beings, not destruction or death. 12. My fire is the light that purifies and ennobles, that illuminates and strengthens, but never the fire that torments without end or that exterminates the life of the Spirit. He is life not death. 13. If I have called you at this time to listen to me, think that it has been to offer you one more opportunity that you emerge into the light, in a spiritual age conducive to the flowering of the seed that I have brought to the world. 14. I am depositing within your spirit my wisdom and my love, this stream of spirituality that is life, health, joy, and peace. 15. Pour out on humanity the word of truth, not only that which I will leave you written, but also that which springs from the Spirit. 16. I want you to emerge at this time and while some are like stars that guide the walkers through the different paths of the world, others be like beacons that send their light on the stormy seas of human passions unleashed, lighting the route of the castaway. I want you to know how to carry my teaching on your lips, so that my divine word, which is the bread of eternal life, is spread throughout the earth. 17. Understand that I have come to renew this world, to purify it, to change everything in. 18. In these moments of remembrance, I make all space filled with my light, that everyone who is standing will pause for a moment before the memory of the Master and meditate. May all who are dying in this hour contemplate me with the look of his Spirit, so that he does not fear to pass beyond this world. 19. I am the sower of love, you are my lands. Who can doubt my power to make you bear fruit in love? 20. You cannot know the amount of seed that I bring you. If you can't take it all, I'll keep saving it for those to come, and if they could not take advantage of it either, it will remain for future generations until there is no land to be cultivated and seed to be sown. 21. Understand my message so that you can develop it on your way. Open your eyes so that you realize the works that I am doing every day. 22. Do you see those men who want to be powerful by force? Very soon you will look at them convinced of their mistake. 23. I am going to show you that only through goodness, which is the emanation of love, can one be truly great and powerful. 24. But as long as some and others ignore what love is, I will have to continue teaching the world. 25. My word sheds his light on you, to teach you to spread it to those who come after you. 26. I am the eternal sower even before coming to earth and being called Jesus by men, 
I was already the sower, those who were beyond the material confusion or ignorance already knew me, those who inhabited regions and spiritual dwellings that you still do not know or can imagine. 27. Of those who knew me before I came to earth, I sent many of you to give testimony of me in the world, to announce the arrival of Christ, the love and the word of the Father. They were some prophets, others forerunners, and other apostles. 28. This world is not the only one that knows the trace of my step. Wherever a Redeemer has been needed, there has been my presence. But I must tell you that while in other mansions my cross and my chalice were separated from me by regeneration and the love of your brothers, here, in this world, after many centuries, you still have me crowned with thorns, tormented on the cross of your imperfections, and always drinking the chalice of gall and vinegar. 29. As my work of love contains redemption for all humanity, I wait for you with infinite patience. I have granted not one, but many opportunities to each being for its elevation, and waited for many who sleep in deep lethargy to awake. 30. Now you are in a time in which you can rise full of light and full of life. I have come to untie one seal more of the book of life and wisdom, so that you know one more chapter of this work. 31. I come to give you with just measure as far as you can receive and only what you can understand and keep. 32. Men in their evolution will grow, and as they develop spiritual and elevation, in greater abundance I will give you my wisdom. 33. I want your spirit to be like a chalice capable of containing the greatness reserved by me for your spirit. Understand that only the great spills over into the great and that the small cannot satisfy the great. 34. My Father's will is that you be useful within the plan of creation, that you be harmonious notes in the midst of the concert of peace. 35. I know that whoever feels the inner illumination of love will voluntarily take up the cross and go step by step in search of his Calvary knowing that it means elevation and approach. Towards the Father. If necessary you will let yourselves be crucified, because you know that in that renunciation, in that surrender you will rise as the Master, gloriously from the dead to ascend to the realm of the Spirit, where life exists in fullness and perfection. 36. Humanity. Here I am, I have come to save you from misery. That soft hand that has touched the one who is heart of heart, it was mine. That sweet doctor who has penetrated your heart to heal you, it was me. 37. Sick and sad humanity. I was with you and you did not know who was visiting you. You did not know how to see in my eyes light from heaven. Oh, humanity! Because you did not understand the content and meaning of each drop of my blood shed by you. You are not happy, because you have not wanted to water your lands with the water of grace that I came to give you. 38. Come here to listen to the concert whose notes speak of perfect love and endless harmony for your spirit. 39. Let the divine light penetrate your heart, as it illuminated that night of my last prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane. 40. Do you remember when I gave myself to the mob who was looking for me to judge? Me? 41. Very great was the lesson that the Master gave to everyone at that moment, but nobody understood it. 42. That delivery was an offering of compliance, of humility, of love was a living example for humanity, because anyone who gives himself to men out of love will be worthy of giving himself to God later. 43. Beloved people, my life was an open book for you to learn to love, but you have not been able to read it. 44. I have pity for your smallness that shows how little strength there is in you, but I am strong and able to supply your weakness and smallness, and loving to suppress your absence of love. 45. I approach you and teach you to be clean, to purify yourselves in resigned and elevated pain, which is repentance sincere and true. 46. Purification is necessary for the perfection of the Spirit. Do not confuse purification and perfection, because a perfect Spirit is greater than a purely clean Spirit. 47. Soon you will be able to be clean, but to achieve perfection you do not know how long and how many tests your spirit will have to pass. 48. It is necessary that you already know a lot about the spiritual life so that you do not get upset when passing from this existence to the other.
How many men, because they have wealth, comforts and satisfactions on earth, consider themselves happy and cannot conceive that someday the pain will come to them, and less in the spirit. When they leave the body on earth and with it everything they possessed, then they become the most wretched beings, the wanderers without peace, without joy and without the light of knowledge. They are like shadows that wander without rest. They do not cry as the world cries, but their sufferings, although no longer physical, they are infinitely more intense than those experienced in the body, since the spirit has been left alone with the judge of their conscience. 49. In those regions where they manage to go with the little strength of their spirit, they have become needy, they have known what misery, loneliness, oblivion, and need is. In their sad existence they retain only a faint glimmer of hope. May the moment come when light appears and rest arrives. 50. Prefer to be poor on earth, knowing that you are achieving something for the benefit of your spirit. Prefer to be needy, needy, sick little ones, but not in the abode where true life is found, because the pain in the spiritual world is incomparably greater than that of material life. 51. Blessed is he who, recognizing the teachings of my doctrine, passes from pride to humility, because he will possess the kingdom of peace. 52. You are not needy even though you wear humble material garments. Understand it this way so that you may become great beyond your world. What do you care about the miseries of this valley of tears? It's a thousand times sadder to not have peace, nor be strong, nor great in spirit. Great spirits overcome everything, achieve serenity before trials, and live the true life that is full of light and peace. 53. You do not get to know the truth because you do not want to dispose of it. Only the simple and humble of heart can know her. 54. Those who do not contemplate the light of truth at every step tell me that my word was sterile because they continue to feed perversity. They tell me that the way to Calvary and the sacrifice on the cross were useless, the wonders that I carried out, my teaching of love, my piety, my last words and the last sigh, which was an invocation of forgiveness for my persecutors and executioners. 55. What do those who do not know the truth know about all this? Who rises above the abyss and prays for his executioners and he blesses his slanderers. He shines with his spirit more than the light of the sun. 56. For those who think that all that life, passion and works were useless, I tell you, there will not be one who does not receive in its time that light and it be saved. 57. But not everyone thinks like these. There are those who even being in the shadows of a prison paying the guilt of a crime, they have moments when they put their thoughts on me and in a stammering prayer they say to me, Lord, if that sinner who came to your presence repentant, found salvation in you, why should I not hope that at the last moment like Demas, give me your hand and take me out of the darkness to bring me to the light? 58. How many who have not yet managed to cast out the prince of darkness that they carry in their flesh, have moments of faith, of illumination, repentance and hope in salvation? How many, casting off their hearts the idea of a new and greater punishment in the hereafter, they prefer to think and believe that Jesus awaits them to free them from their torture and anguish? 59. Those are what you call scum of your society and see how there are times when they sense the truth, and you who enjoy freedom of acceptance, trust in the world, and who often think you know everything because you judge and comment on everything, you do not have an instant of enlightenment that makes you look the truth face to face, for the on the contrary you wrap yourself in doubts and shadows. 60. The seed that with my word, my passion and my blood I sowed in the spirits, does not always flourish in the fullness of a man's life, of a people or a world. Many times it blooms until the moment when man goes to meet death and he senses the life that awaits him, when he who was haughty and proud in his strength, suddenly falls dejected and defeated on the bed of pain. There he meditates, purifies himself and ennobles himself by thinking of me, judging himself through my examples. Then he cries and is transformed because the truth has reached him in an instant. 61. Also the proud peoples, when they have found themselves in the splendor of their material power and their men have been feverishly surrendered to their passions, they have been falsely and hypocritically complying with God through religions, because all your attention and your love are under the control of your ambitions. But when defeat has come and destruction, 
when they've seen their dreams of greatness crumble and reality has come to wake them up, then they have turned their eyes to me to say, Lord, you are right. Only for men of good will can peace and certainly your kingdom and ours are not of this world. 62. Do you see how my seed is not lost? To you who doubt it, I tell you, seek with meditation that seed, without waiting for the pain to put you in front of the truth. 63. This world is full of my word. It is a lie that my footprint has been erased. Wherever you go, you will find my signals and echoes of my voice that echo eternally in the consciences. 64. I am present everywhere and I speak to you incessantly, because I have not finished giving you my message. 65. My people, why do you sometimes still want to put your master to the test again? 66. Yes, I know that there are also those who do not conceive why Christ, if he was the Son of God, gave himself up to his persecutors and could not escape death. If I had not wanted the sacrifice, it would have been very easy for me to disappear so as not to surrender to those who were looking for me, and their eyes, amazed at a miraculous and incomprehensible disappearance, would have made them exclaim, Truly he is the Son of God, but that was not the lesson that I came to give because that would not have taught love. Furthermore, I came to tell you, that he who does his will and it is not the Father's, is not united to him. 67. It is necessary to be interested in understanding all these explanations, because if you do not understand what is of this time, how can you intuit or anticipate what is to come? I want to anticipate some revelations to serve as preparation, promise and prophecy. 68. I tell you that when man is great and elevated by the fulfillment of the law and lives truly united and in harmony with the Spirit, for him the two lives that now divide his existence, that life of spirit and that of human in life will cease to exist. Earth and the spiritual in the universal and infinite world of the Spirit. 69. Then he will not contemplate more than one existence, because in his being there will be only one will. There will no longer be a fight between the flesh and the consciousness and you will feel fused to the universal life. He will dwell in the spiritual or on the earth and wherever he is, he will feel in his Father's house. Everywhere he will enjoy the presence of the Lord and everywhere he will be fulfilling consciously and obediently its mission. The death of matter will then cease to mean what it now means. Those will be the ones who, conquering death, penetrate into eternal life. 70. After I have told you that it was my will to hand myself over to my persecutors that night, you ask me, Lord, so Judas was not guilty? And I tell you, do not judge him, because to judge him as I do, you would need to have mercy in your heart. He was as small and human as you, and in his weakness he let men penetrate his being to betray his master. 71. Do you think that disciple had already come destined by God to betray his master? No people, it wasn't. It was necessary that no one surrendered me. The time had come. The pursuers stalked my step. The scaffold awaited me. 72. That man, like all the others who followed me, had also been chosen to sow the seed of love. He faltered at the decisive moment by turning his back on the one who had loved him so much, to side with those who loved the life of the Master, only because he proved that Jesus was not King of the earth, but of an unknown world and the heart of the disciple still dreamed of the wealth of this world. 73. How great was Judas' repentance when he heard in his conscience one by one the phrases that he had learned from Jesus. How great his pain to think what he had been called to do and what his work was. 74. I tell you all this so that if any of you betray me at this time, they do not want to apologize saying that it had been destined. 75. No one has been destined to betray. You have all been called to redeem you with my love. 76. I was the one who was destined to die on a cross and then flourish in a grave and show you the triumph of life over death. 77. Now I say to my new disciples, when it comes to fulfilling my work, do not love money, because it is false coin of the spirit, its value is negative and represents false values for eternal life. Money can divert you from the path of true charity, of humility that every apostle of mine must carry. 78. I must tell you that I knew beforehand what Judas was going to do, 
and I gave proof of this when I said that one of the twelve was to give myself up. Each one of those disciples gave what he had to give. Each one of them was like a note in the concert that I gave to the world. 79. If one gave the note of purity and elevation, another gave it of faith and strength, another of eloquence and persuasion, another that of humility and of meekness, so each one gave what he brought, what he had taken from the Master and what he felt. There was a weak one, and his weakness also served as a lesson to humanity not to be imitated, but not to be its judge. 80. Disciples, elevate your thoughts tonight so that you are at dinner with me. Come feed on my light. Come and drink the wine of my word. In it you will find the book open for reading, and at the same time you will find bread for you in spirit. 81. Approach the table where you will feel divine love vibrate where anguish also beats, where it mixes the sweetness of hope with the bitterness of parting and the kiss of betrayal. 82. This is where you can best hear the voice of conscience, which will tell you if you have also betrayed, if you have lied, if you have kissed without love. 83. Before you sit down at the table, wash yourselves in the clear waters of prayer. Wash the mind and the heart, so that you let the Spirit attend this spiritual dinner. 84. Are you ready? Sit around me and listen to me in the deepest silence and recollection of your heart. 85. Is everything ready? Are you here for the party, ready and dressed? I have wanted that in these moments your spirit is no less clear than the tablecloths on the spiritual table. 86. Leave out the whirlwind of material life, the small things and human miseries. Come embodied spirits and also you who dwell in spirit. Humanity, come to learn to speak with me so that you will stop being slaves on earth, because he who speaks from spirit to spirit with the master, he has conquered full freedom over the flesh, the world, the darkness of ignorance, especially the yoke. 87. Eat the bread of my word deeply so that you may know what was the struggle of Jesus in those hours of agony and how he beat death. 88. Now I say to you, Pray in the garden of silence and spirituality so that you let your whole being be able to withstand the weight of the cross to the highest point of the mountain. 89. Pray that you see your inner scale illuminated. Spiritual improvement. 90. Be serene so that you continue without fainting on the path of your mission and you will not fear to see your garments torn or the men who persecute you looking for faults or errors in you to accuse you. 91. Forget your sadness and even your material joys and attract those of the Spirit. 92. There are few who know how to pray to enjoy, but there are more who pray to cry. To these I say, do with all a song, but lift it up with such faith and hope in me that you may suddenly be surprised to hear yourself singing a deep and vibrant hymn of love and peace. 93. I speak of spiritual joy and yet you cannot remove from your heart the hours that are approaching and that will continue to be remembered. 94. Yes, people. Sad you will look at the sun in the new day when the evening approaches, and sad will be all those who gather in himself and remember me. 95. The sun will hide itself between crepes as that day it hid behind darkness so as not to contemplate the ingratitude of the people. 96. Before each of the human imperfections Christ the Master came to give his lesson. 97. Did they mock? The Master took the mockery to give a teaching. Were they questioning him maliciously? He answered with love and wisdom, for that was what he had come for. Did they betray you? He, faced with that betrayal, gave his lesson in forgiveness. You asked for his life? He accepted and gave his life. It was necessary to accept everything in order to save and convince. 98. Now tell me, beloved disciples, when you are betrayed by your brothers, will you not reveal yourselves or protest? Know that to win a heart sometimes it is necessary to allow oneself to be betrayed. It is not violence that wins the battles of the Spirit, but true love. 99. My disciples, the book has remained open for this time, let in these moments Jesus walk in your thought, so that in your meditations and evocations you bring to your mind all the moments of my passion that you know well. Whoever remembers me in a high and spiritual way will receive the light that inspires him to discover the meaning of many ignored lessons. 
100. Let me walk with my cross on my back through the streets of your thoughts. Let Jesus, forgetting his pains, walk thinking about your children and forgiving their offenses. Let me spread out on my cross and from there cry out for forgiveness for those who have not known me. Let me be in you until you see the triumph of love, life, and of justice. 101. Crowds. How do you want to be with me as friends or disciples? Or perhaps by forming my cross, will you be like the nails that pierced my hands and feet? Do you want to be the thorns of my crown or the spear that opened my side? 102. You cry, people, and between sobs of pain, you tell me that you want to be with me as John was at the feet of the Master on the cross. And I tell you, that is how I want you to be with me, as that disciple in whom you were all represented when I left you under the cloak of love of Mary, like her children. 103. I leave you with my love and my blessing. My peace be with you. Spiritual Teaching 212 Love Each Other 1. Blessed is the one who comes to me, the one who seeks the Master, the one who seeks forgiveness, the one who takes up the cross, because in me you will find the light to guide you and the forgiveness of your sins. 2. I receive you with love on this day of commemoration. The trace of my passion that I left in humanity is renewed in this day. 3. If the blood of that body evaporated, its essence remained in the spirit of all men. That essence is indelible in your conscience because you remember me when you feel at times the weight of the cross or the heavy slope of Calvary. 4. Since Jesus traced the path with the blood of love, every man who aspires to salvation or to the perfection of his spirit, look for the footprints that I left on earth to follow them. That path is the one I am tracing for you at this time and by which you will arrive at spiritual life, where there is no darkness or pain. 5. The Christian world adopted the cross as a symbol, because on that tree Jesus shed his blood and expired as man, consummating in her his work of redemption. Since then, the cross remained as a symbol of divine love and forgiveness. She has been the banner of the struggles of ideas among humanity, and now that an age has passed since that sacrifice, I present myself again in the world, no longer as a man but in spirit and in truth I tell you that cross is no longer necessary for me. I will no longer carry it on my shoulders. You will no longer see the bloodied rabbi crowned with thorns, with his body flagellated, wetting the rocks on the road with its blood. You will no longer contemplate his eyes downcast with suffering, inspiring pity in some and terror in others. You will not see him reach the top of the mountain to be nailed to his cross among the evildoers. 6. The cross, which was an affront and shame to the one who died on it, remained to become the symbol of sacrifice for love. This was not even imagined by those who persecuted and chose for Jesus the most ignominious death to satisfy their cruelty, because the mobs needed to accuse and condemn him who had done nothing against them, who was goodness, comfort, and forgiveness for all. Man was in an abyss from which he could not conceive the good, the love that I came to show him with my sacrifice. 7. In this time I have not come as a man, and the cross will not be upon me. Now I am the one who places it on your heart, a cross of love so that you follow my steps. 8. You have already felt the grave weight of that cross, you have already felt your flesh scourged, when the pain has arrived even the spirit, you have also already felt what it is like to fall on the road. The sorrows of your life have been blows of a whip and mockery, when by your way of looking for me they have judged you unreasonable, like Jesus himself, have been like the spear that split open the Redeemer's side. 9. Here is your life as a Calvary, disciples. Anyone who wants to imitate me, follow me and reach me, will have to live with passion and drink the chalice of gall and vinegar. 10. You have called this earth well, a valley of tears, you have come to know good and evil, because no one was born perfect in knowledge and merits. So, I have given you free will to choose the path, so that your spirit is the one who by his effort reaches higher heights. 11. But, whoever chooses the wrong path, it is necessary for him to know pain, so that when he feels that he is moving away from grace and the light, wash and strengthen in repentance and thus learn to overcome temptations. 12. How meritorious is it before me, 
the effort of the one who fights against the temptations that become more insistent as looking more for your elevation. 13. My sacrifice was not useless, people, because both those who love me and those who deny me will have to follow my footprints. That work will prevail in the book of times and will always bear fruit. 14. You cannot know why the weight of your cross or the responsibilities and sufferings are lighter in some than in others. Everybody on this earth you ignore your past. Nobody knows the instant in which your spirit received the light. Given this, take with resignation the cross that whoever follows me will survive death itself. 15. My voice on this day is one of law and justice. It is the same voice that you heard on Sinai. Today, as in that day, I contemplate the unwillingness of many. Then I gave you my law engraved in stone for the first and second time, because the first time it was broken. Moses exasperated at your idolatry and your frailty, but now that I come to write it in your consciousness, what are you going to do with it? Are you going to make Elijah, the envoy of this time, demand the fulfillment of my law? 16. In the bottom of your heart you say to me, Lord, it has been a long time since our ingratitude that made the tablets of your law to be broken by the wrath of Moses. How would we be able in this time to ignore your law again? I say to you, it is necessary that you be watching, because in the second era Jesus came to bring you the law of love and you did spill every last drop of his blood and you did not recognize him. 17. I ask you, people, and you, humanity, where is the law that I gave you at Sinai? Where is the bread from eternal life that Christ gave you later? Head down you listen to my questions because you recognize that you are out of the way. 18. In the first era you were a people made up of twelve tribes, also Israel, putting aside all fear of my justice, divided into several towns. Today you are on earth again, but how could you divide yourselves into peoples or tribes, when a single family is made up of children of different tribes and marriages, have also been made up of elements of the twelve tribes? Who has conceived this plan? I am the one who has selected and gathered you. Here's why there are those who shudder when they hear this voice without knowing why. They are the ones who listened to me in the past. 19. Here you have the third era approaching its culmination. In it you are receiving the manna of the desert, the blood of Jesus and the light of the Holy Spirit. When your purification is necessary you have Mary, your universal mother, who washes you with her tears of love and covers you with her mantle of mercy. 20. Again to my people I say, unify yourselves because I am contemplating that while some make the purpose of fulfilling my mandates, others are opposing it. Do not be divided because with this you will open the door to temptation. My word it is for everyone, it does not matter that there are among the crowds who do not bow their necks to my voice, dominated by doubt that it produces in them, to see me communicated through a rough, clumsy and humble understanding. 21. How many of those who persecuted and mocked me in the past, today have come to live full of peace, which I have given them as proof of my all-forgiving love, but upon hearing that I have come again, their spirit has been feeling overwhelmed by fear and they have come cautiously to check if my communication is true. Then to listen to me they have trembled, because they have felt called by my voice. 22. This is the people that I chose to bring light and peace to the nations, which had spread and hidden among humanity. But my insightful and penetrating gaze knew where each of my servants was to make them the called and point out their mission and for whose fulfillment I am still waiting for them. 23. The world saw with indifference the passage of Mary on earth, but in truth I tell you, today you will know her mother's voice, her sweet voice that is a lullaby, comfort, hope and bomb. Some recognize her, others deny her. However, she, tender and loving, spreads its divine mantle over the universe, and under it gives warmth and protection to all its creatures. She also saves and redeems. It is the celestial ark that contains its mysteries to be revealed. If as for woman, her womb was the ark where was deposited the body of Jesus, how much will his spirit save for all his children? 24. How deep has been the pain that the world has nailed in the heart of its mother, and with how much tenderness she hides her tears, 
to show you only the sweetness of her smile and the love of her caresses. Always between my justice inexorable and the sins of men rises the intercession and tenderness of Mary, your heavenly mother. 25. From the cloud I am speaking to you and inviting you to come to me. 26. I still contemplate you studying the first page of the book and my teaching time is already short. 27. I want that when you come to me, you can say to me, Behold, Lord, the fruit of my harvest, the regeneration of some of my brothers through my example. Because if you do not fulfill your mission, you will not be able to enter my kingdom. 28. In three eras I have come to offer you spiritual salvation and you have remained deaf to my voice. This is the last call that I make to you. That's why I ask you to listen to me, that you clothe yourselves with humility, that you descend from your greatness and cast off all hatred from your heart. 29. My word is not flowery, it is simple for everyone to understand and not given to different interpretations. 30. There can be no ignorant among my people, for I have flooded you with wisdom. 31. In all the trees I contemplate good fruits and other vain ones, but of the latter I do not want you to introduce me. You are the ones to choose the pleasant fruits that you have to show me. You are already aware of all your obligations. Yesterday you were stumbling across the world, because a veil of darkness covered your pupils, but I came like lightning in the night to illuminate your paths. Since then you know where you are. 32. You have learned to consult your conscience before taking a step. 33. Today that you are gathered, be obedient to my teachings, because the great trials are approaching. 34. The Master is with you once again. On this day I have come to pamper you, to wake you up with my word of love, to give you my kiss of peace and ask you, why not make me present in your heart? 35. I have not come to judge you, but to ask you to have true love and charity in your actions, to listen to the voice of your consciousness. 36. In all times I have come to shed my blood for you, sometimes in front of the material gaze of man and others intangibly. At every moment I find myself watching over you, so that you do not suffer in this world and so that after your material life you reach in the hereafter, eternal life in your spirit. But you haven't understood. You have not listened to my word and that is why in this time I have come from the white cloud to take flight and my ringing bell asking you to come together and love one another. 37. You begin to study, but you have not understood even the first page of my book, knowing that the time is short in which I give you my lesson. You have to study and analyze my teaching and get up strong along the way, because you don't receive without you having first studied what I have given you at this time. 38. You have made me cry and shed blood and I already want you to come to me and tell me before my presence. Master, here is the teaching, here is the harvest, here is the good example that I have given to humanity. There is regenerated humanity. I want you to show me the man and woman you have converted, because without this fulfillment you will not enter my arcane. Three times I have come to this world to offer different opportunities of salvation to your spirit. But you have let my words go unnoticed and you have disobeyed my commands. That is why I tell you, this is the last of those opportunities and you must put into practice what I am giving you by dressing yourselves in humility, descending from the pedestal of your false greatness, casting off ill will and hatred for your brothers, unifying yourselves, because this is what I am asking of you. 39. We are still ignorant because I have poured out my teaching on you and I ask you, why do I contemplate that my disciples have not wanted to understand me and they are interpreting my words and my orders in different ways and according to their own will? Have I not come to speak to you in your own language, with simple words so that all of you can understand me? I am not speaking differently to each other, that is why I do not want you to tell me tomorrow. Master, we did not understand you. We did not understand your orders and therefore we do not carry them out. No, Israel, you must discard the poison that now houses in your heart. You must understand this law well, because it is not the fault of your sin, and it is not fair that my work pays this ingratitude. Why have men failed to appreciate it if I am delivering as white and pure as snow? 40. Watch and pray, because at every moment I contemplate the divisions of one and the other. 
I contemplate that you want to separate from my law, some turning their back on me, and the others raising their path to walk according to their own will, giving stumbling and preferring to find the thorn rather than to walk with rectitude on the path that I have come to trace for you. Trees grow everywhere, giving humanity a different fruit than the one I am delivering. Moreover, I contemplate that the good fruit is also mixed and therefore I say to you, take out the vain fruit and leave the good one, choose it and show me only the clean seed and the golden wheat. You are no longer the children of darkness as you were yesterday, because I have come among you like a luminous ray to illuminate your path, to let you know what is the path of truth. You can already see and walk through it because I have come to give you strength and to take your hand so that you can take the first steps and then you can walk alone, but firmly without falling into pain or sin and without being led by the evil that exists in this world. 41. Today you are no longer innocent children, today you know how you have to advance, what acts you are going to develop and what are the good and bad ways, because I have given you my heart and conscience so that you can consult them. For this reason, I have long been asking you not to eat the forbidden fruit, not to draw your two-edged sword to give civil death to your brothers, that you realize the purity and perfection of my law that has been won through all times, so that you may rise with understanding and goodwill, fulfilling my heavenly mandates, so that peace may be in the universe and extermination does not continue taking lives. I do not want to contemplate you crying and with bitterness on your palate. On this day too I am going to give you my divine charity. 42. Blessed is he who is ready, because he will contemplate peace on his way and my charity poured out in its spirit and flesh. From the glory I pour out the crystalline waters so that you will rise strong in this time. I give my love in torrents so that you can move on and realize that I am tireless, so that you imitate me tomorrow, shedding all materialism, all vanity and taking with you only good news to be the clean mirror in which this humanity can be contemplated. 43. I have always come after the straying, to raise them from sin and put them on the path of salvation. Tomorrow the great trials will come and it is my will to leave you as the strong soldier of Christ who can fight and walk ahead of them. 44. In presence, power and essence, at this dawn I have been among you. I give you the daily bread and the balm. I bless you, your children, the grieving mothers and the elderly. I give you all my peace, my love and my light. 45. Love, humanity, love with the purest love that can lead you to truth, and then you will know what I mean by these words. The force that moved the lips of Jesus when he was with you, it was that of love, that is my voice, that is why he told you, I am the, the way, the truth, and the life. 46. There is no power greater than that of love. It is also the fire that purifies and water of grace that cleanses. 47. Despite how much I speak to you, there are disciples who believe today and not tomorrow, because they have their hours to believe and their hours to doubt. 48. I see in you a people tired of their human life and intensely concerned, and from this results a people who, calling himself a spiritualist, he lives very attached to earthly things. 49. And I have told you, awake to the truth and do not do what the scribes and Pharisees who clean the glass only on the outside, or that when they try to do charities they think that they should not give everything because they would be left poor and without bread to carry to his lips. 50. Ah, uh, how much will those who think like this have to wander like shadows? You will be born and you will be born again, as long as you do not learn to give the love that I teach you. 51. I don't want you to be children forever. Is it fair that this people should say to me in their prayers, Lord, love, and then on your way do not do a single charity? Why am I still catching you cheating? Why not do true charity and when you do you do it to be seen and heard? 52. You become confused and sometimes you make a show of faith when your faith has grown cold. Then I find you cold also in the charity, in loyalty and purity. 53. Truly I tell you, no one will pass through the door of the cross if he does not learn to be loyal. 54. Beloved disciples, I tell you that if I sometimes speak to you with a harsh word, it is not as righteous as the one you deserve according to your deeds. 55. I only come to wash you of imperfections with my word. Where are the white robes that you prepared to be with me at this party? 56. I want to penetrate into your interior to contemplate my sanctuary, 
O oh, spirits of men who believe you were born yesterday and long ago you sprang from him who bears the love of a father and the love of a mother, because from him are all ways of perfect love. 57. Just as you see the human body develop, it also leaves developing the spirit. But the body finds a limit to its development while the spirit requires many subjects and eternity to reach your perfection. 58. That is the cause of your reincarnations. You were born from the paternal and maternal mind of God, pure, simple and clean, similar to a seed. But do not be confused because it is not the same to be pure and simple as to be big and perfect. 59. You can make the comparison of a child who has just been born with a man of experience who teaches children. 60. That will be your destiny throughout the ages, when your spirit is developed. But how slowly does your spirit advance? 61. Almost 2,000 years ago, with a few words, I taught you how to find the kingdom of God, love one another. I told you, you have lived many times without matter or with it, in this valley and in others, and you have not been able to learn the lesson. 62. You will still go a long way until that sublime teaching becomes a reality in your spirit. 63. This world is called to spiritualize with its inhabitants and thus end its sufferings and vicissitudes. 64. The fire of my love comes to melt the snow of your heart, and although the centuries pass, I will continue teaching, and you will come to learn and love. 65. Do you remember Mary Magdalene? Have you not understood the symbol that it contains? 66. The mind of man does not know how to understand my symbols, the essence of my passage. 67. Symbols are fallen images that must no longer exist in the worship of humanity in its light age. 68. Mary Magdalene was worthy of my tenderness and my forgiveness. 69. She soon achieved her redemption, which is not the case with others who weakly ask forgiveness for their sins. While she soon found what she was looking for, others did not. 70. Magdalena made herself forgive without showing off her repentance. She had sinned as you sin, but she had loved a lot. She who loves may have mistakes in her human behavior, but love is the tenderness that overflows from the heart. If you want to be forgiven like her, turn your eyes to me full of love and trust, and you will be like her, absolved of all stain. 71. That woman did not sin again. The love that overflowed from her heart consecrated her to the Master's doctrine. 72. It was forgiven. Although she had made mistakes, in her heart she carried the fire that purifies, and for that forgiveness she received, she no longer left a moment from Jesus. Rather my disciples left me alone in the hours more bloody than that little one. Mary Magdalene did not turn away from me. She did not deny me. She was not afraid or ashamed. 73. For this reason it was granted to her to cry at the foot of my cross and over my tomb. Her spirit was soon redeemed by how much that she loved. In her heart she also carried the spirit of an apostle. Her conversion shines like the light of truth. She had known how to humble herself before me to tell me, Lord, if you want it, I will be saved from sin. 74. While you, how many times would you like to convince me of your innocence by covering your faults with long sentences? 75. No, disciples, learn from her. Truly love your Lord in each one of your brothers. Love much and your faults will be forgiven. You will be great when you make that truth. My peace be with you. Spiritual Teaching 213 Love Each Other 1. The light of my spirit is with you. Christ is on your spirit and through human lips manifests the word of life and truth as a path that leads to me. 2. Open the doors of your sanctuary so that I penetrate to the purest of your being. 3. Resurrection Sunday you call this day, because in it you evoke the events that Jesus experienced as he passed through the earth. 4. Now lift the veil of mystery so that you enter the sanctuary of truth. In this lesson I reveal great teachings so that the darkness of the mystery with which yesterday you lived, my light makes it disappear from you. Listen, only the one who dies can resurrect. Do you believe that Christ died at that time? Could you imagine your dead teacher? 5. 
Death is only a symbol. Death exists for those who have not yet reached the knowledge of the truth. For them death is still a spectrum behind which is the mystery or nothingness. I say to you, open your eyes and understand that you will not die either. You will separate from matter, but that does not mean that you will die. You, like your master, you have eternal life. 6. When I left my body, my spirit entered the world of spirits to speak to them with the word of truth like you. I spoke to them of divine love because that is the true knowledge of life. 7. Truly I tell you, the spirit of Jesus was not a single instant in the tomb. He had many other worlds in which to do charities. My infinite mind had for those, as for you, many revelations to manifest. 8. There are also worlds where beings in spirit do not know how to love. They dwell in darkness and yearn for light. Today men know that where there is selfishness and the lack of love, there is darkness, war and passions are the key that closes the door of the path that leads to the kingdom of God. 9. Love, on the other hand, is the key that opens the kingdom of light which is truth. 10. Here I have communicated through flesh, there I have communicated directly with higher spirits, so that they instruct those who are not qualified to receive my inspiration directly. 11. And those high, luminous beings are here for you, the spokesman. 12. Today you will know the reason for my coming to this world and the reason for my visit to those worlds. 13. I had said to the spirits, You will be born again, and before atoning in body, you will cleanse your spirit of all superfluous impressions, so that in your new birth you may be like burning torches. 14. Men who carry the light of my Holy Spirit are like burning torches. Those who don't want to know the truth, they are like extinguished torches, lamps that do not burn because they have not been lit in the fire of my wisdom. 15. I do not want you to be extinguished torches, because you will not be able to fulfill your destiny, that is, with the mission of your spirit. 16. Truly I tell you, that in the moments in which my word vibrates through the understanding of man, Thousands and thousands of spirit beings are here witnessing my manifestation and listening to my voice. The number of them is always greater than that of those who are presented in the field. Like you, they slowly emerge from the darkness to enter the kingdom of the light. 17. You are eternal. 18. This day of remembrance and meditations is the symbol of the glory of the spirit, of the resurrection of the light of your lamp. 19. It has pleased me to manifest myself among you in these days of commemoration, to awaken in your hearts feelings of faith, piety, spirituality. I have used these hours to wash and purify your hearts. 20. Why did you get stained? Because you have not been led by the power of the Spirit, whose strength you have confused with that of your human will, your vanities and whims. 21. It is necessary that you penetrate into your heart, into your interior, so that you know to what degree you are, you listen for the voice of the consciousness, in what state of love you are for your fellow men. So you will know to what extent you are burning torches or extinguished flames. 22. I tell you that according to your love, so will the force, the goodness and light that you have. 23. You too will have your day of liberation and your day of glory. What will that day be? the one in which you win on the battlefield of your life. 24. Earth is a battlefield, there is much to learn there. If it were not, a few years of life would be enough on this planet and you would not be sent time after time to reincarnate. There is no gloomier and darker grave for the spirit than its own body if it carries in itself scum and materialism. 25. My word raises you from that grave and then gives you wings to fly back to the regions of peace and spiritual light. 26. As your spirit triumphs over darkness and overcomes obstacles, in it the light appears. For this reason, some of you will travel the road longer than others. 27. Great will be he who follows the trail of spiritual progress, and passing over him the ages and ages to acquire the light, experience and evolution. 28. And after that struggle, efforts and tears, you will have your liberation and your glory, the one in which arise shining in fullness with the light of consciousness. 29. Glory is not a specific place, glory is the end of the evolution of the spirit. 
Not being that glory a fixed place, it is necessary that you understand why those who doubt the existence of the Spirit say, I will die, and those who believe in eternal life say, I will always live. 30. He who materializes his faith and his worship imagines and seeks God in the limited. 31. The spiritualist knows that the omnipotent is in everything, that the world, the universe and the infinite are saturated of my essence and my presence. 32. Whoever thus recognizes and conceives me is a living temple of God and will no longer materialize the manifestations of the Spirit with symbols or forms. 33. Do not say already that there is only one heaven and one earth, and that these are certain places, there are thousands of worlds. Do not forget that I said in Jesus, there are many mansions in my Father's house. 34. It is good that in material life you adhere to the laws of your nature, but also understand that these laws are not eternal. 35. I have come once more to the humble because they are the ones who better understand these words. Remember that I said, He who has been humiliated will be exalted. On this day that you call resurrection, spiritualize yourselves so that you say, I am the temple and the lamp, I am the offering. Love each other, yes, people, because the one who loves carries within himself the glory. Blessed people, spirits of the twelve tribes of Israel incarnated at this time to form the shield of humanity. I am preparing you in spirit and in matter to make of you a docile instrument and lead you along this path that I trace for you, so that you show a good example to the new generations. 36. Among you are the descendants of Reuben, Dan, Judah and Levi, Issachar and Zebulun and all the patriarchs of the tribes, and as strong spirits that you are, you must continue to manifest that strength and faith in your God. 37. The name of Israel cannot be erased, and although it has been coveted, tried and persecuted, these people will not die because it is the seed of your first parents, who were the trunk and life of many generations. Today look at that decadent and highly degenerate race, which has loved its flesh more than its spirit and he has puffed up with his gifts. That is why I have made you incarnate in another land, in another race, so that you not fall into those mistakes. 38. Spirituality has been inspired to you since the beginning of time. It is a seed that was given to you so that you cultivate it with care, and I entrusted you with the task of transmitting it to all peoples without distinction of race. Today, in the fullness of time, I come to you to ask you for an account of that seed. 39. All men carry that seed because before you were matter, you have been spirits, and spirituality is the path that I have pointed out to you, by which you will become perfect. 40. You are the most graceful people and despite this you have not known how to use your gifts, you have not wanted to interpret my will. This world that I have prepared for recreation, development and blessing of your spirit, you have loved as if it were your eternal home, and you have put deep roots in it. You forget spiritual life and do not prepare your entry into that valley that awaits you. 41. Look, that abode is populated by spirits lacking in merit due to their lack of spirituality, preparation, and how much pain overwhelms them, how much regret. You must not inhabit that world, without first making progress to those spirits that either by ignorance or rebellion did not know how to work for their elevation. 42. What humanity calls progress is not for spirits, because if they were elevated they would love me over everything created and there would be peace and harmony among men. They only present their spiritual nakedness and ignorance to me. 43. How hard is humanity to convert to good? You are not in accordance with my laws and you do not want to modify your life. My word hurts you when I speak of regeneration. How do you want me to be quiet if you are not accepted? 44. Be strong, Israel, fight against evil. Go even against yourselves if you bear traces of evil. Prepare the environment that you breathe. Overcome all foreign influences. Make use of your faculties and powers. Watch and pray. 45. Cement the faith of humanity and build with it a tower so high that it reaches the celestial whose base is immovable. 46. With your prayer and with spiritual works you can stop the advance of the elements of destruction because they will be unleashed with greater force than now after 1950. Humanity will purify itself so that it can receive the good news, 
and after your great pain you will see the iris of peace shine and you will feel my call that invites you to enter a new life. 47. Today that you have returned to earth you come to witness my presence. It is one of the missions that you have always had and you are surprised when I speak to you in this way, because you think you have no knowledge of the past of your spirit. But that trace is so deep that neither you nor time can erase your history. 48. I am teaching you so that later you will preach my teaching, and those who will hear you will be surprised of your words and they will have you for the new prophets and apostles. Then they will love you. Make your work be fruitful. Do not sow in barren land. Do not expose my work to mockery. Be prudent and please those who request you and forgive those who do not know how to receive you. 49. My word has found an echo in the union of your thoughts and my spirit of teacher delights in teaching my new disciples. 50. If you meditate deeply, you will find that I have always been with you and that from the first revelation, my message led men to spirituality. It is natural that after a few thousand years of dwelling spirits on this earth, bring you a doctrine of higher elevation than you now have. 51. My doctrine, which is at all times the explanation of the law, has come to you as a path of light, as a safe place for the spirit. Yet men employing the free will with which they were endowed, wanting to follow a path for their life, they have always chosen the easy path of materiality, some ignoring absolutely the calls of the consciousness that always lead towards the spiritual, and others creating cults and rites to believe that they are steadily on the spiritual path, when in truth, they are so selfish like those who have excluded my name and my word from their lives. 52. If you could contemplate from here the spiritual valley where materialized beings live, those who they have worked nothing for the spiritual journey after this life, you would be stunned. But not for an instant you would say, How terrible is the justice of God? No, instead you would exclaim, How ungrateful, how unfair and cruel we are with ourselves. How indifferent to our spirit and how cold we have been as disciples of Christ. 53. That is why I have allowed those beings to manifest themselves at times in your life and give you the painful message, distressing, of his dark and peaceless life. They are inhabitants of a world that does not have the radiant light of the spiritual dwellings nor the beauties of the earth that it inhabited. 54. That vast valley, full of confusion, remorse, pain, sadness and despair, is only illuminated by the light of consciousness that awakens those beings one by one, and when that light reaches to invade the whole spirit, it recognizes its path, casts off the garment of materiality that it retained and returns to feel that he lives, that he has been resurrected, that a voice calls him from infinity, and that voice is that of the Father, who from the beginning of time traced the path of light and happiness. 55. Not one of you wants to go and dwell in the darkness of trouble, nor to drink the cup of regrets. 56. To avoid that infinite bitterness, have charity of your spirit, do true works of love, not superficial works with which you try to deceive yourself. 57. My doctrine imparts spirituality, and spirituality means truth, purity, light, sincerity and love. 58. This is my path, the only one, the one that from the beginning was traced for you and was written in all consciousness. 59. My voice, which resounds again in the depths of your being, comes to call you towards the lost path, towards the forgotten path, so that you accumulate merits, which will be light, satisfactions and elevation for your spirit, when he has to pierce the veil that exists between the material and the spiritual. 60. I am talking about that veil because your little spiritual elevation still does not allow you to unite all of them into one existing abode, and just as on earth your lack of brotherhood has divided you into peoples and nations, in the universe small beings have been divided into worlds, dwellings and spaces. 61. The time will come when the borders of this world will be erased by the love and worlds approaching each other for spirituality. 62. Meanwhile, the struggle between consciousness and free will will continue, of which man takes and takes advantage to make your life what you please. 63. The struggle between these two forces will reach its culmination and the triumph will be inclined on the part of the Spirit, which, in an absolute surrender of love towards his Father, he will say to him, Lord, I renounce my free will, 
let it be done to me only your will. 64. I will bless the one who thus comes before me and I will wrap him in my light, but I will let him know that this blessed freedom with which he was endowed, I will never take it from him, for he who does my will, he who is faithful and obedient, is worthy of the trust of his Lord. 65. Is it true that you have understood what I have told you about the spiritual life? See how the spiritual is simple and transparent, contrary to your doctrines and teachings that complicate everything. 66. Meditate, disciples. 67. My sanctuary opens and something of it I let men manifest through the spokesperson. 68. In the year 1866 a star shone like the one that announced the birth of the Messiah. Few contemplated it because the world was sleeping. 69. That star was Elijah, and with his manifestation through the understanding of Roque Rojas, a new spiritual age was opened. With his light he came to illuminate the way to guide men and announce a time of great revelations. Moreover Elijah is my prophet and my forerunner. Through his spirit I prophesied the time of my communication in the same way. 70. The first listeners, the first witnesses of that manifestation, were surprised to hear that the word that Roque Rojas pronounced, it was not his but it came from the beyond, which was a word full of consolation, promises and of hope. 71. The small number of toddlers grew, becoming a multitude, which upon receiving later the presence of the teacher through new spokesman, he recognized in the word a fruit with divine flavor and spiritual essence, which was the only one that could quench their thirst and quench their hunger. 72. A new apostolate arose from among these people, made up of simple and humble hearts, but full of love and faith to follow me. There could not be a lack of a new Thomas who needed to see to believe in my presence. A new Peter who, believing in me, would deny me for fear of humanity and a new Judas Iscariot who betrayed me, changing my word and my truth for coins and flattery. 73. The multitudes that make up this people continued to grow and branch out through cities, counties and villages, and apostles of truth and rectitude, self-sacrificing peasants and full of zeal in the doctrine of their Lord and pure-hearted prophets who have spoken the truth. 74. Before an immense and invisible spiritual table I sit you so that you can eat my heavenly bread and my eternal wine, so that you never lack the strength in your mission. While there are those who listen to me, they remain spiritually lethargic, there are also those who question me at every moment because they are eager to know. They ask me, why am I manifest to humanity in that form? Why did Elijah come before? Who is Elijah and who is Roque Rojas? And who unleashed the seven seals? 75. I answer and teach everyone with the love of the perfect master. If some are confused because I do not come among royal altars or sumptuous ceremonies, the spirituality that others have tells them that Jesus never looked for finery or vanities, but hearts. 76. I have always come after your spirit, not your body. Because matter belongs to earth where its bosom claims it, while the spirit through its consciousness will always be hearing the divine voice that calls it. 77. Long has been the time of my preaching in my last coming, it encompasses from 1866 to 1950. 78. The first fruits of my teaching must be those of your spiritual and material regeneration, abandoning all idolatry, fanaticism, superstition, erroneous interpretations and also selfishness, bad wills, vices and all scourge. When that is, you can talk about my law without confusing anyone. You will not print your errors in my doctrine, nor will you hide it by reserving it only for you. 79. Raise your spirit through a more perfect worship and lift your heart through virtuous and good deeds. You will be like the beginning for a new world, a new humanity that knew how to rise on the foundations of spirituality that I brought you in my revelation of the third era. My peace be with you. Spiritual Teaching 214 Love Each Other 1. Through human lips I give you my word, because the messages that I send instant by instant to men, you don't even perceive them. That is the reason why I have had to communicate by the understanding of man. It is not that I need human devices to manifest myself, you are they that have needed it. 2. My loving law has only come to separate bristle by bristle from the path, so that you can reach me. 3. 
For me nothing is impossible or difficult. So from the same man I made the instrument of my communication and with it I showed my charity towards you, forgiving your imperfections and not paying attention to your stains. Also I gave proof of my power by giving you a wise, sweet, divine word, through a poor understanding and impure and clumsy lips. 4. You have all seen that miracle, when you have felt the matter of the speaker disappear and you perceive the presence of the teacher. Then you have enjoyed the divine word, you have felt transported to a world of light and you have felt delighted in the spiritual peace of ecstasy. 5. How long did the Master speak to you? How long were you inside that elevation? You could not say because at that hour you were beyond time. 6. Later, when the speaker has ceased, you have felt infinite desires to come to your home to repeat my words. You have had noble desires to meet someone who had offended you on the road to forgive him, or with someone in need to give them the good news of my presence. 7. When you finally find someone to whom you can tell what you heard, you feel that your lips are clumsy to express that divine lesson and then you understand that this word is truly profound and that also the way in which these spokespersons work is worthy of your attention. 8. The Master says to those who suffer, considering themselves clumsy to express the divine word, Do not be afraid, little by little your gifts will develop until the day comes when you do not even need communication through the spokespersons, because the message I send you, you will receive directly through the perfect communication of spirit to spirit. 9. When you manage to take that step, take a good look at what I tell you. Life will arise before your spirit, before your senses and before your mind, like a stream of wisdom, like a song of love, like a ladder that elevates you towards the Creator. 10. Get to that height soon, people, so that you may live in a high spiritual way and in true harmony with everything created. 11. Now you are just the tender toddlers of a doctrine infinite in power and wisdom, but the one who teaches it is the master of masters. Allow yourselves to be gently lead by me, and you will see how my love will remove every thorn and all that cause to stumble. 12. My word in this third era comes to fill the immense void that exists in the spirit of humanity, a void that men have never been able to fill with human love, with the riches of the world, with rites or material worship. 13. The desired message has arrived among you, blessing those who waited for it and awakening those who were sleeping. My message is for everyone and everyone will know it as the time reaches each heart, each people and each nation. 14. My word is the light of truth and justice that shines in the darkness of this humanity. Speaking to your spirit, inviting it to meditate so that he knows the reason for my advent and the explanation of every mystery. 15. For humanity to sing a hymn of peace, it needs to love and forgive. Do not feed any more on selfishness or resentment, hatred or darkness, because you are stopping my spirit who wants to reach yours to form his reign of peace among men. 16. Yes, people, you who are a small part of humanity, know of the moral and material destruction that exists, you see its misery and its scarcity, its sadness and desolation, that misery and that pain is suffered not only by the flesh but also by spirit that has weakened for lack of merit. 17. Be guides of your brothers, be my forerunners. Feel my love and love fully and selflessly. Light up and take this light around the world. Be inspired by the truth and deepen yourselves in the great revelations that I have made to you through the times and bring this knowledge to those who know less than you. 18. Penetrate with this light in yourselves and discover the power with which I have endowed your spirit and when you take advantage of the value of those gifts, you will know how to love life and from this valley that you inhabit, you will love and know eternal life. 19. Love and forgive much if you want to call yourselves my apostles. Think of me, and your grief will dissipate. Do not feel pain if they offend you, bless and leave your cause to me. Then you will feel happier than those who think they are rich because of their money, because you have forgiven. You do not know if that forgiveness is the price of your salvation and with that work you will be able to illuminate the spirit of the one who made you suffer and with it you have also rescued him. 20. Love everything, even the air that you breathe, because my love is in it as it is in all creation. Love time and the hour in which you live, because in everything my spirit is manifested. Don't you feel how this nature that surrounds you asks for peace and love? I will return to their channel to all the elements. I will restore all creatures, 
but man will have to suffer all consequences of their faults that have led to destruction. 21. This bread that I am giving you is the food that humanity needs, the only one that can sustain it. Receive it with love and with it make yourselves strong so that you are within the fulfillment. 22. Live your life widely, live serenely and patiently so that you demonstrate your faith. Fear nothing, I am with you. If you are strong, you will be able to see your city fall stone after stone and you will not be afraid, because within you is the divine power, that part of my spirit that is in you and with it you can build great works in the heart of your brothers. You can give joy to the sad, wipe away tears, lift the downcast spirit. The work that builds with faith and with love it will be great and indestructible. 23. Let yourself be led by my love to eternal life. Open your eyes and participate in the greatness and beauty that I have created for the happiness of all my children. My blessing goes out to all, believers and unbelievers. I clean the path of thorns so that you do not hurt your plant any more and you continue always firm, obedient to your Father. 24. In my word I bring you healing for your ailments. In your word I come to deposit balm for the sick. But understand, people, that this bomb is not only for the body, but also for the spirit, not only for the one who lives in the world, also for the one who is in spirit. 25. Sometimes, when I am speaking to you through these spokespersons, I contemplate that you are all surrounded, others possessed and others persecuted, by disturbed beings who dominate your will, disturb your mind or make your body sick. Then I speak to them with the language of the spirit and I push them out of your way, but not everything has to be done by the master. I want you to know what is the cause of these beings, brothers of yours, penetrate your material life and what you must do to get rid of its bad influences, at the same time making light in those spirits worthy of your charity. 26. Those spirits that no longer belong to human life, reach men and still live with them. From this I gave you many lessons in the second era, taking advantage of the cases in which some possessed but that people and their priests did not understand the meaning of those revelations and they judged according to their bad faith. 27. Now I come to expand my lessons so that you are possessors of this knowledge and to give you weapons so that you fight and conquer confusion. 28. Disciples. The cause that motivates the presence of troubled spirits, without peace and without light, among you, are the bad thoughts, the bad words, low passions, bad habits, vices. All this is like a force that attracts all those who, because they have not been purified, have to look for impure dwellings in which to dwell. They are beings without a body, who in their confusion look for foreign bodies to express themselves through them. But their embarrassment and influence only disturb the peace, cloud the mind, or make those who are approaching to stray. 29. Those spirits are the symbol of disease, the inhabitants of the shadows, those who do not even know what is life nor what is death. 30. I, who am the light of the Spirit, seek one after another the lost, one after another the dead to spiritual life, to rescue them from their torment and make them feel peace, that peace that comes from understanding. But, I tell you again that not only the Master, but the disciples must also know how to make light in those beings that, although invisible to the sense of your material sight, are perceptible to the sensitivity of those who know how to get prepared. 31. The way to fight against the bad influences of that world more numerous and stronger than yours is to pray, to remain faithful to the dictates of my doctrine and the firmness in the good. The one who fights with these weapons he not only frees himself, but also saves and frees his brothers. 32. How can you be spiritualists if you ignore this teaching? How could the healing have been complete in what Jesus was doing if he had not revealed the healing of the possessed? 33. Study my words deeply and do not try to make science of my teachings, nor to use what I have taught to free you without loving those who come to disturb you, because you will fall along with them into the darkness. 34. When will you make with your good works of this earth a world in which everyone who passes by in trouble, then leave full of light? When will you cease to be a suitable room for the presence of that world of bad influences? 35. If you do not get to know this reality, you will never be able to get rid of those snares, nor will you be able to do anything in benefit of the great needy. You will be both sick and continuously contagious with their ills. 36. 
Think then of the purpose of my teachings, in the sense of my new coming, in all that encompasses my word with its light, so that you stop imagining yourselves as the only inhabitants of this abode. Look how much you surround and truly become the children of light. 37. Listen to me, analyze my word and I assure you that you will soon become disciples of the master of all centuries and of all ages. 38. People of Israel who have been forged in many struggles through the ages, you who know of the troubles from slavery, from persecution, from long days, rest and now be free in this land that I give you as a temporary abode. At this time you will not go in search of lands that have milk and honey, nor will you go to Samaria, but you will seek my spiritual kingdom, you will come to this immense valley to which I invite you to breathe peace, to wrap yourself in the light of my wisdom and to regain your lost strength. 39. Unwrap your spirit because you live in a new time and as the firstborn son of the Father, you have come to initiate among humanity this stage of spirituality that corresponds to you. 40. Before beginning your mission, hear and learn from me. My word is the book, and when you have understood its lessons, go to your brothers, preach and unite your works with your words. Pray and get in touch with me and with your guardian angels, so that your inspiration may be fruitful. I invite you to enter a life of recollection so that you can concentrate on your fulfillment, all your forces and in a short time you will see the transformation of your being. You will see your destiny clearly and you will be like a beacon that will illuminate the path of your brothers. 41. You will not fear the future because you know that I am your guide and that I have arranged everything with justice. The time will come when you will feel inspired by me and driven by your spirit. You will go in search of the sick and in them you will pour comfort. You will seek those who hunger and thirst for true knowledge and to them you will give the word that is light. And you will also reach the disinherited the humble and to them you will also extend your hand and soon you will find yourselves converted into advisors, guides and intermediaries of humanity. 42. The greater the abyss into which your brothers have fallen, the greater must be your patience and your charity for them. 43. You know that all of you in your beginning have been pure and that in your end you will be again. Do not ignore your origin and hurry on the path so that you will soon return to me. 44. Humanity has multiplied in number and the earth is filled with this seed. The man has fulfilled my mandate that I gave him at the beginning of time, but there are many laws that he has failed to comply with. It is not love that moves him to undertake great works. That is not the reason why he has fought. His spirit has dropped a lot and in his fall has lost balance. But I come to stop him and to make him return to the plane that corresponds to him. The virtues that I have put in his spirit, that if he had known how to make use of them, he would be on a very high scale and the pain would not have ruled to make him suffer. 45. You can still regain what you have lost, that is why I have come to you and give you all the means to achieve your elevation. 46. Come to me, humanity. Ask me and I will give you. My complacencies are not over. The fountain is overflowing with grace for everyone who requests them. I forgive you and leave you clean so that you can start your fulfillment. 47. Welcome to the source of inspiration, where you come to quench your thirst and leave fatigue. In my spirit there is that crystalline water that quenches the spirit's thirst for love. 48. At this time, the path of your life has become hazardous and the journey long. That is why I have come, to enlighten your walk with the light of my word, which is hope. In my teaching I do not cease to encourage you to continue and I always remember that you do not forget the transitory nature of your existence, behind which there is a beyond waiting for you to wrap you in his peace. 49. You are truly the pilgrims of the desert who nourish yourselves with the essence of my word and animated by the faith of your spirit goes after the goal that you will have to reach. 50. Faith is a force that lifts, transforms and illuminates. Through it the man goes back to his creator, because his light illuminates the path of law, where the Father is reached. 51. Thus, with this faith you come walking, accepting with all conformity of spirit and matter, the stumbles and vicissitudes typical of this time. But the day will come when you speak and testify of me, the way I have been with you, of how you have heard and contemplated me. 
and also how you have received my inspiration. I announce that you will find prepared humanity to understand the teaching of spirituality. Today you cannot proclaim that the Master is among you because they would not believe you and would judge you unreasonable. 52. See in history how those inspired by God have always been unknown, because men, covered with materialism, they cannot behold the truth. 53. The same will happen to you when talking about my work, when you stumble upon those who, mired in fanaticism, in ignorance and in materialism they meet. Before them you will expose my doctrine and each one will take it according to their spiritual development. But in the end this truth will shine, because the truth is I. 54. When men have reached peace, it will be the time when I reveal to you great teachings for the Spirit, revelations that will be understood by future generations, who will have a greater evolution. 55. You are with me, learning to sow, knowing that the fruit will be savored by those who come after you, although they will not stumble over the obstacles that you encountered, but they will judge your works. That's why leave on the way a trace of love and charity, so that you can have in spirit the satisfaction of having fulfilled the law that I taught you. Analyze my word and let me judge you, while improving your life and your works. 56. If you want your brothers to discover that you are my disciples, make yourself known by the nobility of your heart. Let humility be reflected in your actions, that he who is meek in heart is also meek in spirit. The proud and vain he appears to be strong, but in reality he is poor in spirit. 57. Spiritualism comes to destroy imposed customs and traditions by men, those who have blinded the spirit. Spiritualism is incessant evolution and elevation of the spirit, which through its gifts and attributes it purifies and perfects itself until it reaches its creator. Spiritualism points out the way the spirit expresses, feel and receive your Lord. Spiritualism frees the spirit and develops it. 58. The spiritual is universal strength and light that is in everything and is in everyone. No one will be strange to my teachings. 59. The attributes of the Spirit are immutable because they are virtues of my divinity. They are eternal forces. Also, understand that, depending on how you have lived, the purity that you can demonstrate will be greater or lesser. 60. When you have stained the purity of your Spirit and He hears the claim of the consciousness, it welcomes the Divine which is the source of purification, redemption and forgiveness. 61. My doctrine, like a book, opens again before this humanity, to bathe in the pure waters of this teaching and transform your life, turn away from material tendencies and tend to rise in search for eternal life. 62. When the superior life is known, without ignoring this one in which you live, you will know how to put the former before all vanities and men will separate themselves from everything superfluous and useless. This will be a sign that this humanity begins to yearn to reach the spiritual regions. 63. My doctrine will make a more perfect concept of life exist in this world. 64. Since you came to this world, a mandate weighs on you which is the cross of your destiny, with which you will reach the top of the mountain. 65. Understand me and do not lose heart that the doctrine that you are going to preach is not a fantasy, because the spiritual vibrates in all men, since all have spirit. 66. Truly I tell you, that when spiritualism reigns in the world, men will have laid the foundations of their true peace. 67. You will not contemplate that era from this earth, but you are preparing it and when it is in fullness, there will also be peace and joy in your spirit. 68. It will be the fruiting of the seed that Christ sowed in the second era, in the lands prepared since the first era. 69. Today the wheat is still mixed with the tares, but when it is exterminated and the wheat sprouts in golden ears of corn, the age awaited by humanity will arrive. 70. I am the way, walk on it and you will be in me. My peace be with you. Spiritual Teaching 215 Love Each Other 1. My words are like dew drops that descend to your heart to resurrect it, because I find it withered, because you had forgotten my promise to return and you felt dead to spiritual life. 2. 
When the weak flame of your hope was extinguished, you heard a knock at the door of your heart. When you open and see me, you do not recognize me because you had forgotten me. It was necessary to show you the wound on my side and tell you, Sink there your fingers, so that you would know who it was that was knocking at your door. 3. You are like the walkers of Emmaus, who taking me alongside could not recognize me. You look like Thomas who believed when he saw and felt my wounds. 4. Since you have asked me for proof of my presence, and I have given it to you, know that I have come to rescue you from idolatry, to make you return to simple worship, to faith free from complications, to the practice of charity among yourselves. 5. I have found you worshipping deaf, blind, and immobile gods, practicing rites outdated for your time and inappropriate for the spiritual evolution that today you have, and practicing that which I never instituted. 6. No one but I could tell you the truth about your mistakes without hurting you and at the same time offer you a light, a sustenance and an incentive that instantly comes to fill the emptiness of your heart. 7. Never again will you be dazzled by false and superficial splendors, nor will you feel seduced by the word that only reaches the mind, but it can never penetrate to the spirit. From now on, the one who has actually tasted the essence of this word, he will not be able to feed himself with any other bread than the divine one. 8. What man had spoken to you as I have done through these humble men who are my spokesmen? Who had spoken to you about spirituality as you have heard in this word? Who has given you proof in your life that they were the confirmation of a divine revelation? Nobody, people. 9. My word, like a bell thrown into the air, calls men to congregate and they are arriving in caravans in crowds. 10. The time in which you will have communicated with me in this way is brief and I want many to receive the light from my word so that at the end of the year 1950, all the people, aware of my mandate, meekly submit to my will. 11. It is still time for the people to arrive prepared for that day and when they meet, it is no longer to listen to my word through the speaker, but to study the lesson you received, feel my inspiration in your understanding and say with conviction, the Lord is with us. 12. This is how I want to see you as good disciples. 13. At the beginning of my lessons I told you that I have brought the simple worship, one that does not have rites or ceremonies and that nevertheless rises beyond the smoke of incense, beyond the echo of the songs, the worship of love, of charity, of brotherhood. 14. It is necessary that you do a thorough examination of your practices, so that you go on destroying every vestige of idolatry, religious fanaticism, superstitions, and improper beliefs of this work. 15. If you believe in Christ and love all His works, recognize that this simplicity and spirituality that I now come to inspire in you, it is the same as in word and in deed I preached in. The second era, why then have you strayed so much from that simplicity without which spirituality cannot exist? 16. See in how many confusions this humanity has fallen, but the light of a new day has come and with it nothing can hide or fog up. 17. That is why I find myself preparing all the roads of the earth, so that the disciples and apostles of spiritualism spread throughout the world announcing my good news. 18. Before sending you to other lands, I want everyone who calls himself a disciple of this doctrine to be spiritual in his life and in his works, so that his testimony is true and therefore believed. 19. Reaching spirituality, the path is easy, the slope will not become heavy being encouraged by the ideal of ascending, temptations will no longer make you fall into the depths of the abyss, making you retreat, you will already know how to take from this world what is strictly fair, lawful and indispensable thereby giving your spirit freedom to dream of a world better and let him fight for it. 20. My light bathes your spirit and is a guide for all your steps. That light has descended on all men without distinction of races or beliefs. 21. Israel has returned at this time and is scattered throughout the world to fulfill its spiritual mission. It is the most ancient, the firstborn and therefore the first to communicate with me. His spirit has evolved according to the law that was given to every spirit when it was sent to earth. 22. In the first era, in my first coming, I surprised humanity in its innocence and ignorance, 
in a low moral level and I spoke to him from the top of the mountain to give him my first lesson. In the second era I descended, after a long era in which I granted you tests so that your spirit affirms your faith and lives in the observance of my law, and I found you more awake, more developed, but distant from the true fulfillment that I had asked of you, because you did not know how to put your gifts at the service of the spirit. 23. I came at that time to tell you how the law is taken to fulfill it, how the Father is honored and how to testify of the truth. You had me in Jesus, so that all your spirit could touch me and feel me, and I left you prepared with my word. Afterwards, I gave you enough time for your spirit to take advantage of my teachings and live imitating me. You kept evolving and awakening, but to reach your elevation, you have not prepared your way to get closer to me. Your light is weak, your faith is fragile, and you did not know that my third coming was already close. In the year 1866, at the precise moment that my word and the prophecies had announced to men, I have come among you to leave in your spirit a wealth of wisdom, in the new teachings that I promised you for this time. 24. How few have been watching and waiting for my coming. Humanity was sleeping when this was new. 25. My will has been that you live alert at all times, waiting for the hour, so that in none of you were surprised and I contemplated your advancement and recognition. 26. You have walked many paths to reach me and in them you have lost yourself. It was necessary that the pastor appear looking for his sheep to gather them in a single fold, because there is no man on earth to whom I could entrust him with this position, because I cannot find a single one who is prepared. 27. I am enlightening and preparing men of good will in all nations to speak of my coming in spirit and the time of grace that is already near. Each of them has a delicate position and so through you, I am awakening in you healthy ideals. I am bringing his spirit to life and inspiring love and trust in my law, so that it gives them strength in their struggle for the redemption and spiritual progress of humanity. 28. Let it not be because of my doctrine that the peoples divide. Do not war, nor feel superior to one another. I am inspiring everyone equally the spirituality that is peace, love and respect for your brother. Bring down religious fanaticism, perfect practices, raise the worship of your brothers, that is my will and when you meet each other, recognize each other, love each other and testify to me. 29. You who hear this word, submit to your spirit and study my teaching. Do not take into account the speakers or attribute this light to them, they are only my instruments through whom I make my will known. Rise higher beyond your mind so that you can feel me with your spirit. 30. How small is man to carry out a demonstration of this magnitude, whose current stage began in 1866 and it will end in 1950. Learn from the master who has taught you in all times and also feel that you are judged, because he is father and teacher, but he is also judge. The fulfillment that I have indicated is for now that you live on earth. Later, when you are in spirit, you will receive new mandates. Your struggle is great, immortal, because you are my children. How do you want to perfect yourself in the short life that has your wrapping and with it you intend to reach me to rest in peace? If the farm field is so vast, what is each spirit to prepare? Get rid of your restitution now. Have charity of yourselves and do enough merits to pay off your past debt before my law. 31. I want you to stop being toddlers to become disciples. Always be humble so that he does not ask you for proof beyond your capacity. Reveal in your life charity and patience. When you have gained the trust of your brothers, revealing my work, speak of my coming as a comforting spirit and awaken the spirit of men, so that they live on a better level and become interested in enlightening and rising up for spiritual fulfillment. Its heart is fertile land where you can deposit the divine seed. 32. When you are ready, you will be scattered throughout the world and you will walk on all roads. Where will you have to go? You do not know, you will go for apparently material causes, but at the bottom there will be my will that guides you to the destined place. 33. Bring light and blessing to the regions, bomb and peace so that you may be recognized as my envoys, true disciples of love and charity. Watch over your steps, because you will be judged in your life. 34. Listen to me, because I am preventing and discovering your future. Do not profane my work with your actions, nor hide the light of your spirit. 35. Climb the mountain and reach the summit of spirituality. 
Do not put down roots in this world. If I have told you that this is not my kingdom, you as my disciples will not find it here either. Dematerialize yourselves and penetrate inside yourself so that you know everything that is of value in your spirit. 36. The time of my communication through human understanding comes to an end and you do not know what will happen to humanity after. You do not see the tests that will come upon it because you have not developed your gifts. The intuition is not clear in your spirit and you have not prepared to counter the forces of the elements, which will be unleashed with great force to overwhelm men. I have given you power in prayer to stop evil, sin, sickness and calamities. Up to now you have not made use of those gifts. 37. Oh, Thomas of the third time, you have not understood me. Where are your gifts? Where have you buried them? Why have you forgotten them? You do not know, but I will tell you, those gifts are latent, they vibrate in you and you do not feel them because you are materialized. You must not live inactive, you must manifest them in any way and do with them great wonders for you to witness to your Father and to yourselves. 38. Work, Israel, so that you attain the possession of the land of peace, the spiritual land of promise that awaits you. 39. I receive your confession, your gratitude on this day when you come to receive the ratification of your gifts, prepare yourselves and listen. After 1950, you will only present yourself spiritually. This is how your children and the last ones to come will receive. There will be no intermediaries, and your faith will tell you that I have fully descended to receive and grace all my children. 40. You will all be prepared and guided by me in the times to come, and my lessons for today will be wide and clear. When you remember them or pass your eyes on the books that have been written. 41. My love is with you, O oh, my disciples. The light of the Holy Spirit is eternally poured into you. That light she comes to light your lamp of faith. 42. You, who feel the need for the gifts of the Spirit, who try to cleanse your life, your mind and your heart in the waters of repentance and regeneration. You, who long to know the truth and claim it, hear my voice that comes to you like a caress, so that you fill yourself with my light. In this time the truth is hidden and fantasy reigns. For that is what I come to give you my divine essence that is true and sustains the spirit. 43. The more you understand my truth, the easier your progress will be through development of your spiritual faculties, which are in the likeness of your material senses. Do you not feel that your spirit yearns to approach a source of crystalline waters, that is, a simple doctrine without complications, no rites, no forms? Well, this doctrine that I bring you, it is great and luminous, it is what you are looking for. Her firm time respects the foundations, because my will is in them. For those who love the truth, my doctrine will be the same as always. That of love, wisdom, and justice. 44. What belongs to God comes to man by virtue of the Father's love for his Son. I only hope that he will dispose to receive me. I want my wisdom, which is in you as an atom, to develop and manifest itself. Here I am to strengthen. I only hope that you heed my words, so that you receive the secrets that are made known to you. 45. In your world and past times I left the doctrine of love with my example. Now I continue to give you the spiritual doctrine, which has the power to enlighten the world, dispel the darkness of the mind, facilitate the way, avoid useless suffering, confusion and tears. For so much spilled gall, there is the sweetness of my doctrine, and for so much shadow of war and of misery, there is the light of my revelations. 46. The temple of the universe has as its column and support my doctrine, because in it is the divine and creative power that teaches, redeems, persuades, and gives life. 47. I speak to you through human lips, but my love transforms my thoughts into material words so that you can listen to me and save yourselves and live in me. I am the master of this school of love that never disappoints the noble heart that yearns to progress. I come to make each man a toddler, then a disciple, and later a teacher who teaches the truth. In man I will make a powerful light that illuminates the path of many lost spirits, and each being will be an instrument of my will without them losing their own, because the greater your spirituality, the better you will harmonize with my will. 48. You have had many sorrows due to your free will, but I want you to know that I have never abandoned you. Do not take so many turns to arrive at the truth. Love her, 
that she will come to you when you open the doors of your love. Love the simple truth and get rid of theories and complications. That light will light the way in the desert of your life and you will not arrive tired or too late. Materialists do not discover the truth because she is in love, because she is light, wisdom, revelation. Therefore love is a true teacher. 49. The materialists, the always profane, will come to you, saying, Our brains are tired of ideas, of science books, help us find the truth. Then you will wisely dispel the clouds that cloud your mind. 50. Here in the infinite the questions and the answers like the sound of the seas, like the echo of the wind. Listen to the wisdom which turns ignorance into light, rest, and tenderness. Listen to that sweet colloquy of love, which makes the existence in the knowledge of life and death, of the great wisdom, of the laws of God and man, of eternity and light. Listen. 51. You have not come to love each other, nor have you come to forgive each other, because you are still little, and are you the ones who come to analyze in order to believe. Nobody still has spiritual light to perfectly judge my word or my work. I have put philosophers, sages, doctrinaires and thinkers to the test, and also those of eternal doubt, who always are asking, Is it really the Father? And to everyone I have said, The tree is recognized by its fruit. My word says who I am. My word will continue to surprise philosophers and the rude. I say to you, only through love will you know who I am and who you are, since through it you will be able to see my face. Do not delay, do not think so much about the eternal question. In love you will find the answers and in the wide horizon of truth you will find true life. 52. Go along this path and the heavens will be celebrating and in your existence the light will shine, because you will have changed the sadness of your heart for the sweet and healthy joy of living. 53. Do you think that contemplating the world and its inhabitants in the height of perversity in which they are and needing me as they need me, will I abandon them? Think about this because I have caught you talking and thinking like this. 54. I am the Redeemer, the teacher who comes to the fallen sinner to lift him up, to spiritualize him and teach him to love. 55. The world will be transformed when it listens to its Redeemer and knows and fulfills my laws. 56. Take this word which is doctrine for the Spirit and prepare yourselves to receive what the Promise Comforter gives you for your spiritual progress, because you will have to communicate Spirit to Spirit with your God. 57. Do not forget my word when the emotion of having listened to me has left you. 58. My charity and my Father's love receive you. 59. My arms open to clasp you and to rest in them. Console yourselves in your worries and listen to this word that comes to sweeten your existence. 60. With what joy my spirit descends among you, without stopping to judge your sins. I come to talk to you about love and in this word the one who bears some stain is washed, the sinner is redeemed and awakens the one who sleeps. 61. The clock of eternity with its ringing bell is heard throughout the world to make people understand the time in which humanity lives. 62. I come to find you because you belong to me, and since I love you, I do not want you to get lost anymore. You are a spark of my divine light and in me you will have to merge. It's eternity that I come to offer you, so that you can admire in all its splendor. 63. I have been speaking to you with a clear and simple word so that you understand its meaning and do not go complain later that I spoke to you with an incomprehensible word. 64. If in the second era I gave you my lessons in parables, many of which you did not understand, now I come to clarify all the teachings with the vibrant light of my Holy Spirit. 65. Understand that all the hardships of this life that you live are consequences of human faults, because I, who love you, could not offer you such a bitter cup. I have revealed the law to you from the earliest times like a path where you can preserve yourself from falls, from the abyss and from death. 66. The moment will have to come for everyone when I ask you for an account of my law and the gifts with which I have gracefully given. 67. You go along the path of your life, some carrying the cross of duty and pain, others carrying the cross of their sin, but if you call me, 
I will be your Cyrenian to help you reach me. 68. Follow my teachings and instantly you will feel relieved of your burden. You will feel calm and a soft freshness will alleviate your fatigue. 69. Open your eyes, penetrate with your spiritual gaze and contemplate my splendor. See how the door opens that will allow the seven spirits that I have entrusted to humanity to pass through. They are seven virtues that I want to always encourage in you. They are love, humility, patience, order, harmony, serenity, perseverance, and charity. Let that these virtues nest in your heart and you will experience happiness. 70. In this way my spirit approaches yours to saturate it with light and tell it. This body that you have today, as a passing garment, it is the instrument by which you will achieve great purification and spiritual elevation. 71. If I presented a person with leprosy on your way, would you turn away from him in horror? Will you be unable to touch it with your hand? Are you afraid of catching it? No, my disciples, because instead of contemplating the misery of that body, you must contemplate its spirit, which is your own brother, who is my son who awaits your charity. How much you still have to learn. 72. Blessed is the human heart that repents of its infirmities and purpose to make an amendment, because in addition to being forgiven it reaches my light. I am to make sinners my beloved disciples. 73. I am the resurrection and the life. Come to me and you will live forever, because in me you will find peace. 74. The light of my Holy Spirit is poured out throughout the universe. By the gifts of intuition, revelation and clairvoyance, men awaken to the new time. 75. My spirit full of justice vibrates and penetrates to the depths of consciousness, to separate spirits from sin, tie the weeds into sheaves and throw them into the fire. 76. For you to be able to say to the world, Behold, the Father who is among us, you will have much to prepare yourselves. 77. Many nations are devastated by hunger, hunger for the bread of the earth and the heavenly bread. 78. Through religions, philosophies and sects, men look for me, they are paths by which one day, they will find. 79. As long as you walk along the narrow path that leads directly to my heart, even if you have to travel distances, climb mountains and cross abysses, you will feel in each of your steps that you are going climbing on the spiritual path, from where you can contemplate the silhouette of the promised land. My peace be with you. Spiritual Teaching 216 Love Each Other 1. Disciples, fulfill my mandates so that you do not mourn the lost time. Delve into the study of my word so that you know what is your responsibility to fulfill and what is the part that of those who are to come after you. 2. I have revealed to you, the humble, the spiritualist work, before the scientists, because I have found purity and innocence among you, faith and willingness to follow my teachings, willingness to take this seed to the heart of your brothers. That is why I have chosen you, because you are the poor who have felt sadness, those who have not sought comfort on earth nor its pleasures, because you know that beyond this world there is true spiritual peace, good and joy and you have not been fooled by false greatness, you have not coveted temporal power, joys that only last an instant. You aspire to more than all that this world has to offer, you love me and trust that I will make you return to the home that awaits you, to the bosom from which you have come and where you will have my kingdom. 3. This hope makes you strong in tribulations and invincible in your struggle. If you remain faithful in your fulfillment you will soon achieve the triumph of the Spirit over the flesh, because you will have allowed it to be your God who influences your life. In the simplicity of your life, you can better perceive my teachings, you will let yourself be enlightened by them and you will experience joys unsuspected by others. 4. That is why you follow me and nothing can separate you from me. You feel loved by perfect love and you are happy. You love me and in this you base your joy. Truly I tell you, that is how my disciples of the second era loved me and all those who have followed me. For the same reason, doubt or the mockery of your brothers does not hurt you. Pain, which is a crucible for the spirit, does not make you back down. You know that you live a transitory life and you seek to make merits to reach the end that you know awaits you. 5. Prepare yourselves because I am going to leave you as guardians of humanity. 
Your gifts are latent so that you make good use of them. You will all be present with your work and your gifts for the last day of the year 1950, to be judged by me. Some in spirit and others in matter, you will be before my spirit to receive my last commands. After, the paths through which you will have to be scattered will remain open before you, to bring the good news and leave in the heart of humanity the testimony of my coming at this time. 6. I do not ask you for sacrifices or work superior to your strength. I only ask for your love, with which I have clothed you, humility and patience so that you know how to carry out the fulfillment of your mission. 7. My manifestation will cease on the last day of 1950, to make way for the disciples on whom I have poured my grace. The Master will be presiding over your works and I will not cease in my desire to lead you to the fulfillment of all my mandates. 8. Disciples, I warn you how many times will you see scientists deny this work, but you will forgive them and continue your journey. If you do so, I will surprise humanity by granting you that through your spirit, you discover what men with all their science have not been able to find. 9. Disciples I call you at every moment to stimulate you in the fight, to remove from your heart that idea of inferiority that has left poverty and humiliation in you. I want to make you great in the knowledge of the spiritual, to that you awaken men to a superior life, to a perfect life, in which the law of the spirit govern material life. 10. You are not the only depositories of my secret sanctuary, nor the only ones worthy of a spiritual inheritance. I tell you this so that you never boast of being the most worthy or the most loved, and so that vanity never germinates in your heart. Yes, if you let these feelings grow in your being, you would be in danger of being stripped of the acquired grace. 11. Humanity. Your zeal and love will make you eternal possessors of the gifts of the Spirit. I want you to always be humble, jealous of the good, of the law and of the truth, kind with the goodness of the Spirit, which is superior to that of the heart. 12. My doctrine is the light from which all wisdom, knowledge, revelations and sciences, she reveals everything in a simple way. When it is the Spirit that guides the steps of humanity, you will be able to verify that what the men of science manage to discover after a long time of study and great sacrifices and tribulations, it was by spiritual elevation, by prayer, by meditation on God and by inspiration in the good, and that the secrets were revealed from my sanctuary, into which by other means man could never have penetrated. 13. Much of what I have spoken to you at this time is a prophecy that refers to near times and sometimes to times of the future, that is why many men will not want to give importance to this divine message. Instead, this word will emerge full of light among humanity in the coming times, who will see and find in it great revelations, whose exactitude and perfection will amaze men of science. 14. That is the reason why I have ordered you to write my word, so that when you pass from it to another life, or when these people forget my teachings, let it be faithfully and indelibly written in a book. 15. For you, people, the time is ripe for you to rise up giving proofs of this truth, doing wonders in your brothers with the gifts that I have discovered for you. 16. Do not go to sleep waiting for those times that I have spoken to you to get up and say to humanity, What you see has already been said. No, people, it is essential that you announce it in advance, that you prophesy, that you prepare the way for the arrival of all that I have prophesied and promised to you, and then you will have your mission as forerunners of spirituality on earth has been accomplished. So when prodigies begin to appear in the world and through my spirit I speak to you of events never seen before, and the spirit of humanity begins to manifest gifts and powers never foretold, you will see all beliefs removed, theories, norms, institutions and sciences, and then humanity will confess that those who since their humility preached an apparently strange doctrine, they were right because their words were confirmed when they were fulfilled. 17. You will then see the peoples of the earth interested in spiritual teaching, theologians comparing the teachings of Christ with the new revelations, and you will see many who had always been indifferent to the spiritual, take a keen interest in studying the revelations of this and of past times. 18. Now you cannot, even if you wanted to, see the fulfillment of everything I announce, but if you really believe in my word, with the gaze of your faith you will be able to contemplate many events in the future. And if you are prepared, your dreams, your looks and inspirations will not fool you. 19. Listen to me with deep attention. When I stop speaking to you in this way, take up my word with love that you recorded in writing, 
to bequeath it as a testimony of what I spoke to you at this time for future generations. 20. Consider my word as a seed, so that you do not let it mix with the slightest impurity. 21. The lands which will be the hearts of this humanity will soon be clean and ready for sowing, and would it be fair if they were clean and the seed was not? 22. Meditate on my word, beloved disciples, in it you will gradually transform and refine yourself for the good performance of your mission. 23. Now I have returned among men to accompany them in their present trials. The Master tells you, After 1950, do not worry when you see the signs of my coming appear in fullness, but rather rejoice, because I have allowed you to feel these revelations. 24. Just as in the second era, after the sacrifice, I presented myself in spirit to Magdalena and she was surprised and at the same time, full of joy she exclaimed, Lord, be praised and glorified forever. Today I have appeared before you, when you believe that the Master was absent or indifferent to your hardships and after your surprise I have blessed you. You have received my light in your spirit, and after receiving so much grace, you have remembered your brothers and sisters and you have interceded for them saying, I have the joy of listening to your word, while others ignore these teachings. And I tell you, I have manifested my spirit in all nations in different ways. Those who have prepared, they recognize that they are living a time of grace and justice and have felt my presence. 25. Just as I forgave Magdalena, I forgive you but I want you to make yourself worthy of me as she does. 26. How many examples to be imitated can you collect from your brothers of other times? Her work is like a book open, and you, don't you want to write your example? I will take from your works what I find worthy, to present them to your descendants, but you will not gather them, today that you live in matter, glory, or veneration. Be humble and let others value your works. 27. On the great journey that awaits you, I will be your Cyrenian. My doctrine will cause great revolutions in the world, there will be great transformations in customs and ideas and even in nature there will be changes. All this will signal the entrance of a new era for humanity, and the spirits which in a short time I will send to earth, they will speak of these prophecies to help the restoration and elevation of this world, they will explain my word and analyze the facts. 28. Come and listen to me. Concentrate on the bottom of your heart and I assure you that no matter how little your faith in my presence is, you will feel me. 29. I do not come to judge your lack of faith, on the contrary, I come to forgive it because you were not prepared to receive me. For many centuries humanity had slept in a deep lethargy, intoxicated with fanaticism and idolatry, with materialism. 30. Who had reminded you that I had announced to return and that, therefore, you would have to watch to wait for me? By your parents? Perhaps your ministers? Who kept you alert? 31. Few were waiting for the events, eager for the symbolic cloud of my promise to appear in the horizon, illuminating your spirit, strengthening your matter and revealing to you that my new coming is in spirit. 32. That is why your struggle has been so great to understand my presence in this time and you have had to overcome many obstacles to reach me. But all this is meritorious, I take it into account and in truth I tell you, that none of the bitterness that you have had for following me on this path will remain without an award. 33. What do you think is the compensation for your patience for suffering ridicule and contempt even within your family? The conversion of yours. But, since you have had patience to resist their misunderstandings, have it also to wait for the moment when their faith ignites. To achieve this, you will have to fight a lot with works, with words and thoughts, but in the end you will see the prodigy realized. 34. To you I will give the mission of announcing to your brothers my new coming. I entrust you with the message or good news of my spiritual communication with humanity. Rejoice! Thinking that you are the bearers of such a precious message and let that joy serves as a balm for the wounds that you receive on the path of struggle. 35. Some have come before the manifestation of my word with the innocence of those shepherds of Bethlehem. Their simple faith was the humble offering of their hearts. Others have come asking me for evidence to believe they were the sick, those who for a long time and from door to door had searched for health without finding it. Others come in the likeness of scribes and Pharisees to scrutinize me, question me, and test me, 
always fearing that the truth will expose their hypocrisy and its falsehood. I have received everyone. I have had a caress for everyone, a demonstration of my power, a test of my truth. 36. I must also tell you that of all these that I have mentioned, many have stayed to follow me, because their heart has known how to beat with gratitude and his spirit has been illuminated with the light of my word, in a desire to learn to sow and cultivate the truth. 37. From a small group that came to meet to listen to my first lessons, you have already become crowds that form a people, but for now not everyone will know how to become the true apostles of this message of spirituality. 38. Among these multitudes there are men of all kinds and conditions, just as there are spirits of diverse evolution among them, and so that this divine revelation, so that this message that I have brought in my word, comes to be clarified and defined among the people who witness my demonstrations, many tests will have to pass, many internal struggles will have to hold and many crucibles in which to melt, until leaving them clean as a true disciple of spiritualism. 39. It will not be the first time that men struggle to define a divine revelation or to achieve clarity in something that his eyes are presented as a mystery. Already in the second era, after my preaching in the world, men deliberated on the personality of Jesus, wanting to know whether or not he was divine, if he was one with the Father or was a person different. They judged and scrutinized my doctrine in all ways. 40. Now I will once again be the object of analysis, discussions, struggles, scrutiny. 41. It will be judged whether when the Spirit of Christ appeared, He was independent of the Spirit of the Father, and there will be other let them say that it is the Holy Spirit who has spoken and not the Father or the Son. 42. But what you call the Holy Spirit is the light of God and what you call the Son is His Word. Therefore, when you hear this Word, when you take from my doctrine of the second era or think of the law and revelations of the first era, know that you are in the presence of the one God, listening to His Word and receiving the light of His Spirit. 43. It is time for you to study this revelation, so that when you are questioned and put to the test, you will know how to answer with words of true light, leaving peace and joy in every heart in which you deposit the essence of my Word and the light of your analysis. 44. I am hungry and thirsty for your love, people, let me be with you for a few moments, because I have something to tell you. 45. Why do you only seek me when your sorrows overwhelm you? Wouldn't you like to offer me your joys, your triumphs and satisfactions? 46. In the second era I came to inspire you with love and trust so that you would know how to approach me without fear. So why do you sometimes doubt my love or my forgiveness? Ah, prodigal children who fear to return to the parental home. I knew that despite the proofs of infinite love that I gave you at that time, it was necessary to look for you again. Not so you would contemplate me humanized, but so that you would feel me inside, deep inside your spirit. 47. Return to surround me like my disciples at that time. Return to follow me as the great crowds did. That I, in turn, will make you listen to the heavenly concert of my word, at the same time that I will do those works of love that you call miracles. 48. I come as Father so that in me all they that in the world that have lacked love, affection, tenderness, find it in me. 49. I come as a doctor so that you deposit in me your ailments, your cares and all your hidden sufferings that have sickened your spirit and at the same time the body. 50. I come as a friend so that you can entrust me with your most intimate secrets, struggles and desires, and let me walk in your company. 51. I come as a teacher because I want to open before you the book of wisdom and life. 52. I come as a judge to judge the living and the dead, as you say. To incarnated and disembodied, I say, the smallest of your works does not go unnoticed by my justice. 53. Among these crowds that gather in humble precincts to listen to me, there are many who understand and feel this word. They are the spirits evolved on the long paths of struggle, of trials, of experience, and purified in the great days of pain. They understand me and do not come to ask me for goods for the world. They know that in their spirit there is a book of knowledge and they only expect from the Master that divine lesson, by which they will be able to know the way to overflow the light that the Spirit brings on those in need of experience and teaching. 54. 
Here are also those who without having walked much, will take my word as a way not to get lost, and their love will save your spirit suffering. 55. These multitudes carry a single prayer in their hearts, that of their pain. They all come to tell me that their burden is very great and his cup heavy and too bitter. They come to present me with loneliness, disappointments, fatigue, weaknesses, misery, diseases, mourning and many more sorrows. But not only do they suffer, the pain is in all humanity. They don't know that this is the time of the purification in which spirits and men wash their stains and then take a step forward towards the summit of the mountain. When those spots have been erased, then you will not experience another moment of pain, because the balm of regeneration will have restored you that health that I deposited in my creatures when they sprouted from my breast. My peace be with you. Spiritual Teaching 217 Love Each Other 1. Come to me, beloved disciples, and sit at my table now that I am still with you, because these times will not return. A new time will come for you in which you will take a step forward on the path of your evolution. 2. You are still children who live under the custody of the Father, who does not let you get too far from your Father's house, so that you do not find stumbling blocks or fall into an abyss. Soon you will be strong and ready to travel all the paths. 3. Make your heart a chest in which you keep my words which are like jewels. 4. I have returned to you knowing the unbelief of men. I come to help you remember and live my passion. Today I remind you of the instant in which the Master who speaks to you ascended to the divine light to be eternally in the Father. It was after Jesus having completed his mission on earth, when he came as a meek lamb to the presence of the Eternal. 5. God manifested himself to men from the earliest times and his teachings were heard. My voice is made comprehensible to primitive and human creatures. In them, the consciousness that is divine wisdom taught you to know good and evil. In their good deeds they felt peace and when they did wrong they experienced the pain. They were the first lessons, the first manifestations of consciousness. 6. In the course of time, when humanity has ignored that voice, I have sent men of virtue and wisdom that they show with their words and examples to follow the good path. 7. Remember that in the early days I sent a righteous Abel, whose holocaust of love to my divinity was a forerunner of prayer and perfect worship. 8. I sent to you Noah, the fervent, who ignored mockery, attended only to the fulfillment of a divine command, to build the ark of salvation for men of good faith. 9. Among you were Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, who formed the trunk of a tree from which there came branches, foliage, and fruits, and the example of those patriarchs was written with the unshakable faith of Abraham, Isaac's obedience, and Jacob's faithfulness and spiritual strength. And a fruit of that tree was Moses, representative of my law, and the image of my justice. In it you could see a reflection of my majesty. 10. From time to time I have been penetrating the sensitivity of humanity and that is why I had to become man, to penetrate more into your heart. But to come into the world it was necessary to announce myself through the prophets. 11. I came to live among men making my life an example, a book. I knew of all the pains, the trials and the struggles, the poverty, the work and the persecutions. I learned of the ignorance of relatives, ingratitude and betrayal, of the long days, thirst and hunger, mockery, loneliness and death. I let the full weight of human sin fall on me. I allowed the man to search my spirit in my word and in my pierced body, where every last bone could be seen. Being God, I was turned into a mockery king, a spoil and I even had to carry the cross of ignominy and climb the mound. Where the thieves died, there my life ceased as human, as a proof that I am not only the God of the Word, but the God of works. 12. In 1866 my charity opened the doors to a new era, that of the Holy Spirit. Will all humanity know the time in which it is? Only the spiritualist people know that I am gathering under the shade of these trees, so my work will be recognized in the world after great battles and events, after wars of doctrines and ideas, then men will rise up affirming that a new era has arisen. 13. Roque Rojas, the envoy, whose steps were guided by the spirit of Elijah, 
the forerunner. Thus I unleashed the sixth seal, opening the infinite gap of spiritualism. 14. And from Roque to this day you have fought a lot, O oh, Marian Trinitarian spiritualists. Struggle, strength, youth and life and everything you possessed to follow me and honor this work. Quietly and humbly you have worked to make known to men the new coming of the Lord. 15. My word did not come to incarnate again. I am in this time on the cloud, symbol of the hereafter, of where sprouts my ray that illuminates the mind of the speaker. 16. I have been pleased to communicate with the man and my determination is perfect. I know man because I have created him. I can use it because that is why I formed it, and I can manifest my glory through him because I created him to glorify myself in him. 17. The man, this is my image because he is intelligence, life, consciousness, will, because he has something of all my attributes and his spirit belongs to eternity. 18. Many times you are smaller than you have believed and other times you are bigger than you can imagine. 19. The puffed up thinks he is great without being so, and the one who is satisfied with the superfluous riches of this life is small, without discovering the true values of the heart and spirit. How small are your wishes, your loves, ideals, how little they settle for. 20. But he who knows how to live is he who has learned to give to God what is God's and to the world what is the world's. He who knows how to recreate himself in the bosom of nature, without becoming a slave to the flesh, he knows how to live, and although he apparently possesses nothing, he owns the goods of this life and is on the way to the riches of my kingdom. 21. What I tell you at this time I did not teach you in the past. This is my New Testament. I am the pilgrim who knocks incessantly at your door and does not let you sleep. I am the shadow that follows you through everywhere. What do you want? My love is infinite. 22. The time for my departure is approaching. My visit during this time has been long, from 1866 to 1950. 23. Truly I tell you, if anyone says that my word has not done you any good, it has not caused you any harm either. But remember that I don't want you to be like parasitic plants. I do not want you to settle for not doing evil, but that you are satisfied to do good, because he who does not practice it, being able to do it, he has done more evil than he who not being able to do any good, it only does evil, because it is the only thing it can give, according to its degree of spiritual evolution. 24. I called you to this path because I contemplated you sad in your spirit. You were looking for my light in the different rites, you were looking for miracles to attest to me, and when I came across your way to ask if you were satisfied, you answered, I have eaten, but I have not sustained my heart or my spirit. 25. Meanwhile, the tree of life has been waiting for the traveler to bring him its fruits and the source of crystalline waters. It has waited overflowing for the thirsty pilgrim, like a promise of peace. I am the divine gardener who waited sad, contemplating the passing of the seasons over the fields. 26. Now the great mobs thirsty for love, peace, truth and work have arrived. You have brought the fruit to your lips and after having quenched hunger and thirst, you have taken the farming tools to become market gardeners. 27. There are no more temporal riches among you. Where are your goods? Do not remember or regret to have lost them, because today you have recovered the spiritual treasure of my truth which is in my word, in this word that I come to give you through my humble son, because if I spoke to you through a sage or a philosopher, you would not believe me. 28. Men of all classes come to me, but those classes disappear before the Master. Not everyone who has come to hear me have stayed with me. Many are called and few are chosen who will follow me. But in truth I tell you, I have sown in all of you my word, and the seed of Christ never dies. My seed is not vain and the heart of man, infertile in an instant will be fertile and bear fruit. 29. Women who water the path of this world with your tears, and who mark your passage through this life with blood. Rest in me, so that you may gain new strength and continue to be the nest of love, the fire of the hearth, the foundation stronghold of the house, which on earth I have entrusted to you, so that you may continue to be the lark, whose wings surround the husband and children. I bless you. 30. 
I exalt man and the place of woman at the right hand of man. I sanctify the marriage and bless the family. 31. At this time I come with a sword of love to put all things in their place, since before they were put out of it by man. 32. Disciples of my divinity, here I am among you, showing you one more page of the book of my teachings. 33. It is the unleavened bread that you eat at this moment, and the water that you drink is the one that whoever drinks it will never feel thirst again. 34. You are like foreigners on this earth, because your true homeland is another. I am showing you a path, it is leading to the land of promise. My word leads you on the path of progress. I am the tireless master, who prepares so that after my departure you will achieve perfect communication with my divinity. 35. Today, the chisel of my word of love polishes and shapes your heart. 36. As in the first era you are going through the desert of vicissitudes, but you will not perish of hunger or thirst in the working day. From your own heart, hardened as a rock, I will make the crystalline water of repentance and love flow that quenches the thirst of the Spirit. And when the hunger for justice and truth takes hold of the people, my word, like manna from the desert, will fall on you to feed you. 37. The moment will come when all of you will return to me, but for now stay among humanity so that you can teach it to walk the path of truth. You will spread out on different paths without carrying a double saddlebag, trusting in me, but you will work in silence, humbly, without showing off, and I will accompany you in the fight and comfort you in your prayer, whether that you call me in the corner of your bedroom or under the shade of a tree. The day will come when you will be recognized in me. 38. It is necessary that you understand that my departure is near, that you open your heart and raise your spirit so that you can contemplate me. 39. Through many spokespersons I have spoken so that you not doubt me. I have chosen them without distinguishing class, conditions or race. And through the mouth of all of them I have given you your inheritance, so that in the absence of my word you will not feel orphans or abandoned. 40. If you truly prepare yourselves, you will be the tree, the fountain and the table for the feast that welcomes all the prodigal sons who were absent from the Father's house. Then the nations will not bow down to you, but they will acknowledge you and stand before me, they will prostrate. 41. At all times you have found my law too inflexible to comply with it and that is why you have created sex and rituals to each, according to your spiritual capacity. 42. If you had complied with my orders of the first era, you would have recognized Jesus and you would not have sacrificed him. Yes, had humanity lived my doctrine of the second era, it would not be doubting my communication through the understanding of man. 43. It will not be you who judge the nations, but I, as it is written, will judge the nations in you and religions. This people will be an example of zeal, cleanliness, and spirituality. 44. The cry of humanity rises up to me. It is the crying of children. It is the youth that cries out for justice. It is old age that raises your invocation of peace. 45. It is that men have lost the seed of love that, without knowing it, they carry in the purest of their hearts, so they fail to discover inside themselves. 46. The seed of love has been drowned by hatred, vanity, and low passions and the cup of bitterness is filled once more, to be drunk to the full. 47. While the world is shipwrecked in the midst of the storm, you, from the gondola, calmly contemplate the disaster. 48. You are sleeping in the lap of the Father without thinking about those who cry, and they, in the midst of vicissitudes, celebrate services dedicated to me, which, although they are involved in fanaticism and idolatry, I receive them because I am a father, but I do understand that my heart is open to perfect worship. 49. From altar to altar, from right to right, and from sect to sect, men go in search of the bread of life, without finding it, and faced with disappointment, they turn into blasphemers to take aimless paths and live without God and without law, and think, people among them are the great spirits, who among them I discover the prophets and the disciples of the Holy Spirit. 50. The spirits of light that vibrate in the spiritual already prepare paths through planes, 
seas, mountains, and deserts, so that those races, those peoples, in caravans and crowds, rise up after this nation, where my word and my wonders have been seen. 51. When those men knock on your doors, what are you going to offer them? You are not going to offer them imperfections because they are fed up with it. They come in search of truth, charity, and love. They will come to learn to raise a worship as pure as the perfume of flowers. 52. Today I tell you that you always teach at last the fulfillment of my law, in it my teachings of the three eras. 53. Inspire yourselves to pray in the prayer of the garden, that I taught you how the perfect prayer is. 54. As long as you are not prepared, the roads will remain closed by me and I will not make the call to the crowds. 55. I do not want to leave among you in the midst of your disunity, disobedience and misunderstanding. 56. I see that you are already preparing my cross, for the moment of my departure, a cross of ingratitude. 57. It is still time for you to redouble your efforts, so that the hour does not surprise you and you say, The Father has departed, because you will only stop listening to me through the spokesperson, but I will be present and the seers will give testimony of this. You will hear my voice by inspiration, and when you are teaching in the homes and in the regions, your lips will not be them that speak, but me. 58. Communication from spirit to spirit will reach its splendor in those times and my presence will be felt with greater clarity, from time to time and from generation to generation. 59. Faced with these revelations, no one should regret the absence of my word and whoever cries, it will be because his conscience claims that he has not taken advantage of the time of my stay with you, and therefore feels weak and clumsy to continue the path. 60. I want you to remain as witnesses that you were with me, that you show men the golden books that I have allowed you to form. 61. Among this people there will be no priests or ministers, there will be only servers. These enclosures will be places of meeting and study, where the guides will ensure the compliance of the people. 62. The reign of many doctrines will be very short, because all that does not have a seed of truth, justice and love, will be destroyed. 63. But my work of love will be recognized. The stranger will come and knock on your door. Let him pass. Prepare the bed for him to rest, but if he wants to go to the table first, let him. When he has had enough, if he sleeps, watch over his sleep. But when you wake up and contemplate the light, you will review your past events before your consciousness and even your last stain will be washed away with her tears. I will then give him a white garment and I will sit him among those who have been with me. 64. It is the third era, and I am still giving my teaching to humanity, because in those messengers that I have sent you have not trusted. 65. While human creatures discuss my divinity, my existence and my doctrine, there are worlds where I am loved with perfection. 66. At the same time that some have reached the maximum spiritual clarity, your planet morally and spiritually live a time of great wickedness. 67. But you who listen to me, know that I have sent you among humanity to set an example of humility and obedience to my law. I sent your spirit clothed with my grace wrapped in my light and bearing the law in its consciousness. 68. If for a moment you fell into the abyss, entered the darkness and succumbed to weakness, I raised you up with my voice, showing humanity that from the same scum I can glean my disciples. 69. I am the divine goodness that manifests itself at every step. If you don't want to rise looking for me spiritually and you prefer to stop to contemplate nature, there in it you will also find me the sun in the sky whose rays of light, life and warmth speak of me, the air that gives you life and that is my own breath. 70. But when you rise spiritually to my spirit, in your works or in prayer, you will perceive the grace that exists in the hereafter and a path of light that promises wonders and revelations in my celestial sanctuary. 71. You have knowledge of these beauties that life in the hereafter contains, and that is why you work hard in the vineyard of the Lord. 72. I want there to be love among workers, for charity to exist. 73. The wood that I have placed on your shoulders is not heavy, 
it is not impossible that you can fulfill the mission entrusted to your spirit. If you trust in my power, you will contemplate the impossible made possible in your path and you will see that whoever lives in obedience to my teachings is close to me. 74. To every worker who reaches training, I will send him to the regions of the earth to bring the good news. 75. Your spirit today sustains a great struggle with the flesh, has drawn his sword to face temptation, which in my name will conquer. My peace be with you. Spiritual Teaching 218 Love Each Other 1. Blessed people, you come to meet this master who incessantly calls you to the congregation, to feed yourselves with his love and strengthen you in times of trial. You have been abandoning everything to hear me. Parents leave their children, the mother to the little one in the cradle, eager to receive comfort for herself and her loved ones. Youth moving away from earthly pleasures, the elderly forgetting the weight of their trials and all leaving behind what is human misery, illnesses, anxieties, to come before my presence and say to me, Master, we have prayed early and raised our spirit and Elijah, our shepherd, has prepared us to hear the divine word. Welcome us. 2. You gather together under the shadow of this tree, which has spread its branches to the ends of this nation chosen by me, and you hear under its multiple branches the same word, the same essence, the same fruit that for so long I have delivered. 3. With all of you I have formed a people that is the firstborn among all the peoples of the earth, chosen in all times, but not the only one in my love, because I love and have loved the peoples of the world at all times. But this, my chosen one, he has loved me in a singular way and has made himself worthy of my pleasure. But those favors that I have granted him have not been only for him. This people has taken everything for itself and has become the rich miser and has said, I am the most loved, the chosen one, superior to the others, the closest to the Spirit of the Lord. The rest must bow down to me, because the Father has poured out his law, his pleasures on me. And I tell you, do not puff up. I have been pleased to donate to you in the three eras. Through three long ages I have poured out on your spirit in the different bodies that you have had, so that you would imitate me and participate in my gifts, and full of love towards your brothers. You would be like a tree whose shade and fruit are for all walkers. 4. And now in this era, enlightened by my spirit, you are understanding what I gave you in the early days, what Christ taught you in the second era, and I say to you, do not go back to being like rich misers, be like this master who surrender your disciples out of love, and when presenting yourselves to other peoples, do not feel superior or say that only you possess the three testaments and that you own them, that you have possessed the Ark of the Covenant, the tabernacle and symbols. No people, I want you to tell your brothers of different races that you can all become the chosen people of the Lord, of that blessed family, because all of you have sprouted from a single spirit from a single father. 5. Then you will have understood your mission and you can be the salvation of the world. You will no longer allow it to be the father who comes to materialize, to be understood by the children who do not know how to rise spiritually, and you will tell me in your prayer from spirit to spirit. Father, remain in your seat, you have already descended for a long time, you have suffered for our materialization and sin. Still in the third era you have had to speak to us in a thousand ways to teach us and you have already poured out your strength and your virtues among this people. Who? Are your disciple? Leave us responsible for humanity. 6. At all times it has seemed too difficult for you to fulfill my law, you being human beings. And so from the earliest times you have formed different religions, and you have practiced imperfectly. If in the first era you would have complied with my laws delivered through Moses, it would not have been necessary for Jesus, the word of the Father, to come among you, and why did that master suffer? Because the people of Judah ignored him. They threw him from her womb and sacrificed him, without having looked or felt who he was. 7. That people had not prepared, had not complied with the divine laws, these and the precepts had made their own laws, which he believed to comply with. And the divine master became man and with his birth, his life and his passion, wrote one more page of the Book of Divine Wisdom, in which each word was shaped by powerful works, words and works sealed with blood. That's how you received the Second Testament, and if you had complied with those two testaments, would my spirit have had to communicate at this time through the human channel, 
through imperfect and perishable understandings, if you had practiced my commandments and my doctrine that with so much love I have given, you would not be judging or doubting me why I communicate through human understanding. 8. Collect the three testaments and do not adulterate or mystify my word. It is the inheritance that I leave to humanity. The light of my spirit illuminates you and your spirit. You know who you are. You remember your past and you know why I have come in this time and you can understand my teaching. 9. Only in this way will you know the purity and perfection of my work given in the three eras, which is not about religions and human ideas. It is the way, the life, the beginning and the end of every spirit, which contains the book of my wisdom. 10. Why don't the sects and religions recognize me and show so much misunderstanding? You who hear me, do not judge anyone. I will judge, as it is written, all nations and all religions. 11. If you comply with humility, the world will believe you. That world tired of words and rituals needs examples. You, Israel, who in all times have received the pure seed, whom can you imitate? What religion of those who have sprouted have they watched over the fulfillment of all my precepts? None. But I can tell you, if in them you find jealous men, imitate them. If you find love, imitate his love. If you see in them respect for the Lord, also imitate them, so that you know how to appreciate virtue and give each one what is due in justice. But the imperfect, the reprehensible, never imitate it. If you do not know what is right and what is reprehensible, pray. Hear my word and let your conscience advise you. 12. The cry of humanity reaches my spirit, the anguish of childhood, youth, men and women of mature and old age, rises. It is the voice that cries out for justice. It is an invocation of peace, of mercy that the Spirit gives, because the seed of love in this world has been lost and, do you know where love is? At the most deep within the human heart, so deep that it cannot be discovered, because hatred, ambitions, science and vanity have drowned the seed and there is no spirituality, no mercy. The chalice of bitterness is filling and the world drinks it. 13. And you people, contemplate in peace from the boat the storm that has been unleashed, full of confidence in the Father, while those nations involved in wars blaspheme against my spirit some, and others practice imperfect worship, you are glorifying me. But you will all wake up in this time of trials, and you will come to unify yourselves by love and spiritual knowledge. 14. Disciples, I receive you and am ready to forgive you. I want to feel loved by you, and I also hope you live in harmony with each other. May the absent son return to my lap. And if he has distanced himself from me due to misunderstanding or ignorance, do not be afraid of reproach for your behavior. I want to caress your spirit and return what it has lost. It's peace, your joy and hope. It is my wish that you take its sweetness from this life, that you know how to receive its troubles, that you live meekly and patiently. May you work for your elevation. Who can take me away from you? Or what power is there that prevents me from loving you and protecting you? 15. On the other hand, you do know how to distance yourself from your father and imitate the prodigal son. And only when the pain hurts your heart, remember that there is a father who loves you and is ready to help you, to free you from all dangers that lie in wait for you. 16. I have always inspired in you trust so that you see in me as a loving father, a loyal friend, a confidant. 17. Remember the parable of the prodigal son, you who carry the weight of a great fault, and think that above all I am love and forgiveness. You must take into account that you are destined to reach my breast perfected, free of errors, clean. What if today you are within that opportunity to model your heart and do great spiritual works? You must take advantage of these times and shorten the days of your exile. 18. If you already have the experience of the past ages and you know that the law of restitution exists, why do you fall back on yesterday's mistakes instead of taking a big step forward on your path? 19. Look at humanity restoring its faults and washing its stains, subject to major transformations in order to purify and restore all that has sullied. 20. My word is true. You have seen much of my prophecies fulfilled before your unbelief. Many others are to be seen, and of this you will bear witness. My trial is open as I announced for these times. 21. Chaos engulfs the nations, 
While a few watch and know the reason for their hardships, many sleep and they are content to live without making an effort to know the cause of all these trials. You do know why you have read in the Book of Wisdom and my word has prepared you. Nothing can surprise you. But you are still small to give the voice of alert to humanity. You have not yet strengthened and your steps are hesitant. You have heard my word and you cannot understand it, or when you have understood it you do not take to practice it. You divide yourselves knowing that you are the same people, and the positions that I have given you feel that they weigh on you as an unbearable burden. I ask you, why have you not reached the bottom of this teaching if I have illuminated you with the light of truth? Why are you not strong if I have fed you with this bread of eternal life, of which one crumb is enough to give life to the hungry? It is that you have become familiar with my word and have taken it without taking advantage of it. Look, while you are fed up with it, there are many hungry who yearn to take it to feed themselves. 22. The time is coming when this word will cease. Then it will have remained in the hearts of my disciples and it will be recorded in books to be made known to humanity. After 1950 I want you to preserve the highest purity in your practices and obedience to my orders and mandates. With this you will testify that I was with you. 23. All your positions have been given to you according to your ability and strength because I know and know your virtue. Work out of love, not out of fear. Look at the bottom of my teachings my Father's love and my forgiveness always manifest over all my children. 24. How much happiness I discover in your heart while you are listening to my word. I am the infinite patience that awaits the moment when you rise fully to the fight. I have revealed your future to you. 25. How big your day is going to be after my departure, you haven't even foreseen it. By then I have some secrets to reveal to you so that you can persuade men. 26. I surprised you like those fishermen of the second era, whom I found devoted to their tasks and duties, telling them, Follow me, from now on you will be fishers of men. I granted them the virtue of healing the sick. I gave them the gift of the word. I enlightened them with my revelations and taught them to liberate the possessed. And already prepared and comforted, I pointed out the roads and offered them the regions, so that they could put into practice my doctrine of redemption. 27. In this time you have not been twelve chosen. You are a numerous portion that I have consecrated and taught under the shade of various bushes. You will be the ones who instill courage in humanity, in the great tests that threaten the world. 28. Soon the spirit world will stop communicating, and I want you to develop your gifts so that you do not hesitate. 29. I want you to live alert so that you can listen in intuition or in dreams to the voice of the hereafter, when it tells you, get up. And then you will direct your steps to the homes and to the regions where the disease or the fury of the elements have sown desolation. And when you have to go after remote countries, listen to the order of the Father indicating the instant and pointing the way. 30. The sects and religions will come to observe you, they will put your power to the test. There will be those, convinced of your gifts, tempt you by means of money to use you for material ends. Do not forget that all that that converts my work into merchandise will lose my grace. 31. I am going to stop speaking to you through human channels because it is written, but I will not abandon you. I will give you the inspiration and I will make you feel my presence. And the tranquility of your consciousness will not let time mark deep traces in your body. 32. Every house of prayer and premises where my doctrine is not practiced with purity, it will disappear and only those that are a refuge and a boat of salvation for the needy. 33. After my departure, the purification will come in this people. It will be at the height of world struggles and strife, after which peace will come and misery will flee. 34. Be strong, because in the time of struggle you will be persecuted and harassed. Work and bread will be denied you, but then I will manifest my mercy and my power in you, because you will not feel hunger, your face will never be changed, nor will you become needy. Then your spirit will remember the road to the promised land through the desert in the first era, and he will remember that before his thirst the rock was opened, to offer him the freshness of its waters. When the burning sun of the desert burned you, the clouds covered you like a blanket, and when hunger and scarcity threatened, manna descended as a message from my love.
35. I warn you of everything so that tomorrow you will not say that I did not prepare you. 36. I clearly explain my doctrine so that you will not fall into temptation or allow yourselves to be surprised. 37. I want to see you always prepared, so that you are understanding and respectful of my will. If you are the first who have received my teaching and have had in yourselves the proofs that I have descended to communicate with man, you must make an effort to leave a good example to those who come after you. You must know your spiritual origin, your duties and the missions entrusted to you, so that you can watch over your spirit and know how to keep yourself in virtue. 38. While you have evolved, coming to earth again and again in different reincarnations, you see that my work it remains unchanging, unchanging through the times that have passed. I always show you the same attributes. I make you feel my Father's love, my unlimited patience, my works that redeem, and despite all these trials you do not recognize me. It is necessary that you wake up and realize the time that I have given so that you may work out your salvation in him. The time is coming for you to go to the hereafter, and you have not hurried so that you arrive at the precise moment when I call you, so that you can show me your harvest and that that harvest be of seed cultivated with prayer, your spirit being also in the best disposition of repentance and elevation. 39. Think that if you are part of my spirit you have life and grace as well as I. You are pure in your principle and this is how you must come to me on your return. That's why you should fight tirelessly in this time, so that you can return to your original purity and perfection. 40. Have charity for your brothers and for yourselves, since you form one family, one spirit. Above you there are beings who are working for your salvation, crossing space, spreading. Charity become your protectors. What would become of you without their help? Already that you have not known how to interpret my will and you fall into errors every moment. 41. Think of the struggle of your spiritual protectors and help them by making their work less painful. Not to sow his path with thistles. Do not ignore his voice that always warns you of danger. His advice that guides your steps and its light that guides you. Live with them in harmony and you will be in perfect communion with me. 42. You will not distinguish yourselves from your brothers by insignia or any material sign. Distinguish yourselves by your works, from who will be your own brothers who bear witness. This way you will be able to gain the trust of those around you and you will make friends from your enemies. 43. Not all of you have awakened, but I will use the preparation of a single heart in each room to awaken others so that in the hour of the call, in the hour of my justice, all of you give me a single fruit, always the same in the hands of all my peasants, so that I make the call to humanity and all the peoples of the earth have access in your nation, so that they come and take not only the word that I have written, but also your example. 44. And thus my doctrine will make its way among all the doctrines, because it will win and prevail at last among all the others. 45. Every doctrine that is not confirmed with facts and examples has passed its death sentence. Moreover, all doctrine that is confirmed with facts, that will prevail. My examples, my sacrifice in the second era, they talk a lot. And now I tell you, he who seals his word with his blood and his life, is truly setting an example and strength. 46. At this time you will not seal your words with blood or life. The world is not hungry for your life or thirst for your blood. Man thirsts for truth, love and charity. And when you have prepared and spiritualized without falling into any fanaticism, when you know how to practice my divine laws and the laws sincerely, as I have taught you, then you will give the world the secret of its salvation, the secret of peace and redemption in all ways. 47. Because my work does not come against science or human institutions, it does not come against marriage or family. It does not come against anything that contains justice and love. 48. If in other times man has stood up as a minister of my divinity against science, certainly I tell you, that minister has not honored me, he has not understood me, nor has he followed me, because I, being the principle of all spirituality, I am also the principle of all science. And if you have often heard that the Father abhors the human sciences, they are not science in their beginning, but of the end that man has given them. I abhor the bad sciences that have brought humanity to destruction, 
to the sciences that man has placed at the service of evil, for the destruction of life and beginning, that is the abomination of science before me. But every scientist who has become a benefactor of humanity, although you have not named him a saint, I have him in a select place in the spiritual plane. 49. This is what the Master tells you on this day, so that you do not fall into fanaticism, because in truth you are participating in the fruit of science, because I have inspired men with my light to find the elements of life in its wake. If it had not been my will for man to take science to his advantage, I would not have created the elements, nor would I have put in the bowels of the earth or in the spaces, all that the man has taken for his advancement and evolution. But I did everything for recreation, benefit and progress of the spirit and flesh too. 50. From the earliest times, I gave the earth to the first inhabitants, telling them, I leave it to you be careful. It is your treasure, your garden, your abode and your home. Grow and multiply. And that phrase I told you was not only as humans for the multiplication of the species, but also as spirits and as intelligence. For I will multiply you in all ways and in all orders, in spirit and in truth. 51. At this time I come against everything superfluous and unnecessary, everything bad, everything harmful, all bad seed. Through my spiritual doctrine I will fight all those who have put science at the service of evil. I will fight all bad science until man awakens to my truth. So this doctrine will penetrate, like daylight, in all places and will awaken everyone. So prepare yourselves and recognize your mission, your position and responsibility among men. 52. See what my work teaches you. Look at the horizons that my doctrine and my word open to you, and see how great the spirit and how short the distances are. He who has prayed with love, feeling the pain of his brother, has detached himself. He has transported from here to distant places and has deposited his love, his balm and his caress on those who suffer. 53. For this prayer of my people of Israel, which rises up to me in all places, I bless the universe and give it my light and my paternal caress. Since they do not recreate with my word, I make my essence reach all hearts, that all of them feel me, that they get up in search of my truth, in search of the way because I am preparing all so that they come to me. My peace be with you. Spiritual Teaching 219 Love Each Other 1. I give you at this moment my balm, my strength and my caress. 2. I am your Cyrenian, since on earth when the weight of my cross became overwhelming, there was a man with mercy in his heart that helped me share my burden. 3. Here I am, ready to come to your aid when you fall on the road, to give strength to your spirit and lift him up to continue the day. 4. Step by step you are approaching the Calvary of your life on earth, where your spirit will tell me, Father, into your hands I entrust my spirit, everything is finished. 5. Blessed are those who, when that hour arrives and utters those words, have concluded their mission, because great will be his peace and his joy. 6. I want all of you to reach that summit, no matter if you arrive broken and without material goods, there you will feel like you had never felt in my presence and my mercy. 7. There I wait for the man, there I wait for the woman, the fathers, the mothers, all those who came to the world with missions to fulfill. 8. Do you want to reach the top? Trust in me that I am your destiny. Accept trials with love. Obey my will whatever it may be. With a smile on your lips, with faith and resignation in your heart. 9. Do not forget that I am omnipotent and omnipresent, so that doubt or weakness will not make you fall into temptation. 10. Sometimes, when you cry in the world and you think that I live in heaven where everything is happiness of the Spirit, you doubt my love, because you do not conceive that the Father enjoys, while millions of His creatures suffer to the death on earth. You do not want to understand that my happiness will not be absolute until the last of my children is in the land of salvation. 11. If I am your Father, think that I necessarily have to feel what the children feel, just like that you will understand that while each one of you suffers and feels your own pain, my divine spirit suffers with the pain of all my creatures. 12. 
As a proof of this truth, I came into the world to become a man and to carry a cross that represented all the pain and sin of the world. And if as a man I carried the weight of your imperfections on my shoulders, and if I felt all your pain, could God be insensitive to the sorrows of my children? 13. In my spirit there is a hymn whose notes no one has heard, no one knows it in heaven or on earth. That song will be heard throughout the universe when pain, misery, darkness and sin have remained extinct. Those divine notes will find an echo in all spirits, uniting the father and the children in that song of harmony and happiness. I tell you in truth, that even the stones will speak when that harmony illuminates the life of my beloved children. 14. Keep refining your spirit, keep evolving and perfecting it, always carrying your faith alight as an inextinguishable flame. 15. I must tell you that while you live on earth, you must strive to make yourselves as kind as possible in your life. It is not necessary to cry, suffer and bleed infinitely in order to deserve peace in the hereafter. 16. If you could transform this earth from the valley of tears into a world of happiness, where you would have love one to the other, where you were concerned about practicing good. And living within my law, in truth I tell you, that life would be before me, even more meritorious and higher than an existence of sufferings, vicissitudes and tears for much conformity that you have to suffer it. When will you come to unite spiritual life with human life, in such a way that you do not see the limits between one and the other? When will you make your existence a single life, putting aside the idea of death, to enter eternity. That light will be in men until spirituality flourishes in the world. 17. The light of my word comes at this time to save you from the darkness of materialism in which the gods have been buried spirits. Darkness that does not allow them to see the truth even if they have it close and carry it inside. 18. The third era is with you and they are giving proofs and signs to men and even greater will follow them giving as if it were an immense bell thrown into flight to awaken the living and the dead. 19. Pray, observe, meditate, let my inspiration guide you, you will recognize it whenever you feel driven to good and to elevation, when salutation to its creator rises from your spirit. 20. Glory to God in the highest and peace on earth to men of good will. 21. Blessed people, chosen for my charity, I have called you in these times of perversity, confusion and pain, to reunite in a family and form among the peoples of the earth, the people of peace. 22. You live in times of chaos. Only those who achieve spiritualization in these times of trial will be able to survive the pain and confusion of the coming storm. Only those who rise above all material vanities of human miseries will be able to resist with serenity and calm among the universal chaos and will be like castaways in middle of the ocean that they manage to hold onto a tree, which will be faith in my love. 23. For that time I am preparing you. That is why I am teaching you to imitate me. But it is not my will that you be the only ones who practice my doctrine. I want the virtues of your heart, your words and deeds, to attract all the hearts that have to come to me to receive my teaching at this time so that the people multiply in number, in strength and in elevation among humanity. 24. But what is that chaos, that storm, that test that is coming? They are the dregs of the chalice of bitterness that mankind has still not drained. It is necessary that man, who has prepared that chalice with his deeds through the ages, hurry him down to the last drop, so that he knows his own work and its fruit. 25. Blessed people. Those men who rise up full of greatness and dominance in the nations, in the peoples of the earth, they are great spirits clothed with power and possessors of great missions and yet, they are not at the service of my divinity. They have not put their greatness and gifts at the service of love and charity, have formed their world, their law and his throne, their vassals, their dominions and everything they can aspire to. But when they feel the throne shake faced with trials, when they sense the invasion of a powerful enemy approaching, when they see their streams and their names, rise with all their strength, full of greatness, earthly vanity, hatred and ill will and they throw themselves against the enemy, not caring if their work, their idea, leaves behind only the trace of pain, of destruction and evil. They seek only the destruction of the enemy, to erect a greater throne, to have greater dominion on the peoples, on. 
riches on the daily bread and on the very life of men. 26. I am preparing you to be my soldiers, but not those who cause destruction or evil, not soldiers of hatred and perversity, of darkness and greed, but soldiers of spirituality, brotherhood, love, meekness and charity. You will rise up full of strength and trust in me, who am your ideal, full of trust in your arms that are truth and justice. I am preparing you so that from now on you can fight against that enemy, who is also powerful, but who is no more so than you. 27. The day you wake up to spirituality, you will come to the understanding that darkness is weak before light, hatred it is an atom in the face of the irresistible force of love and that atom vanishes at the contact of true charity. The materialism is dwarfed by the gifts of the spirit. The material is temporary and the spiritual has eternal life. 28. You are forming the spiritualized and capable people to remove the confusion of the world, to dematerialize it and defanaticize it with your good example, with the good thoughts, words and deeds that you are practicing from now on. 29. If men ask you about teachings that you have not heard from me, or that you have not managed to understand, I will speak through you and surprise men, wise men, theologians, the great, the president, and to the judge, to the masters of the earth. 30. I will make my Marian Trinitarian spiritualist doctrine penetrate everywhere, like air penetrates everywhere, like light that dispels all darkness to enlighten the world. This is how my work will spread. This is how my doctrine will spread. It will penetrate into every sect, into every institution, in every human congregation, in every heart and in every home. He will cross the roads, he will cross the deserts and seas, and it will fill this world because the third age, the age of light, has arrived for all humanity. 31. At all times I have humanized my manifestations. Remember that in the first era I chose Moses to communicate with you. He was my spokesman and my emissary. I called him to the mountain and told him, Moses, bow down your face because you will be able to look at me. Go and tell your people that I am their Lord and their God, that I am the God of his parents and it is my will to clean inside and out, so that you are worthy to receive my mandates, my law, my precepts. Through Moses manifested myself as Father, as law and as justice. Through him I communicated with my chosen people. By that man sent my commands to all in my heart. 32. In the second era I wanted to be closer to you. It was not my divine will that those people take me only as an inexorable judge. I wanted to feel the caress of my children, of the creatures made in my image and likeness. And in an act of love and meekness, the Father became man to teach the humility that is greatness of the Spirit, the true compliance with the laws, life within love. Teach man to fight for a just and eternal truth. 33. The Doctrine of Christ given as an example, as an open book for humanity to study, has not found in no other people on earth, in any generation, in any race, nothing like it. Because those who have risen up giving precepts of justice or doctrines of charity, have been sent by me to earth as precursors, as emissaries, but not as divinity. Only Christ came among you as divinity. He came to give you the clearest and greatest lesson that the heart of man has received. 34. And now in this time, beloved people, I have not come to become a man as in that second era, but I have been pleased to communicate with all my creatures through the understanding of man, and even in the spiritual valley and in the infinite spaces have felt my divine presence. Because on the scale of perfection there are many steps, in the spiritual valley and in endless spaces, there are many worlds. And truly I tell you, I have always communicated with everyone. Depending on the spiritual scale, the world in which they are, this has been my manifestation among them. 35. Some people ask me, Why is it that the Father communicates through man's understanding, if man is sinful, impure, and harbor low passions? And the Master tells you, My ray is all purity and perfection, and although the Father is not scandalized by the sin of man, he cannot come into contact with the impure. I reach the consciousness of the speaker and it is the consciousness that transmits my light, my word and my teaching to the understanding of the spokesperson. The speaker beforehand has risen to me in an act of love, fear, preparation, so as not to mix low passions and trends of the flesh, 
with the perfection of my lessons. 36. But soon I will stop communicating through human understanding, because the moment will come when each of you can spirit to spirit communicate with my spirit. Then my divine ray will also reach your consciousness and there you will hear my voice, you will receive my inspirations, my prophecies and my mandates. I am leading you towards this. 37. I will continue teaching and forgiving you, so that in the last moments of my communication through human understanding, can you tell me, Lord, how great is our sin and our wickedness. We have recognized it in time, we have purified inside and out, in our spiritual life and our human life, and now we come before your infinite mercy loving one another, loving everything created, forming a single body and a single will. 38. If you come to that in 1950, the sinful and non-sinful I will contemplate me in all my splendor, because it will be the moment when you give principle to the fulfillment of the law that I have entrusted to you. 39. Be firm on the path, people, because your spirit is fulfilling a delicate mission on this planet. Only the one who purifies himself by love, who practices my laws, can stop coming to reincarnate on this planet. But he who in his present reincarnation leaves a trace of blood or evil, that one has to return to this earth to repair mistakes, to rebuild what was destroyed, to give life to what was left inert, to forgive those who did not forgive. In a word, to restore. That's why my infinite love says, O oh, tireless pilgrim who has long been walking with bitterness in your heart, here is the one who comes to console you, him who comes to strengthen you, so that you may continue the journey to the end. 40. It has been a long time since you have started this journey, and it is not the first time that I have come to manifest myself on your path. My charity has raised the fallen, healed the sick, and brought the dead back to life. My Father's voice has awakened the one who sleeps. 41. With the light that my spirit radiates on you, your spirit lights up and contemplates its past as the long way of atonement and spiritual evolution. You also understand the responsibility contracted with your master to be the witnesses faithful to my teaching. I have told you that the day will come when sects and religions will come to question and scrutinize you and I don't want you to be caught clumsy. They will find you humble, but manifesting my wisdom within your humility. 42. Humanity will need you and you who are spiritually the oldest people on earth will not hide the gifts that I have given you, you will show the book that I have opened before you. 43. In every age, and from the beginning of creation, I have made a covenant with you. What I have offered I have fulfilled faithfully, but truly I say to you, my people have always failed their promises. 44. Six times I have renewed this covenant with you because I love you and want your salvation. 45. In the twelve that I chose in the second era, human virtues and weaknesses are represented. His virtues I served as an example and encouragement of humanity and I took advantage of its imperfections to give you great teachings. The incredulity of Thomas represents the positivist, the one who believes only in what he feels and sees. 46. Peter represents the fearful of the judgments of men and Judas those who put a price on the goods of the Spirit. 47. At this time I do not come to give you earthly riches. I already gave them to you in other times. Now I come to fill you with wisdom. 48. At all times, men of science have denied and fought my revelations and spiritual manifestations. But I do not fight science because I am science. I am he who inspires man for the good and recreation of himself. Truly I tell you, whoever takes science to cause evil, that one has not been inspired by me. 49. Recognized by its essence my word, I am the vine, from it you are drinking the wine. 50. What do you need to be able to follow me? I will give you everything. I am building a sanctuary in your heart to dwell always in him, because my word through the human spokesperson will cease to be heard and only your spirit will feel it vibrate in the infinite. 51. Blessed are those who have spirituality, because they will feel my presence and will be those who, walking among misery and tears, bring comfort and salvation to this humanity. 52. My universal ray illuminates your understanding and in that light that bathes you, 
you feel full of my presence. The seers contemplate with joy and feel that light that envelopes every spirit. They have seen a great book which I show Israel in that the lesson is contained and is open in the sixth chapter. 53. You have felt the kingdom very close to you, that it was promised to you when you heard my word and you already feel the happiness that you wait for. All your fears dissipate because you begin to recognize me as Father. And when contemplating compliance of my promises that were given in another time to the people of Israel, to the chosen people, you are filled with hope and you begin to form great purposes of amendment and compliance with my law. 54. In my new advent, I am accompanied by spirits of great light, beings who are announcing to you the proximity of my kingdom and preparing the human heart. 55. Your world has been illuminated with my presence. You will soon enter an age of spiritual rebirth that it has to lead you to the resurgence of all virtues and it has to place you on higher planes. Moreover, like I have come to you, I have come to other worlds, where the spirit fights and is perfected and restores with pain. Between those worlds and yours I have come to establish alliance and friendship. I want you to link your thoughts with the beings that inhabit them, that you dedicate a prayer that comforts and enlightens the troubled spirit of your brothers. 56. Thus you will be able to understand that your mission is not limited only to helping your visible brothers, but there are beings that you do not know, that you cannot feel from your present abode and that, nevertheless, are in need of you. 57. This world that today is your home, where you have had my clear manifestation, is conducive to intervene before me, praying for those beings of which I speak. 58. In each age I have manifested myself full of wisdom, essence, love. You have witnessed my demonstrations. Who ignores that I, Jehovah, spoke to the world from its earliest days? Who does not know that I came in Jesus to give you my teaching? I want humanity to know that today I have come to clarify and explain every word and every mystery from the book of eternal wisdom. 59. In your continuous transit you have been protected by me. You are eternal travelers and you do not know the future that you wait. You do not guess when the storm is approaching or when the iris of peace will appear. Only I, who am the one to watch over you, I announce to you when you are ready what is to come. This valley, which on some occasions it has been favorable and kind to you, it has also been hostile to you and has made you shed many tears, with which you have washed and purified your spirit. 60. Come to me. You are tired of the road. Come under the shade of this tree which stands before you full of mercy and love for all my children. And when you have rested and all your sorrows have relieved, think of those who suffer and advocate for them. See that I can give you everything without your mediation. But I am pleased that love, charity and mercy are manifested in the Son, to come to share the pain or the happiness of his brothers. 61. Your existence has no limit, the end of the flesh is not that of the Spirit, because when it comes down to earth, it will survive and find in her new life infinite reasons to fight and keep climbing. That's when the spirit free from the matter that has been oppressing him, he frees himself and finds a vast field in which to apply his gifts and virtues it possesses. 62. When Jesus expired on the cross, the figure of man was erased from your mind and you conceived me infinite, capable to penetrate into all dwellings, to embrace the universe with my love. 63. See each other as equals, love each other fraternally because after 1950 the positions, there will be no guides or spokespersons, columns or seers, faculties or golden feathers or fundamental stone, no longer there will be distinctions. To be great it is enough for me to see you prepared even when you have not had charges, so that I spill my inspiration through you and by it you guide yourselves. 64. Not only those who have held these positions are those who are qualified to carry out great missions. I want all of you to serve this cause and that in each one of you all the charges become locked up, so that you feel responsible for my work. 65. My word will stop materializing and with it you will achieve greater spirituality, because then you will look for me in the infinite raising your thought, you will seek to please me by executing meritorious works, and that will give you greater spiritual progress. 66. I want you to see each other as true brothers, that you live together so that you come to feel closer to each other, so that you are closer to me. Those of you who have reached a greater understanding of my work, teach your brothers, to all those who are taking their first steps. 
Shake hands, protect each other. This is my will. My peace be with you. Spiritual Teaching 220 Love Each Other 1. Welcome to me, disciples. 2. Here is the Master who fulfills his promise of the Second Era, coming as the Holy Spirit to illuminate the universe with his light. 3. Before me are those who doubted, those who blasphemed against me, but who now come repentant to ask forgiveness and to become my servants. 4. Before I arrived, Elijah has been with you, to dispel the night and bring you light, to bring you closer to the source of grace and wisdom that I am. 5. I have found you ready and I have made you sit at my table so that you can savor my delicacies. 6. Spiritually I am shedding my blood drop by drop to trace the path of restitution for you so that you will never stay out of the way. 7. My love overflows on you, but not all of you are sensitive to it. While some feel it in their hearts, others remain lethargic. However, I do not remove anyone from my table because the spiritual resurrection will be in all my children. 8. Those who have truly felt my presence in this communication, thank me for the consolation that my word has brought to his heart, that he felt alone and abandoned. 9. This compound is not the Father's house. My altar is in your heart, your faith is the lighted candle to me, and your consciousness is that superior light that shines on your path that turns you away from the bad paths, that warns you from the depths, who encourages you to do good. 10. You know that I made light as I did everything created, so that that light that you called day, would reveal to you the greatness of creation and you had knowledge of my love and my power. 11. I formed you in my image and likeness, and if I am triune and one, in you there is also the Trinity. 12. Your material body represents creation, by its formation and perfect harmony. Your incarnate spirit is an image of the Word who became man, to trace in the world of men a trace of love, and your consciousness is a radiant spark of the divine light of the Holy Spirit. 13. Whenever man has departed from my law, ignoring the voice of his conscience, he has penetrated the night of temptation, darkness and sin, then I have had to judge his actions and before my justice he has experienced pain. But I have always given him occasion for repentance and have given him time for his restitution. Before my justice has the sinner been bowed down, but later on receiving my forgiveness and my indulgences, he has relapsed in his sin. To show you the path of your restitution your God came to materialize among you, and the Universal Mother had to become woman to redeem you with her tenderness. 14. Spiritually you have come a long way and now you are amazed at the intuition and development that the new generations manifest from their earliest childhood. They are spirits that have lived a long time and now return, to walk before humanity, some on the paths of the spirit and others on the roads of the world, according to their gifts and their mission. But in all of them, humanity will find peace. Those beings of which I speak will be your children. 15. It is no longer time for you to walk through deserts, or to engage in trivial missions. Think ahead and prepare the humanity of tomorrow because by speaking of my doctrine and by pouring out my healing balm, men surprised will ask you, From whom have you received such a great lesson and who has given you such a strange power to heal diseases? Then humanity will see my power in the works of love of my workers. 16. The Spirit is granted seven stages for its evolution and perfection in various reincarnations, for its progress and expiation, but it is not given to Him to remember the previous reincarnations. Matter is like a dense veil that covers them. Only consciousness gives you the intuition that you must walk forward along the path of light, which is that of perfection. 17. That path is the scale with seven steps that will lead the Spirit to my breast where it will remain radiating eternally its light on those on the lowest rungs. 18. That is my divine and eternal plan. You are my collaborators and you will come to reign with me when you have broken the chains of materialism. 19. Hurry! All that you can do now, do it. 
Practice my teaching and you will experience my peace even in the midst of the chaos of this world. 20. Faith, hope and charity, like angels, remain floating on your spirit. 21. I enlighten your heart, spirit and mind, so that in this time of my communication, you will understand the wisdom of my word. This time will leave its mark on future generations so that they understand the era that they will live. 22. I have come as a beacon of light to illuminate your spirit, to strengthen it, and I have been a resurrection for all those who listening to me have believed, because knowing the peace of the higher life, they have risen forming purposes of amending and renouncing superfluous assets. If they can stand up to the trials, they will form my army of soldiers of goodwill. They run to face the world of evil, peopled by troubled minds that, using what I have created, still deny me. A world turned into desert whose red-hot sands burn the traveler's feet, and in that unforgiving desert, gales of ideas they will whip without mercy. 23. Hear me, prepare yourselves and do not fear, that if there is faith in you and you carry my work as an ideal, you will have my strength during the journey like a staff that will sustain you. 24. Let love and faith grow in your heart, because forgiveness will spring from them for those who offend you. In this I tell you the truth, that evil has always stopped before that wall. You will have to drink bitter chalices, O disciples very much loved. 25. The fight will begin after my departure, when I have ceased to be your counselor through human understanding, and you will only find my word in the writings that I will leave you. 26. My word has explained everything that was previously a mystery to you, so that you ignore nothing and know how to face your trials serenely and courageously. 27. You have had, through my lessons, a time of indelible joys. Your spirit, which longed for elevated joys, he will be satisfied, because he could contemplate in the essence of my manifestations, the light of truth, the life of the spirit that awaits you, that life where nothing is limited, where everything is beautiful and perfect, of which with only its reflection you could purify your spirit. 28. By sensing that existence, your spirit feels the joy of eternity, your matter is revived and rises, because he knows that all his pains, his struggles and his resignations will find the fairest of compensations for the spirit. Peace. 29. What you are acquiring is spirituality because spirituality is also knowledge of eternal life, but if you come to harmonize with creation, you will have found another form of spirituality, because you will be living within my laws. If before the decline of the body was for you as the end of the road, today you know that that is where the path begins. Matter is just a fleeting garment. You already recognize that you are not only substance but also essence, because you know that where man ends, it is not the end on the path of the spirit. 30. And you ask, Master, then is it possible that what is essence mixes with what is matter? And I tell you, yes, my children, because the Father who is omnipotent and omnipresent is in everything created to have life. 31. Always listen to the truth. It is like crystalline water that reveals everything at its bottom. Know me in your own inspiration. 32. Simple is my word even when I speak of great revelations because just as in a clear and understandable way I have explained how is the path that leads to true heaven, so I also tell you, that with my word, I will abolish in this time the hell that men through religions and erroneous interpretations have forged to inspire fear and put a bandage of ignorance on humanity. 33. My word is like a book. I have opened its pages before you to show you the simplicity of the hereafter. The times in which men complied in a religious way, forgetting the law, they will pass away because that was to prevaricate. 34. I have not come to scare you. I have come to inspire in you love. 35. I have taught you that I do not punish you, that I only let you go to collect the fruits of your sowing, which if they are sweet, they will be your happiness and your salvation, and if they are bitter, they will awaken you to repentance and the desire to perfect yourselves. 36. To help you in your struggle, I have prepared a new day full of light and grace, so that you can recreate with my word, people of Israel. 37. 
From your childhood, in your youth, in your mature age and in old age, you have looked for me, you have come to me in different ages. I contemplate in the congregations that make up the people of Israel, from the newborn child to the old man. 38. The old man says to me, I am late before you, O oh my father, and for a very short time I will enjoy your word, benefits and charity. And the father says to him, Elder, be with me, never again depart from me. Follow me today and when your spirit reach the threshold of the spiritual valley, and be it in the new life you will not have age. You will always be young and strong. You should not regret having come now that your body is tired and sick, to know the light of my doctrine. Look I have called to the children and within my work they have grown, and today that they are converted into men and women, they have moved away, they have grown tired of my word and have gone in search of new paths, forgetting my advice and my caresses. But I will attract you again and in the final hour, all will be with me because I am in all the plains in which the Spirit dwells. 39. When man strays from the path of good, for lack of prayer and good practices, he loses his moral strength, his spirituality and is exposed to temptation, and in its weakness it makes room for sins and these make the heart. But I, I have come as a doctor to the bed of the patient and I have put all my love and care in him. My light has been like crystalline water on his lips embraced by fever and when he felt my balm on his forehead, he told me, Lord, only your charity can save me. I am seriously ill in the body and death will come to me very soon. And I have said, You will not die because I, who am life, have arrived and all that you have lost will be returned to you. 40. Go to the fulfillment of your duties and all the evil that you have done. Turn it into good. I give you the strength to carry out this great work of regeneration, because I have a great mission for you. 41. Thus I meet you in the third era. I know your evil and your anguish, but you will all be saved because in you are the principle of eternal life. 42. Prepare yourselves so that by making yourselves worthy of me, you may present your heart to me as a clean vessel from within and from outside, in which I deposit my word and with the light that I give you, you can analyze it. From each of my words, form phrases and with them great books. I prepare your understanding, so that you speak to your brothers and calm the hunger of truth and justice that humanity feels. 43. Appreciate my word so that you do not say about my departure. How great was the privilege I had, and I did not understand it. 44. I do not want you to be like the children who, having a kind and loving father by their side, despise him, and when he has closed his eyes to this world and I make him occupy a place in the spiritual valley, among the favorite children for his virtue. Then those cry for their lack of love and gratitude for that father and late recognize the good they had and they did not know how to appreciate. 45. Work now that you have me with you, so that you can say to the world, The Lord is speaking and giving proof of his presence. Draw near to me those who seek me, for they will believe. Tomorrow you will have to prepare a lot to be able to convince your brothers. 46. At every moment hardships come to you that make you cry and you say to me, Master, why do you test me if you have promised peace? And I say to you, thanks to these trials the spirit remains alert. In the midst of tranquility, the light of your faith fades and you stop on the path of struggle and improvement. If your body hurts or the pain afflict your hearts, be satisfied, because today you have recovered peace and health of spirit in my work. 47. The day will come when you, already prepared, go to humanity with your pupils open and your intuition developed, to penetrate with respect into the interior of hearts and discover their pain, their spiritual poverty and with my teaching you can calm their need and encourage their spirit. 48. Whenever you put my word into practice you will see wonders. She will never disappoint you. If you prepare properly you will carry out your mission and my will. 49. I have given each room a specific mission. I have prepared some of them as a saving ark for all those in whom they have not found understanding in their brothers, for the development of their gifts, to others as a source of light, where I have poured out my wisdom. In others I have manifested myself as love, pouring out tenderness and charity. New venues will still emerge and new workers, for I am preparing the last. 
These will be like a staff to the first. Today are little toddlers, but they will become my disciples, and later, they will be the teachers of the new generations. 50. To be recognized, you have to live in virtue in compliance with all my precepts. In my work you are all equal, first and last. The latter have had to prepare in less time to be instructed in my teaching. 51. To the workers I say, prepare yourselves, so that the spiritual world manifests itself with perfection through your understanding, and the word that flows from your lips, be pure and have spiritual essence. Don't let my inspiration as it passes through your understanding. It becomes cloudy. If your responsibility is very great, your reward will also be great. The joy and peace that you will enjoy when you have fulfilled, you have not sensed. Your gifts are of great value and they will lead you to true happiness. 52. Disincarnated spirits of different conditions approach the workers in search of charity, and when they have found the door of your heart closed and you have not given them comfort, your brain has been broken and left its influence of pain and concern among you. 53. Compliance awaits you. Be charitable. Israel has been prepared to bring light and peace to needy spirits, and as long as you do not comply, you will feel a great cross of duties weigh on you, which will not leave you until you have worked. 54. I promise you my peace as a precious reward. 55. You are purified in your thinking and ready to listen to me. I tirelessly present myself between you to repeat my divine manifestations, so that you get to destroy the doubt that could still exist in your heart. Fifty-six. I have manifested my presence and my essence so that no one can deny that I have been among this people. 57. This wisdom that I pour through the speaker has not been taken from books, it is not the collection of knowledge that man has been able to acquire through the ages. I am not making history to you as humanity does. 58. I come to manifest my light through a man equal to you with knowledge similar to those you carry, and the only thing I am looking for is the clarity of understanding and the purity of the spirit of the one who is going to become in an instant an instrument and spokesperson of my divinity, as well as the preparation and spiritual recollection of those who are going to listen to me. When this union of thoughts and wills is realized, the light of my spirit comes to you, because in those moments your spirit has shed materialism and your heart understands the good. Because all of your being feels the need to get closer to the Father, Convinced that you are not capable of realizing great actions without my help, whether spiritually or materially. 59. You came to me with a heart broken by doubts, because you had been searching for the truth for a long time without finding it and listening to my word, suddenly you doubted. But then faith came and you wanted to know what exists apart from your body and material life. You wanted to understand those gifts and you convinced yourself that, when the body that you now possess becomes inert under the earth, your spirit will continue to live, because a voice tells you that you are not only matter. 60. And you ask yourself, what is the spirit? In what way does it live? How should we prepare it to penetrate the world in which he will dwell forever? What evolution should it achieve? And what relationship will it have with other spiritual beings and still with the same divinity? 61. All these questions you have asked yourself, Interest attracts you, that interest has later turned into a spiritual need, recognizing that what you have heard from the spokesperson has moved deeply your heart. 62. You have come without being forced by anyone, you have not been deceived either. It has not been ostentation or splendor which has dazzled you, since you have found these poor and humble places. Has been the light resplendent of my word. 63. Do not be sad when you remember that from the second era I told you, many are called and few the chosen ones, because in truth it is not I who choose. I call everyone and with me are those who love me and they want to follow me. If you who have been called want to be one of those who follow me, persevere. 64. My word and my revelations are for everyone. Some will come to understanding first, others later, but all will arrive. 65. The man, by the free will that he enjoys, is the one who voluntarily choose the path you like, the one you understand or the one that is easiest for you to follow. I make the call to everyone, 
but the one who is most prepared is the one who chooses the best path. Thus, he who comes to listen to my word and has been sensitive to the call and has trembled at hearing my lesson, you will find in him the truth he seeks and will no longer depart. These will be the ones who do not need the ostentation and greatness of the temples built by men, because they no longer inspire devotion or faith. They know those temples will be unnecessary when man has achieved spirituality. Your preparation will be a call to perfection, and it is my divinity who will approach him to purify him. So I will dwell in his heart and establish between him and my spirit true spiritual communion. 66. If for an instant you could totally detach yourself from your material part, your joy would be filled with spirit by feeling enveloped in the light of the hereafter. That light is what reaches you in a limited way through my divine ray. I limit myself to make you feel my presence, because being a universal force, creation, power, light and life, I could not come to you in all my power. 67. Just as you take from the sun that illuminates you only the rays necessary to live, I also tell you, yes, if you abuse that force, you will harm yourself because it is too big and strong for creatures like you. 68. The same happens with the spiritual. You have to take from my divinity the necessary part for your spirit. Knowing that in that spark you receive you will have all the strength to feel the inspiration that moves the fibers of your heart, the light that gives you understanding and understanding to fulfill your mission. In it you will find that harmony that must exist between God and man. 69. I speak to you like this to help you understand this manifestation, so that you elevate the spiritual part and in your mind you receive inspiration from the hereafter, high counsel to teach you how to live. So you will understand that the smallest part of you is the matter that you have as a body. 70. I am like a sun, you are like a spark of it. You were created small so that you would grow by your merits developing your gifts. You were pure in the beginning, purity that later you stained in trials and sin, because you were set on a path where you would rise by the effort of your will, so that in it you would make merits and raise a harvest. What effort would you have made to elevate yourself? if you had always lived in the heights? What longing for could there be development in you, if from the beginning you had been great? Of what merits could or would I have rewarded you, if you had always been perfect? But you came to earth and in it you found the opposite feeling to perfection, to good. You found the temptation that induces evil, the weakness of the flesh, the snares of the world. There began the struggle of the spirit within the body whose nature was different from yours. The spirit, disoriented at first by the world and nature with which it was surrounded, fell into lethargy, letting matter grow and act according to its earthly conditions with its material passions. 71. It was necessary for the spirit to come to earth to incarnate again, once after another in different materials, some more perfect than others, some with a longer life than others, all of different inclinations, for the spirit to form a concept of itself to acquire knowledge and elevation. Thus, step by step, the present time could come when he could not only understand, but even know his future in humanity and also the spiritual life that awaits you. Who gets to acquire extensive knowledge through his struggle, he will not need new subjects for his evolution, because he will be able to inhabit the spiritual abodes. In this way you will climb the scale of perfection step by step until you reach me. 72. If your destiny is so great and your spirit is similar to me, how can you fall into idolatry and do with your hands an image to adore me in it? Why don't you admire me better through this nature, since you do not know how to go to the spiritual, and you are inspired by the contemplation of its magnificence, in the life that sprouts and pulses with each step you take, in the number of beauties and wonders with which I have adorned your abode, in the firmament where thousands of worlds, unknown to you shine and which speak to you of life, of law and of obedience, so that you may form your prayer of love, your thanksgiving and your confession? 73. This is your time, O oh, spirits. Wake up, get up, come to me. My peace be with you. Spiritual Teaching 221 Love Each Other 1. People, I am going to touch your most sensitive fibers to prepare you and make you worthy of receiving my teaching. 2. I am going to tell you about the Divine Mother, about that spirit that incarnated in the Second Era to fulfill a high destiny. 3. 
Mary was sent to manifest her virtue, her example and perfect divinity. She was not just another woman among humanity. It was a different woman and the world contemplated her life, knew her way of thinking and feeling, knew of the purity and grace of her spirit and body. She is an example of simplicity, humility, self-denial and love. Already although her life has been known to the world of that time and of subsequent generations, there are many who do not know her virtue, her virginity. They do not explain the fact that she was virgin and mother, and it is that man is incredulous by nature and has failed to judge divine works with a prepared spirit. If you studied the scriptures and analyzed the incarnation of Mary and the lives of her ancestors, you would come to know who she is. For Mary is essentially divine, her spirit is one with the Father and with his Son, why judge her human, if she was the favorite daughter, announced to humanity from the beginning of time as the creature in whom would the divine word incarnate? 5. Then why does man blaspheme and doubt my power and disrespect my works? It is that man has not deepened in my divine teaching, he has not meditated on what the scriptures speak, nor does he accept my will. 6. Today, in the third era, he also doubts that she comes to communicate with men and I tell you that she has participation in all my works, because it is the representation of the most tender love that is housed in my divine spirit. 7. I have given you proof of this truth and have allowed the prophets of all time to testify of Mary as the Universal Mother. Today those who possess this gift have also seen it manifest itself in symbols or allegories that represent it. You have felt her maternal influence that caresses you, her strength and consolation alleviating your sorrows, and you also present that her intercession has saved you from many dangers, in this time in which the world is traveling through different paths led by science in a dizzying race in which materialization, vanity, and pleasures have taken him away from the true way. 8. That is why I come to call the heart of my people to teach it and send it later as an emissary of this good news. 9. My envoys have always been unknown, but do not fear, the Almighty is with his servants. I myself was unknown, since not everyone knew how to see in Christ, the presence of God and they only managed to see in Him a prophet or illuminated. 10. I had to give testimony of myself with my life, my works and my superhuman death. And before that truth I know many raised up with burning faith in their hearts, who testified of my doctrine. 11. Even dead I did not abandon you, because after the sacrifice I manifested myself spiritually in fullness of life. I arrived among my people of the spiritual valley and there I prepared them, enveloped them in my light, adorned them with the white garment of purity and I sent them to the world to incarnate again. But the time came to gather the tribes of my people and I made the call to this scrap of earth, because you are truly the people of Israel, but not by blood but by spirit. My kingdom is not of this world nor is your eternal abode is on earth. 12. See your King and Lord how he descends among human evil full of humility and love to make his teachings to the dead in the light of the third era. 13. No longer seek me in idolatrous worship. It is no longer time for you to love me with fanaticism. From the earliest times I have fought these evil inclinations among you and have revealed direct communication with my spirit through prayer. 14. The scriptures of past times could reveal to you what I repeat today, but man has dared to falsify my truths to spread them adulterated. And there you have a spiritually sick, tired, and lonely humanity. 15. That is why my voice of alert is heard through the spokesperson, because I don't want you to find confusion. 16. Along the path that I am tracing for you, you will be able to find the one that I taught you in the past, because they are all one and the same. 17. Men go walking with anxiety, in search of justice, truth, charity, and love. They stumble and falling before human indifference, but those who have heard this voice in the third era have felt my presence and in my essence have quenched your hunger, your thirst, and your pain. However, among those who have witnessed my manifestation, there are those who deny it, believing it impossible for God to communicate through sinful man. The unbeliever, I say, that the most pure light of the divinity will not be tarnished with human sin, because my light is infinitely superior to the good or bad works of men, and furthermore, 
I have come to give light to those who are in the shadows. 18. There is a divine pleasure in reaching the sinner, comforting his heart, making him feel my Father's warmth and making him know the taste of the bread of eternal life. 19. You who hear me and know that you form the Lord's people, Understand that up to now you have not fulfilled the mission that I assigned to you from the beginning of time, that you have hidden the law and have sown the paths of pain. But bitterness and vicissitudes have made you know the pain, so that you can understand and love your sister, humanity. 20. My word is universal, but if it is not heard by everyone, it is because of its materialism, what a band of darkness it is that covers her eyes and her spiritual ear has lost the sensitivity to listen to the divine word. 21. Times of danger are approaching. War with its wealth of pain, misery and mourning will once again shake man. Minds and spirits will be troubled, and all this will speak to mankind of their lack of obedience to my laws of love and justice. But, as a father of love, I will stand before chaos and make my light shine in the sky as a dawn of peace and redemption. 22. I am preparing you so that you may be the light of the world tomorrow, that you may be life and bread, charity and love among yourselves as brothers. 23. Penetrate my word and in its essence you will find me. 24. My word is light and peace for the spirit, descends in these moments to your heart. My light looks for that people that in three eras has received my divine lessons. 25. Israel was sleeping, when suddenly the signs of my arrival began to wake her up and disturb her. I introduced myself among men and opened a new era for them. 26. I brought in my new lessons greater teachings than those of the past times, because I found more capacity in minds and further evolution in spirits. 27. Do not take as a distinction the fact of having chosen a people of the earth among the others. I love everyone the same as my children and the peoples they have formed. 28. Each people brings a mission to earth, and the destiny that Israel has brought is to be among humanity the prophet of God, the beacon of faith and the path of perfection. 29. My prophecies and revelations that I have made to you from the earliest times did not have a fair interpretation because the time had not yet come for humanity to understand them. 30. Yesterday Israel was a people of the earth, today it is a multitude scattered throughout the world. Tomorrow God's people will be formed by all the spirits which in perfect harmony will form together with their father, the divine family. 31. My word is the book of wisdom that will make man penetrate an unknown life, higher and more beautiful. You will know its essence and through its spirit you will understand the revelations that before seemed an unfathomable arcane and that I was ready to reveal them to him when the hour was arrived. 32. You will seek and love spiritual teachings, and as you pursue that ideal you will feel that your walk becomes light on earth. Every hour that passes, Every day and every year that passes brings you closer to the culmination of that time. 33. I am pouring out my word so that when it ceases to be heard, you will not fall into confusion. I don't want to surprise the first or the last unprepared. With how much confidence can you later surrender to your fulfillment if you know how to understand and obey my commands? 34. You need to shed many practices that still tarnish your life and your worship. You must be interested to elevate your existence more, so that you get to read in the divine book that is in me. 35. I speak to the spirit more than to the heart, because it is the one that can conceive that which means elevation and eternity. And to those who have made this earth their eternal mansion and in it he seeks his glory, honors, pleasures and power, I tell them, Look at your world shaken with pain, populated with misery and desolation and illuminated by the false lights of a selfish and vain science. 36. All the life and works of men are judged at these moments. 
Nature through its elements touches spirits and speaks to hearts. 37. I will ask each creature what is the fruit of its sowing. What will be your response to the Eternal? And you, multitudes who have heard my voice at this time and know that in every word of mine you have received a command, what will you answer when the time comes? 38. Truly I tell you, I am giving some and others the necessary time so that they do not appear naked in front of me, stained or miserable. I want you strong so that you know how to face the vicissitudes, the great life lessons, and temptations. 39. Truly I tell you, you are stronger than you think, but you need to penetrate more into my doctrine so that you know how to discover within yourself the spiritual treasure with which each creature is gifted. 40. You can solve conflicts, dispel darkness and make light, ward off evil and attract good. 41. Soldiers of God will be called those who know how to wield their weapons and overcome all adversity with them. The spirits more intuitively evolved will protect their weaker brothers, and these, in turn, will sense near which heart will feel more secure. 42. The greatness of man will not be given by his earthly possessions, nor by his titles, nor their attire. In the poor may be a spirit elevated by their evolution and spirituality and among them there are many who will manifest the eternal truth to humanity. 43. This hour in which you meet with me is for you a moment of spiritual joy, because you are ready to receive my inspiration and my mandates. Your spirit has been purified to receive the essence of this teaching and to understand it. 44. Some of you have been docile and have been willing to listen to me, Others have persisted in ignoring me and I wait patiently for the awakening of these disciples. I have come as a warrior and I have launched myself to conquer the spirits, because they are my children. It will not be rigor that will overcome your reluctance, but my love and my patience. I want you to look at me, that you recognize me, so that you can love me and know that you live within the universe that I jealously rule, and that you must follow the path of righteousness that I have outlined for you. Forty-five. I have given you the law and I have awaited your fulfillment based on what your consciousness tells you. I have not imposed my will, since I have given you your own will, free will, faculties to make you similar to me. More if you want to know my desire, I will tell you that I want to see you walk jealously within my laws of justice, free of errors, so that you leave your descendants, a good seed, a clear example, a luminous path. Forty-six. The lesson that I leave you today for your improvement is part of the book of my word, in which is contained my wisdom to be studied and felt, more with the spirit than with the mind or the heart. 47. There is a lot of poverty in the spirit of men due to their scarce spirituality, hence sadness, orphanhood, hunger. This humanity that I love so much needs to feed on wisdom, pure essence and only the divine word will fortify it so that humanity has the testimony of the people who have heard me, will still have to await your preparation and dedication to the fulfillment of your mission. 48. I have taught you to work with the Spirit so that your work may be lavish in benefits. I have told you that where your body cannot go, because you cannot bridge the distances, your Spirit can carry your message and prepare the environment of peoples and nations that are in danger, of homes that have been invaded by grief, or of sick who invoke charity. All this you can do in my name, I allow it so that you can show me greater merits. 49. There is no distance for the spirit that it cannot bridge. You can take your prayer or a good wish to your brothers, and you will not find an obstacle that stops you in your eagerness to send your message of goodwill to others. 50. Your spirit senses that the time is near when it must enter a stage of greater elevation, in that he has to achieve the understanding of his gifts in all their significance. 51. I do not want you to be left without receiving until the last of the lessons that I have to deliver. I will let you know my work of this time from the first to the last part, 
so that you feel qualified to present humanity the testimony of my word with your works of love. 52. I have taught you to pray, so that you learn to be in communication with me and you can receive my inspiration that will come to enlighten you in times of trial, for men will plunge into a greater chaos than that for which they are going through and it is necessary that you pray for all your brothers. 53. I am writing the history of humanity, in that book everything that you did in the world will be printed. Do you want to present examples of meekness and patience? Or do you prefer to leave a legacy of disobedience and rebellion? 54. Many of you will no longer have a new opportunity to come to earth to repair your faults. You will not possess that instrument that you carry today, that is, your body on which you lean. It is necessary that you understand that coming into the world is a privilege for the spirit, that it is never a punishment. Therefore, you must take advantage of this grace. 55. After this life you will go to other worlds to receive new lessons and there you will find new opportunities to keep climbing and perfecting yourself. If you have fulfilled your duties as men, you will leave this world with satisfaction for the mission accomplished, bringing tranquility in your spirit. 56. At this time I have sent you not only so that you may be saved, but I have entrusted you with a legion of beings some embodied and others disembodied, for which you must be guides and guardians. 57. You must take my word to all of you with the same purity with which I have given it, simple in its exterior and deep in its background, substantial, full of revelations for all, whether it be understood or rude. And after great struggles that are going to be fought in the world in search of the truth, my doctrine will triumph, a single idea will prevail, the worship of men to my divinity will be simplified to become spiritual. You will have known all the roads and you will have chosen the shortest to reach me. 58. My work will come to crown the effort of all those who have lived in vigil, awaiting my return. Will clarify many of the mysteries that man has not yet managed to understand. Will be a powerful weapon in the hands of those who love good and justice, filling hearts with joy. 59. You will see the great princes convert to my teaching and leave their reign its temporal power to reach that of the Spirit, that which never ends. Thus you will see churches collapse that once looked strong in their pride and vanity, to follow my trace of humility. The hungry will eagerly seek even in the last of my words the Spirit of Truth, the Comforter, the Master who returns in triumph to reestablish his reign in the spirit of men. 60. Before all that happens, every imposture and falsehood will be pointed out, you will not allow any more adulterations. The books in which the truth is not enclosed, they will disappear and only the only book will remain that I have entrusted to men and that has been written from the beginning of time in his own spirit. 61. Whenever humanity has been in danger, I have come to save it. Today I am preparing my people to be a bulwark of this humanity that has engaged in so many struggles, that has fallen into a chaos of which it has not been able to get up. When this test has passed, the iris of peace will shine. 62. Who of you will be on earth at that time? Who will see that era of peace? Truly I tell you, that day is not far off and then this world will be an image of the land of promise that exists in the hereafter. 63. Love, which is the principle and the reason for being in you, will be in all the hearts in which a worship will rise simple and pure that will come to me. 64. You have not thought about tomorrow and you wait quietly for events. You are confident that the Master will come out in defense of his work, and you must remember that with my work it is the man whom I have come to rescue. I always have come against your enemies, these are vanity, your selfishness, your attachment to the world, its materialism, and I want you to be invincible soldiers in that fight so that you stop and extinguish the evil that lives in you today. 65. Repentance, like purifying water, is washing the spirits and the light is penetrating them. The recognition of my mandates, good intentions have begun to germinate. 66. I bless all the works and good thoughts of my children. 67. I come to grant you what you need. What can these creatures give you through whom I communicate to feed your spirit? Although they are like you, carry my image and my virtues, they are not qualified to offer you the bread of the spirit. Look at them only as my instruments for this communication that I have established with man. 68. 
The spirit of Israel has evolved and even so it has not reached complete spirituality, and it has been necessary for me to speak through human understanding. I gave you my teachings in material language to make me understood by you. 69. The times in which Jesus, my incarnate word, manifested himself to men have passed. He is an example for today's spokespeople, and if they follow suit, they will achieve great inspirations and great crowds will follow. 70. Not everyone has understood my work written with indelible letters throughout the ages. That's why I approach you to help you analyze my lesson from times past and study the present revelations. Free yourselves, people, no more slavery or captivity. Be free to love, believe, think, and work for the universal good. 71. Seek and recognize in yourselves the similarity that you have with me, to do powerful works and let my image be seen in your works of love towards your brothers. If, on the other hand, you stray from the path, you will stray from your Creator and you will not allow my spirit to manifest itself in your works, you will be limiting the virtues with which I have donated, you will lose the route and you will not know where you have come from, where you are going and when will be your return to the Lord. 72. The spirit of men is hungry. It seeks in religions, ideas or doctrines, the food that it needs, to feel called from his Father and does not know where to find it. I spoke to his spirit from the mountain, so that he may learn to rise and reach direct communication with my spirit. 73. I invite everyone to my mansion. I have made my manifestations palpable. As a good shepherd I am pointing to the sheepfold that it is my bosom, to make the spirits rest in it. 74. I will give everything to you for that journey back to the Father. Analyze the essence of my word, and in it you will have the knowledge and the necessary strength. 75. Do not distinguish anyone. On all roads there are men of good will, spirits who love me and who know how to receive my gifts. Bear in mind my precept that tells you, Love one another. My peace be with you. Spiritual Teaching 222 Love Each Other 1. You look very closely at my departure, and that is why you cry in silence because you have become accustomed to my sweet word. Moreover I say, I will not leave without first having given you my last lesson and thus you will not be clumsy in transmitting my teaching. 2. Great trials of pain are coming, and your prayer can achieve much in those hours of bitterness. Unite in your spiritual work, obey my orders, because I do not want your faults and disobedience to be printed in the golden book. 3. During this time the number of those called has been great. Every time I introduce myself to you, new ones arrive, hearts to thicken these rows, which are similar to tombs, as they keep a dead person inside, which is their own heart. 4. But pain purifies the spirits, that is why many will not reincarnate again. They will go to other worlds to fulfill the missions that I point out to you. 5. I come to help you in your regeneration, so that when you detach yourself from this world, you do not have to expiate your faults but that you arrive before the Supreme Judge, clean of all stains. 6. Understand that whatever you do to your brothers you do to me, because you are all part of myself. Do not forget it so that you can look at each of your brethren as your father does. 7. Men come to take pleasure in causing pain, but sooner or later remorse also comes as an inexorable judge, to judge you and wash you. 8. If at this time you fulfill your high mission to regenerate yourselves and save your brothers, tomorrow your name and that of my people will be pronounced with respect and gratitude, even in the most distant regions. 9. Do not miss out on feeling the satisfaction of being able to call yourselves worthily my disciples after my departure, but you must be prepared to present yourselves in the counties, towns and villages to teach the good news of my third testament, bearing witness with your works. 10. In this time, some human doctrines have apparently triumphed and there are a diversity of ideologies. Soon will come the hour when a single idea prevails, when humanity is unified in a single doctrine and this will be spiritualism. 11. The elements of nature will be responsible for awakening men and whenever they try to misrepresent my truth, those forces will speak of my justice. 12. My work will reach the ministers, the kings and lords of the earth, and you will contemplate them prostrate before my divinity. 
Then many books will disappear in the fire and the book that my golden pens wrote under my dictate will emerge for the knowledge of future generations. 13. This book will be studied and by men curious to know the future because the great chaos will be sensed by humanity. 14. All persevere in hope because peace will be very great after this chaos and the same nature that sometimes seems hostile to you, you will see it kind in its different seasons. The hills, valleys, and hills will flaunt exuberance and beauty. The trees will bear good fruit, and health, well-being, and peace, they will envelop human life. 15. Today the earth is cleansing of all impurity until it reaches a new virginity. 16. When the plagues are about to unleash, I will give you the presentiment and speak to you in dreams so that you are forewarned and pray for others. 17. You have not yet contemplated the beginning of the fight against my work and you must wake up, because they will fight it with prepared men. 18. Stop thinking too much about the needs of the body and think about the spiritual future of all humanity. 19. My doctrine will spread throughout the world, but the prevaricators will not make it known but they will be my new apostles of humility and spirituality, those who testify with their works the charity and love of their Creator. 20. Do not let humanity see that you are weak and that you have learned nothing from the Master. Let them see that they will have to learn a lot from you. Do not imitate those who saying, Lord, your will be done to me, and at the moment of the test are dissatisfied and even dare to attribute imperfections to me. 21. I speak to you simply, in your language because I don't want to leave anything a mystery. In these last years of my stay among you, many lessons I will share with you. O oh, blessed people of Israel, who like tireless pilgrims go crossing the desert, stop for a moment to hear my word. My house opens its doors for all walkers, may they call upon them with humility. Calm your hunger and thirst and you will no longer be the hungry or the thirsty. 22. You are going through days of trial, times of purification and restitution, but I am close to you to help you so that you do not fail in the test. Do not think for a moment that you are weak. Affirm yourselves in the certainty that you are the same people of times past. A strong, courageous people, a saving basket for the shipwrecked, a good traveling companion, friend, brother, and example. The mission that I have now entrusted to you is to love. Love is the seed that I have sown in you because she is the beginning and the reason of all my creatures. 23. If you contemplate that I am wisdom, that wisdom springs from love. If you recognize me as a judge, that justice it is based on love. If you consider me powerful, my power is based on love. If you know that I am eternal, my eternity comes from love, because love is life and life makes spirits immortal. Love is light, it is life and knowledge. And that seed I have given you since the beginning of time, the only one that, as a perfect seed, I have sown in the lands that of your hearts. 24. Today, in the third era, once again you rise up in my lands to go sowing that seed that you have found, but you have seen that not all lands are easy to sow, you have also seen that some bear fruit early and others are late. Some of you have found them as hard as rocks, others have been covered with tares and weeds, and very few are those that have been cleaned and prepared. Much is what you have had to work to clean those lands and then sow them, but when you have been patient and you have watered them with the water of your faith, you have been able to contemplate in the previously infertile lands, that the seed has germinated and grown and with it you have rejoiced. Those lands that seem to reject you every time, today they are your joy, your hope and they have brought peace to your spirit. There is your work, your desire and your sleeplessness, you can no longer turn away from them. 25. Keep watching and praying for those hearts, because you can feed yourself eternally from the fruit you gather. Moreover, so that this fruit gives you a good taste and brings you true life, you have to cultivate it with care, so that the seed becomes a plant and this into a stout tree with extensive branches, which provide the walker with a cozy shade and abundant fruits that give life to the great multitudes. And then that seed must return to the heart of the earth, there to continue being born, growing and bearing fruit until the consummation of time. 26. How great is my joy to be among my disciples in these moments of true spiritual communion. Happy is the moment in which I feel the love of my children and they receive my 
fatherly kiss that strengthens them. It is the moment when you come to tell me, Father, we have worked according to your teachings. But as we are not perfect, we come to you, as toddlers full of meekness and humility, to show you our sowing as it is this day and so that you, the Divine Master, with your love and wisdom, teach us, correct us and tell us how we should continue. Tell us what we have done wrong, to make amends with your help and already prepared by your charity. Let us show humanity the work, without adding or subtracting any merit. 27. And I answer, Blessed are you because you trust in me, you know that you do not come before an executioner or an unjust judge, but that you are before a father who is all love and teaching. 28. I give you one more lesson so that you prepare and take advantage of my words until the last moment, so that you stay after 1950, as teachers and guides of humanity. 29. The world is under a test, nations feel the full weight of my justice that falls on them, and my light, my voice that calls you, is felt in all humanity. Men feel my presence, they perceive my universal ray that descends and rests on them, and they raise their spirit to ask me, Lord, in what time are we, these trials and bitterness that have reached men? What do they mean, Father? Don't you hear the cry of this world? You said you would return. Even so, when are you coming? And in each sect and religion, the spirit of my children rises and they seek me, invoke me, ask me and ask me waiting. And when they, because of their lack of preparation, cannot feel me, their faith weakens, they become confused and blaspheme. And I tell you that it was time that your emissaries were crossing the borders of your nation and had reached them, as forerunners of my teaching giving the good news, helping them to understand the meaning of the trials, the trials of chaos in which humanity lives. 30. You have slept, people, letting the times go by and you have just decided to savor the sweetness of my word, to receive my wonders, to listen to my forgiveness that caresses you at every moment, without remembering that in those same moments when you were enjoying peace, there are millions of your brothers who are confused and they lose their faith, who walk without God and without law, who lack daily bread and spiritual food. 31. While you gather with your brothers, with your children, wives or husbands around your table to savor your delicacies, there are thousands of scattered families who see their homes destroyed by wars, who have kindled human passions and ambition. Many fathers have been left without children. Many mothers do not have sustenance for their little ones. There are many orphans who for a long time have been deprived of contemplating the faces beloved of their fathers. Widows who have gone mad with pain, multitudes of men who have been imprisoned, who find draining a cup of bitterness, eating only a crust of bread that is not enough to feed their body. 32. And if the material pain that nations are suffering is bloody, consider how much greater will be what the spirit feels. Truly I tell you, they are already drinking the dregs of the most bitter cup. 33. Arise, O people, prepare yourselves in prayer so that you may go with your thoughts, like larks of peace to those nations and open the doors of light, reason and justice to those peoples. I am preparing you, but before I must refine your love. Remember that to reach me. How many trials did you have to go through and how much bitterness struck your spirit and your matter? Illness in some, misery in others, ignorance of loved ones, her abandonment or her departure, pain in all its forms, like a very bitter chalice was drunk by you to achieve to purify yourselves. Your heart opened in the midst of the pain that was purifying you to come to recognize and love me. 34. When you came to me, led by Elijah the Good Shepherd, you came very humbly to ask me what I was going to do with you, because you humbly asked me to do my will in you. And my will has been to show you the love, forgiveness and charity in all its forms. Through them I have given you gifts, powers and graces. 35. I still remain among you, because you have not yet taken advantage of and assimilated my divine teaching. You have not yet come to understand the greatness of my divine teaching in all its magnitude. You are not yet ready for the struggle and that is why I will continue to speak to you until the end of 1950. 36. This doctrine has not only come to save my chosen people, but all the nations of the earth. I will save my children from all slavery or captivity, 
so that they feel masters of themselves and do not fall back into the captivity of ignorance or fanaticism. And when you have achieved absolute liberation, you can go save your brothers. Today you are refining your customs and practices, both spiritual and human. Then you will go to execute the same work with humanity, but I must warn you that you must do it with humility, without boasting of spiritual elevation, with meekness that reveals the purity of your purposes, with true love in your works. 37. Go and fulfill your mission full of firmness and trust in your Father and do everything that you had not done in times past, so that you can finish your work and finally reach the spiritual fulfillment that awaits you. 38. If this world has been a valley of tears until now, it is because man has departed from my law, I formed a paradise for him and made many of the first spirits incarnate in the first subjects, without ceasing to be angels. I wanted that when they came to earth, they would not lose their grace and live in peace and conformity. But man did not want it that way and his weakness and ingratitude, his lack of spirituality they gave rise to a world of pain and struggle. 39. Man has suffered to make his daily bread and the woman has accompanied him on his path of pain and vicissitudes. But this world that has been the valley of tears for so many ages will become a valley of peace when you, my first disciples, have been redeemed and go everywhere bearing witness to me with your good works. 40. This planet that has received spirits in different degrees of elevation, most of them of lower elevation, will receive in its bosom beings of great elevation, who will be able to communicate with me from spirit to spirit. And each generation that passes, he will live with greater purity, until the kingdom of heaven is established in the hearts of men. 41. To achieve all this, you will have to fight within your own home so that you make it a temple of love and teaching of my law, where parents are for their children, my representatives on earth and children are for their parents, jewels of great value, tender plants that must be cultivated with love. That man in his field work, in the work assigned to it, carry as a standard the fulfillment of its mission with strength. That woman be the loving companion of man and the self-sacrificing mother, so that both, in union with their children, bless the bread that gives them sustenance. 42. I want that wherever you go, you carry the bread of my teaching and preach with humility, because there will be those who contemplating your life, intrigued, ask themselves, Who are these who know how to live with such love and simplicity? Who are these who know how to be happy with a crust of bread, and who despite their scarcity are healthy and strong, and need not turn to men of science for advice or health? And when they get to ask yourselves who has taught you, you will say to them, it is the Divine Master in Spirit, who has come to us in the Third Era, in fulfillment of His promise made in times past. I want you to bear witness of your Master with your actions, because humanity is fed up with words. There you have many of your brothers who work hard to preach the Gospel, and even though it is the word I gave you in the Second Era, they have not managed to save humanity from this Third Era, because they have lacked the practice of good works as examples. For those same words my apostles gave their lives, but they did know how to imitate me and they sealed their fulfillment with their blood. 43. Today I am not coming to ask for your blood or for you to sacrifice your life. What I ask of you is love, sincerity, truth, disinterest. 44. Thus I teach you and continue to teach you, thereby preparing the disciples of my divinity in this third era because I see you contemplate indifferently the march of the world, and it is that you do not know how to penetrate into the heart of humanity, where there is so much misery and so much pain. There is great inequality, because I see gentlemen who only lack the crown to name themselves kings and I contemplate subjects who are true slaves. Hence the fight has started. Among those gentlemen enriched in the world there are many who call themselves Christians, but I tell you, they hardly know my name. 45. Those who do not see their neighbor in others, who accumulate wealth and take over what belongs to others, these are not Christians, because they do not know charity. The struggle between the spiritual and the material will come. Humanity will enter into that struggle and before the triumph of justice comes. How much bitterness will he have to suffer? 46. In the midst of this contest of doctrines and ideas, my teaching will emerge, as the light of the lighthouse appears in the middle of the storm. 
understand through my word the situation that will overwhelm humanity, and then you will know how to judge better the time, and you will know what you must do to not remain inactive. 47. Understand that the only spiritual treasure for which you must fight is that of my law. You have sacrificed the symbols through which you worshipped me yesterday, to make way for a more perfect idea. Without, however, see how even in this time peoples are rising up contending for the possession of that land and those places where in times past I manifested myself. Many symbols I have made disappear, but men do not lack reasons for their idolatry and fanaticism. I tell you, before the generations to come bow down to the idols of today, my justice will destroy them and the only columns that resist the power of my justice will be those that support the shrines built in the depths of your heart. Shrines of faith, peace and brotherhood, because the spiritual is indestructible. 48. My spiritual doctrine in the third era, when the earth is already prepared, will gently reach the heart of humanity. His triumph will not be achieved with blood or offense. Spiritualism will be established by understanding each other. Nobody who tries to impose my doctrine by means of force will be a soldier of truth, because my doctrine does not come in material conquest. If in the second era in which I came to prepare you to reign in your hearts I told you that my kingdom was not in this world, today that I come to raise your spirit to reign in it, how could I tell you what is contrary? My doctrine rests on foundations of love, but you have forgotten it and that is why I have told you that it was necessary to return among men to remind them of the forgotten law, that which your ancestors loved and for which many martyrs and apostles died thinking of you. 49. My sacrifice of that time was not enough and here I am again. New apostles are needed and they I will soon send with the divine seed. Like the winds that go from one end of the earth to the other, so will my doctrine spread. My envoys will not go alone. A world of invisible beings like armies of light will accompany them to make their step and will truly be heard by all. 50. Disciples, learn from me while the moment comes when you have to get up to teach my lesson to your brothers. Know from now on that after the year 1950, you will no longer enter this ecstasy to speak, that by then it will be enough for you to raise your thoughts to the Father, with that preparation that I have taught you so that for your lips come out words of light. Develop your gifts so that you know how to receive my inspiration. 51. I give you this lesson so that you study it carefully and analyze its essence, which will be useful to you tomorrow, when you have to teach your brothers with my doctrine of love. My peace be with you. Spiritual Teaching 223 Love Each Other 1. I have come down to you to look for you, because you have been walking away from the path for a long time and you do nothing to find the true way. 2. You needed my presence as a master, and that is why I have presented myself among you to give you courage, strength and faith, to fight for your salvation. 3. Great spiritual ignorance envelopes humanity. It has not given account of her destiny or responsibility on earth, and that is why she lost the path. 4. Man does not know who he is, so he does not know how much he treasures in his spirit. It has been specified to develop its human faculties, but those of the spirit he has ignored because of his lack of interest in what is high and noble. 5. How could humanity discover the powers that it carries? 6. It has been necessary for me to approach your heart to awaken you from the deep spiritual lethargy in which you were engulfed and reminded you that you are not just matter, that you are not small and less outcast. 7. Hearing my word, filled with joy you said to me, Lord, is it possible that there are so many gifts in our being? Then you have begun to understand something of who you are and what you mean in the universe. 8. Sometimes you question the gifts of which I have told you that you are possessors, and I tell you that your doubt comes from not having developed them, so they cannot manifest themselves in the way you would like. 9. It is true that there are cases in which with only faith you can do amazing works, but you should know that it was my love the one that granted you that prodigy to encourage your faith, even when you still were not qualified to carry out that work. 10. Long is the development of the powers of the Spirit, so much so that a, a single body is not enough for Him, not a single existence on earth is enough. But my providence, which is in everything, is preparing for each Spirit new bodies in which can continue His development, 
helping him in his improvement, so that he can get to the place that is destined. I tell you, because I have surprised you thinking that there is very little that you have achieved in comparison with what you have been told that you possess. Then doubts arise in your heart and decay invades you. 11. With what I have now told you, you will be able to understand that it will not be possible for you in a single existence to develop in all their capacity the gifts of which your spirit is formed, because they form the part of a being that belongs to the eternal, that is part of the infinite. It is natural that in such a short life, such as the life of man on earth, you cannot see the full development of some of your gifts. 12. However, I must clarify that not by knowing that in the present existence you will not be able to reach the maximum development of your gifts, you will falter in your efforts to achieve your evolution. Conversely, think that if in a single existence you could contemplate the full development of your spiritual gifts, these would be very small. 13. I only ask that you take a step in each reincarnation, but that it be a firm step towards perfection. Then it will be your spirit that notices its advancement, manifesting itself more and more wisdom through those bodies that are being entrusted to him. 14. Now you are in preparation. All the gifts that you possess have already been revealed to you by my word, and she has made known to you the mission that you will have to fulfill in your spiritual journey. 15. You have already been tested with the tests that a spirit must undergo to receive a message or a message of divine revelation. It only remains for you to start your development, in the confidence that your path will be illuminated with the light of consciousness, which will always tell you what to do. 16. You would like your communication from spirit to spirit to be perfect, that the gift of clairvoyance had manifested in fullness, that the healing power allowed you to perform a prodigy in each case, and that the gift of word flourish on your lips overflowing with consolation, wisdom and prophecies. More when you you convince yourself that you are still far from reaching those heights, you become sad and you become silent and say nothing. But what, disciples? Don't you understand that much of what you want to achieve depends on your preparation? 17. You well know what preparation the disciple must have to be able to recreate himself with the fruit of his spirituality and that is to lead a clean life, to be ready to pray, to serve your fellow men, to resist temptations, so that when you need your spiritual strength and your gifts to carry out some work of love, you find your being willing, and thus have the satisfaction of seeing it done. The prodigy that you requested from your father in your prayer is a reality. 18. Then you will be able to see the first lights of the great day announced by prophets and sent long ago. You can feel how I descend in spirit to speak to you about the eternal life that awaits you all, because you are all destined for her. 19. Even the intimacy of your being I penetrate, to prove to you that for me there are no barriers or obstacles that prevent my light from reaching the bottom of your spirit. 20. I come to say to men, since they have walked through material life, disregarding their duties and the mission of your spirit, that I send you this message of wisdom so that you prepare and know how to penetrate to spiritual life when each is called. 21. I come to tell you that, since here on earth you have blocked the way of the spirit, at least let him prepare for when you no longer have a need for the flesh. 22. Do you think that life becomes concrete to your existence on earth? Do you think that my law and my doctrine only illuminate your life in the world? No, multitudes who listen to my word, the law I did not give it to your body. I came to illuminate your spirit with it. 23. I know why I speak to you in this way, because my gaze discovers among the mobs those men who need me to speak to them that way. 24. They are the materialists, those who do not see beyond where their eyes can see, without believing that beyond your mind and your senses is where eternity, truth, and wisdom begin. 25. You do not need me to speak like that, to those who are already beginning to let the Spirit rule in their works, in his thoughts and throughout his life, those who are beginning to shed in their spirit bindings of the world. They arrived materialized before the manifestation of my word, without knowing what they heard, without understand their meaning, and I also touched them in what they loved the most in their life. 26. The kingdom of the Spirit is infinite and to reach the elevation that allows you to enjoy it and live it, it is necessary to know the way and have light to ascend it. But don't think that I despise your material life, no, disciples, why should I despise it, if I prepared it for you? 
understand that life in the material world is also part of life in the spiritual, infinite and eternal realm. 27. Precisely the purpose that my word comes to fulfill among you is to show you the right way where you must travel to achieve spirituality. 28. When I speak of the spiritual life, I am not specifically referring to the existence of disembodied spirits, but I make you understand that spiritual life is everywhere, because everything proceeds from it. 29. Only the light of that life can reveal the truth to you, only in it can men understand how much they want and need to know. 30. Those who insist on ignoring the life of the Spirit will only be poor beings that will live on earth walking aimlessly, stumbling and falling, not realizing that deep down they hold the key to the door of eternity and also carry the lamp that can illuminate the path that leads to peace, wisdom and happiness. 31. But my charity comes to awaken them from their lethargy, it comes to raise up the last, so that they help the first in the struggle of this time against materialism, in all that they have not been able to do. 32. The world is prepared and purified by pain, waiting for the disciples of the Divine Master. Humanity is going through an hour of testing. 33. Understand how great your mission is. 34. I will illuminate your path when its light is dim for a moment, so that your spirit does not stumble or be confused, because you are the emissaries of peace, the possessors of an eternal revelation. 35. Your worship will not be contaminated by foreign influences, nor will you fall back into spiritual slavery. 36. Men will not come to put before your eyes the image of their Lord, because my true image they have not yet been able to find it, despite carrying it in themselves. 37. In each man there is an afterlife, an arcane, and in 38. This is a time when all humanity spiritually sleeps. There is no single religion that elevates to its God true worship. You will rise to give my word, bearing witness to the Master by your example. Without works of love, my doctrine will not have strength on your lips. Looking, looking for it, and when he feels the caress or the bomb, you will feel a ray of light penetrate and you will be one of the most fervent. Your gratitude will be very great because your debt that was also very large. 75. These you will seek as I have always come to seek you. Do not forget that the just are already with me. My peace be with you.